Change is an inevitable aspect of technology, where skill sets and job roles continuously evolve and even become outdated at times. In order to thrive in this ever-evolving IT industry, professionals must remain abreast of emerging trends and technological shifts continuously. In today's data-driven world, where the volume and complexity of information are constantly expanding, organizations are seeking powerful and flexible solutions to handle the data management needs. MySQL, PostgreSQL, and Microsoft SQL Server have long been the backbone of data storage for decades to store and manipulate data in relational databases. And there's no sign of them disappearing anytime soon. But with the world undergoing a revolution driven by big data and the high cost of SQL solutions make them impractical for addressing the ever-changing demands of businesses. With the majority of data being unstructured, traditional relational databases are unable to efficiently handle this requirement of data management on a large scale. Consequently, companies are recognizing the necessity of adopting alternative NoSQL databases like MongoDB. MongoDB goes a step further by leveraging the benefits of cloud infrastructure through horizontal scalability and empowers users to seamlessly handle large datasets while enjoying the flexibility of MongoDB's data model. By utilizing MongoDB, organizations can develop operational applications that drive business engagement at a fraction of cost compared to RDBMS. And according to a DICE report, the number of NoSQL jobs for people experienced with unstructured database systems like MongoDB, CouchDB, Cassandra has increased by 54% over last year. And major tech chains like Google, Amazon, Twitter, FB and various other industry leaders have already embraced NoSQL databases on a large scale. So what could be better than staying ahead of the curve and getting trained in MongoDB? Well, subscribing to Simply Learn, of course. Since we publish tech-related content every day to help you master various emerging technologies and programming languages. And also, make sure to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. Today's video will be a MongoDB basic source for beginners. We will start off this video with a quick introduction to NoSQL databases by understanding the fundamentals of MongoDB databases. To become an expert in MongoDB, firstly you have to understand and master the concepts of schema design and data modeling. Following the mastery of data modeling, the next step is to master how to query CRUD operation and perform projection on documents. Furthermore, it is important to understand the aggregation framework and how and when to use indexing. With the foundation in place, one can progress to intermediate topics such as monitoring, backup and restore, security options, as well as understanding the various storage engines that MongoDB supports and how to use MongoDB with big data as well. All of this information should provide a solid foundation for moving on to concepts like MapReduce, GridFS and scaling aspects such as replication and sharding, with the goal of providing effective fault tolerance and high availability. Now with it having said, if you want to upskill yourself in NoSQL databases and become proficient in MongoDB, then our postgraduate program in data analytics in partnership with Purdue University and in collaboration with IBM can help you with that. This course features master classes and follows an applied learning model designed with real life projects and business case studies that will help you boost your career. So what are you waiting for? Enroll now and take advantage of this amazing opportunity. Link is added in the description box below. So without any further ado, let's get started. Over to our training experts. We'll be discussing what is MongoDB, why is it used, and what is its significance in today's world. I hope my audio is fine and the screen is clearly visible. If you guys are facing any issue, do let us know in the comment section and our team will try to fix it as soon as possible. Alright, now in the world of databases, the most common and well popular databases are RDBMS, which is Relational Database Management Systems. Now, what if you want to develop an application which deals with a large volumes of data? Then we need to choose one such database which always provides a high performance data storage solutions so that we can achieve the performance in the solution in the terms of data store and the retrieval with accuracy, speed and reliability. Now, if you categorize the database solutions, then there are mainly two types of database categories that are available. That is, the first one is RDBMS like MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, etc. And another type is NoSQL databases like MongoDB, CosmoDB, Cassandra, Hadoop, etc. More on that soon. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial with a quick introduction to NoSQL and then we'll discuss what exactly is what is MongoDB and then we'll go through the history of MongoDB which is when, it, when and how it came into existence and after that we'll understand why we use MongoDB up next, we'll discuss some key salient features of MongoDB. Up next, we'll discuss how exactly MongoDB works. 
and then we'll go through some different applications of MongoDB in real life and then we'll see which companies are using MongoDB in current days and finally we'll understand when to use and when not to use the MongoDB. Now before we understand what is MongoDB is it, it is important to learn what is NoSQL. Now under the vast roof of big data there lies a number of databases which are used to store these massive amounts of data that is generated worldwide. Now one among them which is attracting a huge number of interest is the NoSQL database. The not only SQL or NoSQL database which is often referred as with these two terms is an approach that works towards managing data as well as the database design which may come in handy for huge sets of distributed data. It consists of number of technologies and architectures that seek a solution to the big data performance issues and scalability that cannot be addressed by the relational databases. Now this database is used when companies and enterprises develop a need to access and analyze large amounts of unstructured data or the data stored in multiple virtual servers in the cloud. Now there is no specific definition for what NoSQL is but it is a common set of observation where we can describe that it is not a relational model that is unlike the traditional data, relational databases which store data in the form of tables which comprises of rows and columns NoSQL database doesn't store in that way. Now in NoSQL databases also we have a various types of databases. Now the first one is key value database that is it is a simplest type of NoSQL database and every data element in the database is stored as a key value pair consisting of an attribute name or key and a value. So in a sense a key value stored is like a relational database with only two columns. The key or attribute name such as anything like state, ID, your name and the value such as uh, let's say a country name India. So that is one of a NoSQL database and next we have column based or column oriented databases. Now while a relational database stores data in rows and reads data row by row, a column store is organized as a set of columns. This means that when you want to run analytics on a small number of columns, you can read those columns directly without consuming memory with the unwanted data. And of course we have the document type of database. The concept that is focused on in document databases, the documents that are stored and received from the database stored can be like a JSON or a BSON or an XML format. Now these documents are usually similar to each other and are in a hierarchical tree data structure that are self-describing and consists of sc scalar values, maps, collections and etc. And finally we do have graph databases guys. Now a graph database focuses on the relationship between data elements. Now each data element is stored as a node uh, and the connections between elements are called links or relationships. In a graph database connections of first class elements of the database stored directly. Now in relational databases linked links are implied using data to uh, express the relationship. Now these were some of the mainly used NoSQL database guys but in this tutorial we'll be only focusing on the document database and which is one of the most commonly used NoSQL databases out there and the best example is MongoDB and apart from MongoDB we do have other document databases like Couchbase uh, NoSQL database as well. Now that we've understood what is uh, NoSQL databases let us now quickly understand what is MongoDB. MongoDB is an open source document oriented or a non-relational database. Now it is different than traditional relational databases like PostgreSQL, MySQL or SQL Server because it stores the data in JSON like documents instead of tables and it is primarily is used to store large volumes of data in the form of documents. Now traditional relational databases store data uh, using tables and rows right. MongoDB on the other hand is a non-relational database which uh, has collections instead of tables. Now documents are stored inside the collections in Mongo where rows are stored in tables in traditional relational databases. Now with MongoDB the biggest advantage is the structure and schema of your data is flexible and not enforced by a predefined table definition unlike relational databases where you have to specify the schema that is the structure of the table, the attributes and the values in it. Now documents can vary greatly in size and shape within the same collection whereas tables are more rigidly defined in a relational database. So when you are using MongoDB it represents hierarchical relationship in a single record instead of joining multiple tables. So that is the main difference between a relational database and a non-relational database 
and MongoDB being a NoSQL database follows the document data model which is a collection of complex documents which arbitrary nested data formats and varying records formats. Now because MongoDB does not store data in a structured table format, you cannot query it using SQL. Instead MongoDB uses a more flexible and a dynamic query language called Mongo specific queries which is based on JavaScript which we'll be discussing in a certain while. Alright, I hope you understood uh, what is MongoDB. Let us now go to the history of MongoDB guys. Now it is also important that when and how MongoDB has came into existence even though we have several relational databases in the market. Now MongoDB was first introduced in 2007. Tengen software company began developing MongoDB in 2007 as a component of a planned platform as a service product. So from 2002 7 to 2008 it was developed and it was working as a platform as a service product. Now in 2009 the company shifted to an open source development model with the company offering commercial support and other services. So from 2009 since it became an open source the users can directly download it from the internet. In 2013 Tengen changed its name to MongoDB INC and it is working under the same banner. On October 2017, MongoDB became a publicly listed traded company on NASDAQ as MDB with an IPO price of $24 per share. Now MongoDB is a global company with US headquarters in New York City and international headquarters in Dublin and has more than 110 million download and regular users in the current times. And the latest version of it was released in 2022 which is 6.0. Let us now understand why MongoDB is used guys. Now since MongoDB is a NoSQL database, uh, we need to understand when and why we need to use it uh, in real life as well. Now since in normal circumstances, MongoDB always preferred by the developers when our main concern is to deal with larger huge volumes of data with a high performance. So if you want to insert thousands of thousands of records in a second, then MongoDB is the best choice for that. Now also one of the main reason is to overcome the limitation of relational databases or like the structured query language guys where the language is only used for certain uh, databases or for limited records right. So in order to overcome that we use MongoDB since it is a robust and highly scalable and it is also a powerful way of storing data in comparison to traditional databases. Now it is also highly flexible which allows you to store and work on different data types in one document. Whereas in relational database you store data in tables and you have to maintain a proper schema for that. So you need to join multiple tables if you want to retrieve certain amounts of data. And MongoDB also provides a lot of security and it is also considered as a powerful query language as well. Now as discussed earlier MongoDB uh, allows the user with flexible schema that means it allows you to meet the ever changing conditions characteristics of big data applications if you are uh, working on massive amounts of data on a regular basis. And also it gives you high performance with its incredible features like on demand scaling real time resources which will guarantee the user high performance of the applications. Let us now discuss some of the key features of MongoDB. Now the first one is aggregation. Now you might have heard about aggregation in SQL as well. Now data records are processed by aggregation which is grouping of data which then produces the computed results or a, into a single result. Now in simple words aggregation operations group values from multiple documents uh, in MongoDB database together and can perform a variety of operations on the grouped data to return a single result. I, as said earlier it is similar to that of SQL group by clause where we use aggregation functions like average, sum, minimum, max and others. Next we have the grid FS. Now grid FS is a specification for storing and retrieving files that exceed the base on document size limit of 16 MB. Now instead of storing a file in a single document, grid FS divides a file into parts or which is called as chunks and stores each of those chunks as a separate document. Now by default grid FS limits chunk size to 255 KB. Now it uses two collections to store files. So it is also another important feature of MongoDB. Now next we have sharding. Now in MongoDB uh, it uses sharding and replication which are another key uh, factors. Sharding allows partitioning of data across multiple servers using the shared key and the technique of synchronizing all these organized data across many servers to offer redundancy is known as replication. 
Now next we have document oriented as we all know that MongoDB is a document oriented type of uh, database. There are different documents to store different types of data and each document has a unique system generated key. Replication I think we have already discussed and also uh, MongoDB is a schema less database that is it stores data in collections with no enforced schema. So in other words incoming data can have a predefined structure and it can add to it. However, different documents in the same collection can have different structures if required. Indexing is also another key feature of MongoDB which is one of the most important options to improve the search query performance. Now as a result we should index the fields that fit our search criteria like without indexing MongoDB it has to scan every document of the collection to get the required result that matches the query statement right. So in order to eliminate that we need to provide indexing for a faster query retrieval. Next we have ad hoc queries. Now in most cases while designing a database schema we don't know what queries we will run ahead of time right. So when we design our database we may not be knowing uh, the query types or the data that we process into our database. So ad hoc query is the query not known while structuring the data or you can say that ad hoc queries are short lived uh, queries whose value depends on variables. So MongoDB supports these types of queries and can be also updated in real time. And finally high performance. Performance means writing speed performance of MongoDB is far greater than any other relational database like MySQL. Those were some of the key features of MongoDB. So let us now understand how exactly MongoDB works guys. MongoDB stores data objects in collections and documents instead of the traditional tables and rows which is used in uh, relational databases. Now collections comprise sets of documents which are equivalent to tables and relational database. Now documents consist of a key value pair which are basic unit of data in MongoDB. Now the structure of a document can be changed by simply adding a new fields or deleting existing ones. Now documents can define a primary key as a unique identifier and values can be of variety of data types including the other documents and the array of documents. So it is basically uh, works on a JavaScript query which is JSON and it is further uh, classified into base one which is a binary encoded object notation. So if you look at the picture in this we have basically a host which uh, ultimately has a server which stores the data and further we have databases wherein we have different collections and in collections we have documents. So the data is stored in this documents which is further presented into the collections and are saved into databases. So this is roughly how exactly MongoDB works. Let us now discuss some applications of MongoDB in real life as well guys. Now one of the main application is IoT or Internet of Things which is one of the most appreciated technology innovations in the world today. Connecting billions of devices globally. Now with IoT companies improve productivity, redefine their models and leverage operational efficiency. So MongoDB helps to maximize this full potential of IoT devices. It's intelligent data platform which speeds up the operation and delivery of IoT devices. It is also extensively used in mobile applications because with the data that is being generated like for example in social media, in internet we need MongoDB to handle such amounts of our data right. So it is also used in real time analysis. Now with RDBMS databases, analytics and transactional databases were usually separate and data from the transactional database would have to be moved to analytics env environment which requires an immense daily data load. Now with NoSQL databases like MongoDB, companies can now analyze data in real time while saving cost. For example, if you take stock market, we have tons or trillions amounts of data has been generated every day. So again in sports as well, which is uh, a real time data analysis to get the insight we need the data in a quick and faster manner. So in that case, we can use MongoDB as well. MongoDB is also perfect for catalog management, content management as well as product data management guys. It enables product data or the content related information to be managed and processed in a single central system. This allows for detailed cost analysis, increase productivity, gain new insights and improve collaboration with the companies as well. So one of the uh, best example if I take is the Aadhaar card guys. It is a real world MongoDB use case where Aadhaar is a un India's unique identification project and world's most extensive biometric database system. 
Now we know that it was. I think it was launched in to early 2010s, and it has collected demographic and biometric information of over 1.5 billion people in India. So other mostly relies on MongoDB among other databases like HBase, My SQL, Hadoop, which basically uh, runs on uh, massive amounts of data, which process huge amount of data in a real time. So MongoDB was one of the database systems for purchase to power the search strategy. of aadhaar card all right let us now discuss some of the companies which are using mongodb in real life uh, guys so companies like google facebook bosch ebay are some of the companies which have extensively used mongodb nowadays and apart from that we have other companies like you know toyota cisco adobe sap astrazeneca verizon and other service and product based companies use mongodb on a regular basis now apart from this we have shutterfly we have metlife we even have forbs which use mongodb on a regular basis and that brings us to the end of today's session guys now before we uh, wrap up the session it is also important that you need to understand when you should be using mongodb and when you shouldn't now although mongodb is a great database out there there are times you shouldn't and you should use in certain uh, circumstances now mongodb works extensively well with unstructured data so it's great for uh, big data analytic systems so if you're working on huge chunks of data which needs you know real time processing immediately then you can use mongodb mongodb is also used for cloud computing like microsoft azure aws which is an ideal cloud computing platform uh, for mongodb because cloud based storage needs to easily distribute data across multiple servers and which basically suits mongodb's nature now if you do not have any database administrator in that case you you might as well use mongodb as well now wherein you have lots of unstructured data to process and which has no storable data type limits so in that case you can use mongodb and finally if you have schema issues that is if you have an unstable or undefined schema you can use mongodb which is not with the case of traditional database which requires a predefined schema before you start working on the database as you all know we are living in the era of big data where massive volumes of data are generated per second worldwide so handling and storing these huge chunks of data is pivotal and paramount for all the companies around the world traditionally relational databases were used to store this data prior to when the internet came into existence now in the early 1990s the internet gained extreme popularity and the relational databases could not keep up with the flow of information and data demanded by the users as well as the large variety of data types that occurred from this evolution this led to the development of non relational databases often referred to as no sql the not only sql or commonly known as no sql databases is an approach to data management and database design that may be useful for large sets of distributed data and unstructured data it basically consists of collection of technologies and architecture that seek to address big data performance and scalability issues that relational databases cannot address so this database is used when businesses and enterprises require access to and analysis of large amounts of unstructured data now this unstructured data can be of any type it can be a text file it can be an image or video and others that are stored across multiple servers so it is important that we understand how this no sql database is work so in today's session we'll be going through all the concepts that are needed to understand what no sql databases are and how it, they exactly work so without any further delay let us jump straight into today's topic Firstly let us go through the agenda for today's session we'll start the tutorial by understanding what is sql and then we'll look at why we use sql and after that we'll understand what is no sql database and then we'll understand why we use no sql up next we'll understand how to use no sql and how exactly it works and then we'll look at some different types of no sql databases and after that we'll have a detailed comparison between sql and no sql database and finally we'll conclude the session by understanding some advantages and disadvantages of using no sql and we'll also look when to use sql as well as no sql so without any further delay let us dive straight into today's topic on sql versus no sql 
Firstly, let us understand what is SQL. SQL as it stands is defined as structure query language is basically a standardized programming language that is used to manage databases and it performs various operations on data in them. Initially created in 1970s, SQL is widely used by many companies and technologies nowadays. SQL is used for modifying database tables and index structures. It is also used in adding, updating and deleting rows of data. It is also used to retrieve subsets of information from within the database management system. Now, SQL is used to perform various actions such as to insert data, to update data, modify and delete the data in the database as well. Now, when we talk about SQL, it is important that we talk about relational database systems as well. A relational database system or RDBMS is a database system that stores and fetches data in the form of table, that is in the form of rows and columns. Tables are used to store data in relational databases about related objects. Each column contains attributes of data, whereas each row holds a record of unique data known as a key, which helps in making relationship between different data points that is present in different table, which makes us easy to understand. Now, these relational databases or RDBMS are managed using SQL language to perform various operations. Therefore, SQL codes are used to retrieve information from these relational databases by doing various interactive operations like using join, create, truncate, delete, alter, and etc. Let us now look at some popular SQL databases. Some popular SQL databases that are available are MySQL, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL, Server SQL Lite, and PostgreSQL. Now that we have understood what is SQL, let us now understand what is non-SQL. That is NoSQL, sorry. NoSQL database is a non-relational database management system that does not require a fixed schema. That is, the data is, store, is not stored in the form of tables in NoSQL databases. Basically, it avoids any uh, joining or creating or scaling the databases in SQL. The major purpose of using a NoSQL database is for distributed data storage, which is having high volumes of data storage needs. NoSQL is used for big data and real-time web, web applications. Like for example, companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google collect terabytes of users' data and every single day. So basically, NoSQL database stands for not only SQL or not SQL, and uh, it is introduced in the year 1998 by Carl Stroh. Now, traditional RDBMS uses SQL syntax to store and retrieve data for further insights. Now, instead, our NoSQL database system encompasses a wide range of database technologies that can store structured, semi-structured, as well as unstructured data. Let us now understand why we use NoSQL. We use hierarchical storage structure instead of a table-like structure. That means, uh, before relational databases, companies used a hierarchical database system which are with a tree-like structure for database tables. Now, these early database management systems enabled users to organize large quantities of data. However, they were complex, often required a particular application and in a limited way, which they could uncover the data that is stored. Now, these limitations eventually led to the development of relational database, that is, the data that is stored in tables. Uh, so, SQL provided an interface to interact with relational data and allowing the analyst to connect tables by merging on common fields. But as time passed, the demands for faster and more desperate usage of larger datasets became increasingly more important for emerging technologies, for uh, e-commerce and other big giants. For that, uh, NoSQL has became the alternative for everyone. Now, another reason is it is now we have constant addition of new features and functions in the NoSQL uh, database, right? So that means like uh, we know that technology is being rapidly evolved and uh, huge enormous amounts of data has been released on a daily basis and it's important that we store this data and access in a quick way. Now NoSQL is the best database to use for large amounts of data or for ever, ever changing data sets. It is also best use when you have to uh, have flexible data model or need that don't fit into a relational model. And finally, when if, if you want that uh, there is no relationship between any stored data and you feel it is not important, then you can use NoSQL as well. Let us now look at some popular NoSQL databases. Some popular NoSQL databases are MongoDB, Apache Hbase, Cassandra, Redis, Neo4j, and etc. 
let us now look at some types of NoSQL databases that are present. Firstly, we have document oriented. Uh, the document database typically stores self describing JSON, XML and BSON documents. They are similar to key value stores, but in this case, a value is a single document that stores all the data to related to a specific key. Popular fields in the document can be indexed to provide faster retrieval without knowing the key as well. Each document can have same or different data structure. MongoDB, CouchDB, CloudEnd are some examples of document based uh, NoSQL database. Next we have key value pair database. The data in this is stored like a key value pairs. Key value pair data stored in database in the form of a hash table. Each key is unique in this case. The value stored may be an integer, string, a binary object, a JSON object, etc. The key value store based database is simplest database among all the data databases in NoSQL database. Redis, Coherence are examples of some key value stored databases. Next we have column based or column stored database in NoSQL, which is in this the data stored in grouped columns instead of rows. Every column values are stored separately. It delivers high performance on aggregate functions like count, sum, max, minimum. Group of columns uh, data stored in key spaces like schema in RDBMS. Key spaces contains group of rows or columns and uh, HBase, Bigtable, Aculamo are some examples of column store databases. And finally we have graph oriented or graph store databases. Data in this is represented in the form of a directed graph. It consists of nodes and edges. Nodes represent an entity and any edge represents the relation between the two nodes. Node edge to be unique. Social networks, logistics, Patel data used a graphical storage database. Neo4j, Infinite Graph, Orient DB, Flock DB are examples of some graph storage database. Next, let us understand how exactly NoSQL database works. For that, I'm going to take the example of MongoDB uh, database. Now, MongoDB is based on the NoSQL document store model in which data objects are stored as separate documents inside a collection instead of a traditional column and row of a relational database. Now, uh, MongoDB groups data through collections and basically a collection is simply a grouping of documents that have a same or similar purpose. A collection acts similarly to a table in a traditional SQL database. However, it has a major difference. A collection is not enforced by a strict schema. That is, it does not have any fixed schema at all. Instead, documents in a collection can have slightly different structure from another as needed. This reduces the need to break items in a document into several different tables at, as it is often done in an SQL implementation. Now coming to document, a document is a representation of a single entity of a data in MongoDB database. A collection consists of one or more related objects. Major difference that exists between MongoDB and SQL is that in that documents are different from rows. Row data is flat with one column for each value in the row. However, in MongoDB, Documents can contain embedded sub documents providing a much closer inherent data model for your applications. Now, if I just have to map what are, what are exactly and how it is different from RDBMS, a collection in a MongoDB is equivalent to the tables in RDBMS and a document in MongoDB is equivalent to the rows in RDBMS and fields in MongoDB is equivalent to the columns in RDBMS. So this is how a document looks. Uh, in a MongoDB, as you can see, this is similar to a row in RDBMS, but we just have a field and a value that is taken separately in, in, uh, instead of a tab tabular value. And another important thing to note, uh, note here is that a MongoDB supports dynamic schema, which means one document of a collection can have a number of fields while the other document can have less or same number of fields. That is, if a collection can have uh, four fields while other document can have only just two fields, which is basically not possible in a relational database, uh, which does not exist uh, as it, it does not support because it needs a particular and a fixed schema in that. Let us now understand some differences between the SQL and NoSQL. Firstly, SQL is a relational database and NoSQL is a non-relational database. That means SQL databases are in the form of tables that can contain rows and columns and they have fixed logical schema design. All the data in SQL is arranged in tabular format and it is well suited for complex queries. And on the other hand, NoSQL databases is a non-relational database. That means it does not store data in the form of tab tables 
and contains collections and inside every collection there is a document that contains the data of a single entry this store this data is stored in the form of a key value pair unlike sql where we store data under the fixed schema so as we discussed uh, sql has a fixed schema design and structure and no sql has a dynamic schema design and structure SQL can handle complex queries whereas NoSQL can handle large volumes of data. Now SQL is vertically scalable. Now uh, SQL databases support vertical scaling which means it improves the single server by increasing RAM, SSD or CPU. In vertical scaling we are restricted to a single system and we can improve it as much as we want till the practical limit. Whereas in NoSQL database we can do horizontal scaling because they support distributed computing or distributed systems. In horizontal scaling, we can add another node or computer for better performance and we can add n number of such servers or nodes uh, as per a requirement. So as discussed, we can add as many as nodes as we want and this is why we prefer NoSQL for high scalability because there is no limit for scaling. And finally, it follows ACID properties that is atomicity that means transactions should be performed at once or it shouldn't happen at all. Consistency, that means the state of a database should remain consistent before and after the transaction. Isolation, that is one traction, one transaction shouldn't affect another transaction and it shouldn't and should be independent. And we lastly durability. Now successful transactions should be reflected even if there is any system failure. Whereas the NoSQL follows cap property that is consistency, availability, and partial tolerance. Let us now discuss some advantages and disadvantages of uh, using NoSQL. Firstly, let us discuss about the advantages. NoSQL provides high performance and scalability, and it also has a lot of availability and flexibility. It is open source and it is schema less as well. That is, you can directly uh, download the NoSQL databases from the internet, unlike some commercial databases that are available in the internet. While on the other hand, there are some disadvantages as well. That is, it is it lacks the standardization. That means it does not have a fixed query uh, in order to retrieve data from the databases, which result in, in uh, consistency issues. And since it has all these consistency issues and does not retrieve data properly, it, it has a limited query capabilities. So that brings us to the end of today's session on SQL versus no SQL guys. So you might have a doubt that when you need to use SQL and when we need to use no SQL. Now SQL is easiest to work with relational databases. That is it is useful when you want to perform complex queries using various operations like join and etc. And if you want to perform quick data storage and retrieval operations, you can use SQL. Whereas uh, if you want, you can use NoSQL if you are designing a distributed systems. And if you want a hierarchical storage structure instead of a tabular like structure. Also NoSQL gives you the flexibility to create dynamic structures and, and can add features as you, as you want. Also, there is no asset properties during the creation of any applications while creating uh, NoSQL databases as well. So in this way you can use NoSQL and uh, SQL as per your requirement. Now since it's already installed on my system, uh, the installation process will be different but you just need to follow the steps there and uh, finally install it. So once you're done with the installation, you can uh, go to your C drive and here you can click on program files and you can see that MongoDB is installed. And inside of it, you have the server folder, and then you have the 4.4 folder, and then you have the bin folder, right? So here you have the application that is your Mongo and the MongoD applications, both are executable files. Now the MongoD file or the application is the daemon process. Now this is the background process that makes sure you retrieve the data from the database, access the data, so it does all the background tasks. So after the installation, now you need to create a path to this file. By doing this, you don't have to always go to the bin folder and then execute the file. You can directly execute the file on your command prompt, right? So for that, let's just go to our environment variables. But before that, let's just uh, copy this 
path right and here under the user variable section click on path and say edit and go ahead and just paste it right I've already pasted mine so just go ahead and paste it and click on ok and say ok right so now you've created the path successfully now let's head to our command prompt and run the mongo file so here you can just directly type mongo since the path has already been created so just go ahead and say mongo and here you can see that your mongo server has been generated and uh, with this you know that your in mongodb has been successfully installed and your server is up and running right so just for confirmation let's see if there are any databases and how much space they've occupied so you can right now just types show dbs and when you click on it it says admin config and localhost and all of it is zero so with that you have successfully installed mongodb on your system and it's up and running now in contrast to structured query language or sql databases which is a relational database model where the structure of the database and its tables have been defined mongodb does not have or require the definition of a database or a table structure instead we use data models in order to store the documents in our database so moving ahead let us now first discuss the agenda for today's session we'll start the tutorial by understanding what is data modeling and then we'll understand why we use data modeling after that we'll be going through how data modeling actually works in mongodb and next we'll understand different types of data models in mongodb up next we'll discuss types of relationships in data models and then we'll see some methods to create these data models and finally we'll understand uh, when to use these data models as per our requirement so without any further delay let's get started with today's topic all right so what is data modeling in mongodb now basically data modeling is a process of taking unstructured data that is generated from the real world scenario and introducing it to the data server and then structuring it into a logical data model in our database so it is basically a process of determining how data is stored and what connection exists between various entities in a relationship now you don't have to create a schema before inserting data because no sql is flexible this is so that mongodb can support a dynamic database schema that makes it unnecessary to create your schema in advance instead you can now store your information and make changes in accordance with your data. Now consider data modeling in MongoDB as a relationship. Now there is no particular relationship just like uh, SQL where we use. Now MongoDB relationships are the representations of how multiple documents are logically connected to each other in MongoDB. Now since MongoDB is a document database, any document within the same collection is not mandatory. To have same set of fields or structure, you can store different types in a collections given field and can even add new fields, update fields and delete existing fields as well. Now, for example, consider an online shopping store where we have like thousands of customers arriving daily and purchasing new products from the website. Now we get a lot of unstructured data that is the name of the customer, their details and all which is basically an unstructured data. Now in order to convert into a proper structured data, we need to uh, model them into a particular way which this is where data modeling comes into a uh, picture where we store the data based upon our requirement now the main challenge in data modeling is balancing the application needs guys now the database engines performance characteristics and also the data retrieval patterns all right let us now move ahead and understand why we use data modeling now data model basically helps us to create a simplified and optimized logical database that eliminates redundancy reduces storage requirements and enables efficient retrieval from the database now data modeling may appear to be a complex process wherein you have to make adjustments to your database unlike sql where you predefine your schema and create a new table and then store the data now while in mongodb data modeling helps us to analyze and understand what type of data and how much data has to be inserted into a database data modeling is necessary foundational work that allows data to be stored 
more easily in the database and has a positive positive impact on data analytics as well now let us understand why exactly we use now data modeling now data quality is paramount for any organization and to ensure that we need higher data quality when we are storing unstructured data in large amounts now the visual representation of requirements and the business rules enables to anticipate what could lead to a large scale data corruption before it occurs so data model enables the developers in hindsight to define rules that monitor the data quality and ensuring that there is no possibility of errors now it is also important to understand how the data is flowing within the database and the characteristics of that creating data models forces the business to define how data is generated and moved across the application development and maintenance data modeling exposes errors and inconsistencies early in the process making is it making it easier and less expensive to fix so in order to maintain a database that is uh, a mongodb database which is basically an unstructured one it is important that we try to develop and maintain it in a regular basis and finally performance is another reason why we use data modeling now an organized database is one that is more efficiently operated and data modeling prevents the schema from endless searching and returns results more quickly those were some of the reasons uh, on why we use data modeling guys all right let us now move ahead and discuss how data modeling works in mongodb now unlike sql databases where you must determine and declare a table schema before inserting data or perform any operations we need to basically provide a schema for that now mongodb's collection by default do not require the documents to have the same schema now the documents in a single collection do not need to have the same set of fields and the data type of for a field can differ across documents within a collection now to change the structure of the document in a collection such as adding a new field or removing the existing field in a document or changing the field values to a new type or update the documents to the new structure now basically the first step is to basically create and design a schema as per the requirement and the application need by the user and then we have to combine documents now if there is no scope for multiple documents uh, to store into a single one and ensure that if there is no other need for a single document to store in a multiple document in such way we need to understand what is our requirement and combine the documents accordingly so that we can have performance as well as the optimization of the database is also improved now this flexibility facilitates the mapping of documents to an entity or an object now each document can match the data field of a represented id entity even if the document has substantial variation from other documents in the collection so this is how basically a data model works wherein you have to choose as per the requirement and understand what type of documents that are being inserted into the database all right let us now understand some data models that are used in mongodb now once you've understood the business requirement and the application on how it should be as you start modeling your data you will likely go through various steps of data analysis now each step might produce different types of data models therefore ensuring data models having the right one can be generally thought of as being one of the main aspect of choosing a data model and they are conceptualized into three categories based on the level of the detail and the specificity now they are classified into three types the first one is conceptual data model the conceptual data model explains what the system should contain with regard to and how it is related this model is usually built with the help of the uh, user and the stakeholders it represents the application's business logic and is often used as the basis for one or more following model next we have the logical data model now the logical data model will describe how the data will be structured in this model the relationship between the entities is established at a high level you'll also list the attributes for the entities represented in this model and finally we have the physical data model guys the physical data model represents how the data will be stored in a specific database now in this case we have mongodb model where we are using establishing a primary and a secondary relationship between the data in a document that is stored in the database such as mongodb you will also establish the data types for each of your fields that are mentioned this will provide you with your database schema as well
Now, although MongoDB has a flexible schema, you would need to uh, data model or schema design. A good data model means that you'll establish a strong foundation for an ever evolving data model. Now, MongoDB supports multiple ways to model relationship between the entities in a data model. Now, the first one is one to one. That is, in this type, one value is associated with only one document. That is, it will have a single relationship between the two connected objects or entities in the database. Next, we have one to many. Here, one value can be associated with more than one document or value at the same time. And finally, we have many to many. Now, when two or more entities within a document can have multiple relationship, that is basically is many to many relationship. In this type of model, multiple documents can be associated with each other. So let us now quickly understand with an example. Now consider the example for one to one relationship where I have a student table and contact info table. Now for each student ID, there is a unique details or the contact info. So it is basically pointing one value to another. That is student ID, which is one to one relation. And similarly, we have one to many relation wherein we have customer table and orders table. Now, every customer has a different ID and a customer can place multiple orders. So it can generate multiple order IDs. So we have three different IDs like B204, B391, B448. So this is what is one to many, which is basically one entity is being pointed to three other values. I hope you understood one to one and one to many. So if you understood this, let us know in the comment section below what will be a good example of many to many relationship. All right, moving ahead, let us now discuss the types of methods to create the data models. Now, once we are uh, confirmed with what data model we need and the relationship that we have chosen for, uh, for our documents to store the data, we need a, a method that is to create a data model. Now, that is where uh, we have two different data models that stores the data in documents. That is, first one is embedded data model. So in embedded data model, you can embed data in a single document or structure in MongoDB. It is also referred to as denormalized data model. It leverages the full potential of MongoDB's rich document and it uses a one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationship, guys. Next, we have the reference data model or in other words, it is known as normalized data model. Now, they are used to build one-to-many as well as many to many relationship models. Now, while working with the embedded document models, there will be times when you have to repeat the data. This is where reference data model comes into picture, which basically tackles the data redundancy. So I know it is a bit of confusing. So let's just understand this with an example here. Now, if you consider uh, the embedded model, uh, if you look at a document which I have taken here, which is the details of a student named Rohan, where we have a collection uh, that is containing a document has Rohan. In this document, we have embedded a document here that is contact details and his grade. So embedding a uh, data model stores relevant details in the same documents or the same database record. This way you can minimize queries and update required to perform common database operation. On the other hand, we have a reference data model or the normalized data model. So if you look at uh, to the reference model example here, we have basically split a single document into three documents. And since contact details and grade have the ID from the document that is of Rohan's, you can call them whenever needed. Now normalized data model splits the data into multiple collections by using references between the newer collections. You can update or change a single document which will update other collections automatically. This is an efficient way of updating data and is mostly used when your data goes through frequent changes. That is, if you're working on a data that has to be leveraged or changed on a daily basis, you can consider reference model. That is, which is basically one of the biggest advantages of using normalized data where you have to model large data sets that follow a certain hierarchy and you have to, where you have to represent multiple many to many relationships. So that is where we use uh, embedded model and reference model. All right. Uh, as we know, MongoDB is a NoSQL database program that controls document oriented data instead of a relational data made relational data model, which comprises of rows and columns. Now, the speed of MongoDB is one of its characteristics as it handles a huge chunks of unstructured data. So in order to perform 
certain operation MongoDB may use operators to carry out particular tasks in order to return queries more quickly and efficiently. So in today's session, we'll be taking you through all about the MongoDB operators. What are they? the different types of MongoDB operators that are used, its functions with the help of some examples. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what is MongoDB operators? Operators are basically special symbols or keywords that tell a compiler what mathematical or logical operations to perform. The operator improves MongoDB functionality by enabling the developers and programmers to construct sophisticated queries to communicate with data sets that are appropriate for their application and perform certain complex tasks to retrieve the data. Now in general we use the find command or method to fetch the data from collections using the query operator. Also we need to use the prefix uh, which is the dollar sign before the query operator. So let us just quickly understand the syntax of the operators in MongoDB. The syntax is followed as db dot name of collection dot find and within the parenthesis we have to mention the field name and mention the semicolon and then we have to mention the dollar symbol with the help of the operator that we want to use mention the value and finally we use the pretty uh, method so let us just quickly uh, go through all these uh, terminologies so that we'll have a better idea now the name of the collection is basically according to the query operator we used in our query. This parameter is defined as the collection name from which documents have been retrieved. Next we have the find method. Now data can be retrieved from collections using this technique. We can also retrieve particular documents from MongoDB by using the find method with the query operator. Next we have the field name. According to the query uh, parameter we used in our query, this parameter is defined as the name of the field from which we are retrieving data. That is what we are trying to uh, retrieve data from our collection is basically the field name. Next, we have the query operator name, which must be used to retrieve the documents from the collection in accordance with the query operations. Next, we have to mention the value. The value is nothing uh, more than the field value that we used uh, with the query operator to conduct logical or any mathematical operations and so on. And finally, we have an optional uh, tag which is pretty now since mongodb output is generally is in an unstructured format so we can display our output using this technique in a structured format and this is also optional guys so if there is a requirement uh, to show the uh, data in a proper structured way you can use the pretty uh, statement so that was all about mongodb operators guys so let us just move ahead so let us now understand the different types of operators in MongoDB. Now, just like uh, any operators in other programming languages, MongoDB operators are used to perform specific relational, mathematical or logical operations and produce the final result. Operators in MongoDB are, you know, broadly classified into three types. The first one is query and projection operator. Next, we have update operator. And then finally, we have aggregation pipeline operator. Now in MongoDB, the default for queries is to return all the fields in the matching documents. So basically a query and a projection operator is used to perform certain calculation, wherein a projection query is used to specify or restrict the data result returned in query result. Now by specifying a projection query, you can specify the fields you want to return or exclude. Now similarly, we have other query operators, which we'll be discussing in a while, which are used to perform certain a uh, complex calculation on the data that you're retrieving from the documents. Next, we have the update operator, which basically updates the value of all the fields of the documents, which is matching the specified condition. And finally, we have the aggregation pipeline. So it basically provides the competent results of, as a result of processing the data records and document. So it is similar to that of aggregate functions in SQL, wherein it you know, aggregates all the values within a document and performs certain aggregation uh, operation like you know sum maximum minimum and so on so these were some of the main uh, different types of operators in mongodb so let us now just uh, get into detail and how they are further classified into various types now query and projection operator further classified into various other types such as comparison operator logical operator array operator element operator bitwise operator evaluation operator and finally we have geospatial uh, operator now, 
it is time taking to get into all of this stuff and explain each and every operator guys so let us just uh, focus on the main operators that are frequently used in mongodb so firstly let us discuss about the comparison operator guys now the comparison operators are basically used uh, to compare two expressions and retrieve data from the documents that is the documents that are that we have stored uh, that is the all the data from the collections which are basically the group of collections is basically a document in mongodb that is stored in the mongodb database now we have several such comparison operators in mongodb now as explained earlier we have to use the dollar sign with the help of operator that we have been uh, mentioning so basically the operators uh, take the dollar sign and then we have to mention the operator that we have taken so let us just uh, discuss some of the operators here the first one is eq which is basically the equal operator which matches values that are equal to the value specified in the query next we have dollar any which has a full form of not equal to which is opposite of equal and matches all the values that are not equal to the value specified in the query next we have gt and gt which is basically greater than and greater than equals to uh, this operator basically matches the value that are greater than the value specified in the query or that are even greater than or equal to the values value specified in the query next we have the lt or lte that is less than or less than equals to again as the uh, it the word goes it is similar again it matches the values that are less than the value specified in the query or it matches with the less than or equal values specified in the query in the document and finally we have the in and nin which basically matches any of the value that is existing or not existing in an array specified in the query i know it is a bit of confusing so let us just uh, understand this with an example here so consider this example on your right hand side where you can see this image which is basically a format of a document that is stored in a mongodb database guys so let us say i have a, you know a collection named orders of let's say a stationary item database now i have further different three different documents that are present in uh, this collection so basically a group of documents is basically a collection in a mongodb database so i hope you've understood uh, what is a collection document and what is a database so if you want to know more about it we have a dedicated video on what is mongodb where we've uh, explained clearly on all these terms and how it exactly works make sure you check that out uh, which will be quite helpful and i would highly recommend so as you can see we have basically three documents here we have a id of three different uh, people who have purchased certain products from a stationery and have different ids so we have three customers here rahul pranav and kirti now if i say if i want to perform comparison operation for this uh, let us just understand how equal and not equal operation performs so basically uh, i am taking an example here which says db.orders.find where payment mode is equals to card so basically uh, the compiler finds all the documents that is present in this collection where the payment mode is made through card which instead of cash so basically we have here uh, the details of two uh, customers who have used their payment mode as card which is customer rahul and customer kirti so in this way it will return these two uh, following documents and similarly we have any which is not equal to and i am taking another example which is db dot orders find order total is not equals to 600 now as you can see in the image we have the third document of customer kirti whose order total is 600 right so it basically evaluates this and returns the result which has an order total which is not equals to 600 that is basically the first two documents that is it will retrieve the data from this document of the first uh, you know two documents which is of customer rahul and customer pranav whose order total is basically 2450 and 5800 respectively so that is basically what is a comparison operator using eq and any which is equal to and not equals to all right moving ahead let us now discuss what is gt and gt which basically uh, derives as greater than and greater than equals to again let us consider the same uh you know collection uh, same example that we have taken earlier now the first uh query is basically for gt that is db dot order find order total is greater than three thousand all right so we are basically performing a search query wherein we want only uh, those documents whose 
order total is greater than 3000. Now, if you look at the image, we have only, uh, I guess, one document, which is of customer Pranav, whose order total is 5800, which is more than 3000. And similarly, we have for greater than equals to, which is DB dot orders fine, order total GTE uh, 2450. So basically, we should retrieve uh, the document whose order total is more than 250. Again, we have two documents here, right? Now we have a document of customer Rahul and the customer Pranav whose order total is 2450, which is equals to 2450 that we have mentioned in our query. So basically, uh, the details of the documents of customer Rahul and customer Pranav whose order total is greater than or equals to 2400. All right, moving ahead, let us now understand what is LTA and LTA, which is a negation or complete opposite to greater than and greater uh, than equals to. Now, in less than, we have taken an example, which is again order total, which is less than 2000. Uh, so, I guess we have only one record again here of customer Kirti, whose order total is 600. And similarly, less than or equals to 500. Now, I guess we have only one document again of kirti which is order total is 600 oh i'm sorry uh, less than or equals to 500 right so we don't have any uh you know document of the customers which is less than or equals to 500 guys sorry uh just uh, pardon me for my mistake i didn't check so we don't have any customers whose order total is less than or equals to 500 so it will basically uh you know retrieve a null value so that were some examples of comparison operator. Let us move ahead with logical operators now. So basically logical operators return data based on the expression that evaluate the following condition to either be true or false. Now, in general, we have four different types of logical operators in MongoDB, which is and, or, not, and not, which is again similar uh, with any other programming languages where we use a logical operator and similar to that of SQL as well. Now, the, basically, the AND operator returns all the documents that match the condition of both the expressions specified. And OR operator returns all documents that match the condition of either expression specified. Next, we have the NOR operator, which returns all documents that do not match the condition of either expression. This is basically an opposite of OR operator. And finally, we have the NOT operator, which basically returns documents that does not match with the query expression in a document. So again, let us just understand with an example by considering the same example, uh, which is uh, the order collection. Now for, for ex first example, I'm taking and operator, which says DB dot orders find and address city is either Delhi or payment mode is cash. Now, if I look into the uh, collection here, I have only one such document where city address city is Delhi and payment mode is Cash, that is the details of customer Pranav. So it will retrieve only the document of Pranav here. Next, if I consider the OR operator, which is DB dot orders find OR city Jaipur or order total is less than or equals to 100. So we have Jaipur uh, city whose uh, I think it's of customer uh, Jaipur. Yeah, it's of customer Rahul. So it will retrieve that one. And it will also retrieve those documents whose order total is less than or equals to 1000. Now we have only one document of Kirti whose order total is 600, which is again less than or equals to 100. So basically the first document and the third document will be retrieved in our query in a final resultant set. And finally, we have the NOR operator, which says the city is either is not either Delhi or payment mode is cash. Now other than city Delhi and the payment mode cash. That is, we have uh, Pranav whose payment mode is cash and he also belongs to Sere. So basically, it will uh, remove the document of this person, customer uh, Pranav, and it will fetch the first and third documents, that is, uh, the, I, the customer Rahul's and the customer Kirti. So those were some of the uh, logical operator examples we have used. I hope you've understood. So moving ahead, let us now discuss some element operators, guys. The element query operators are basically used to locate document, you know, based uh, on the fields of the uh, document. Now, what that I mean is, so basically every document has a field, right? Now, for example, let's say in the previous example, I've taken ID, customer name, 
order total and so on and so which is basically a field and now these field have further values or elements to its name right so the element operator basically uh, finds all the documents based on the fields of the document that you are trying to search for now we have basically two uh, element operator which is exist and types exist operator basically returns documents that have a specific field now if i let let us take an example let's say i have an uh, you know collection employees and i want to find the employee age as a field i want to find if there is a field called employee age and his age is greater than or equals to 35 so i've taken this example which is db dot employees find employee age exists true gt35 so if there is any field in our collection of employee age and is greater than 25 or greater than 35 it will retrieve those documents and similarly we have the type document type operator which returns document if field is of only a specific type specified type now uh, if i take an example here let's say if i'm trying to find a field uh, employee age again and it is of double uh, double integer type so if i want a particular you know field data type i can use the type uh, operator here so this was that was all about element operator guys and let us move ahead and finally discuss one of the main used operator that is array operators array operators in mongodb are basically used to query documents that include a field of arrays now we basically again have three different types of operators used in uh, mongodb the first one is all operator it returns documents from a collection if it matches all the values in the specified array next we have the size operator it returns documents from the collection to match an array with a provided number of elements in it next and finally we have lm match which returns those documents that match specified condition within each array element now i hope i know it is a bit of confusing so let us just move ahead and understand with an example here consider the same uh, example again uh, where we have three documents here now for first example i have taken the all operator which is an array operator so what i'm trying to find is i'm trying to find a element of value which has you know a notebook and a paper so the query is followed as db.order.find orders item all notebook and paper so if you look into the image i think we have only uh, two documents where we have this fields uh, having notebook and paper that is the first customer and second customer if you look into the item name we have notebook and paper in the first uh, document and second document also we have item name notebook and paper so it will retrieve these two documents and next we have the size so the size basically retrieves the number of array elements that you want in your resultant set now the query is followed as db.order.find where order items is of size 4 now if you look into three all the three documents that are present here we have only one such document where it has four elements now if you look at the first document of customer rahul order items we have four different uh, you know fields that is he has placed an order on notebook play, paper general and postcard now in contrast if you look at to the other two uh, documents where we have only notebook paper and postcard for pranav and we have only notebook and postcard for kirti so which is against or uh, which does not satisfy the size operator so it basically retrieves only the first one which has four elements or fields so i think that was all about the array operators guys i hope you uh, understood about all the query and projection operators and its different types now again we have uh, several mini operators like geospatial uh, comment operator and so many but which are not that significant in its usage uh, but anyways if you want us to cover uh, in our further tutorials let us know wherein we'll uh, try to cover a more uh, you know detailed version of it with a hands on experience uh, with the mongodb database as well and finally let us discuss uh, what is update operator guys and basically mongodb offers a variety of field update operators to update the values of the fields and documents matching the specified condition so it is basically similar to that of your dml command which is an update uh, command which is used to, used to update the values in the columns now similarly in mongodb 
there might be a possibility that you have to update some values and that is where we have the update field operators now there are again various such of update operators so let us just go in through one by one we have first one as current date which is used to set the value of a field to current date either a date or a timestamp next we have inc which is basically increment it is used to increment the value of the field by the specified amount next we have the min and max which is used to update the field if the specified value is less than the existing field value or it is greater than the existing field value next we have the mul which is uh, a full form of multiply it is used to multiply the value of the field by the specified amount and finally we have the rename as a name suggests this operator is used to rename a field uh, within a, a document so that was all about the operators in mongodb guys i think we have covered most almost all the important update uh, operators that are used frequently on a general basis i think this is quite enough for you to perform all the complex operation that you undertake uh, to, to retrieve certain uh, you know documents or values in your database what are regular expressions in mongodb regular expressions are used to match specific patterns in a document it is basically nothing but finding strings within a document now it's possible that you won't always know the precise field value to search for when retrieving documents from a collection so in order to help with data retrieval based on search values that match a specific pattern instead of the whole uh, word or a string regular expressions can be used it comes with multiple options also so we can customize our query to check if a field contains a string or not now why we use regular expressions now there are many reasons but these are some of the important uh, factors on why we use regular expressions just like in any other uh, languages we use right so even uh, we discussed regular expressions in sql also in our previous tutorial so if you haven't checked that out make sure you uh, check that out on our channel on sql playlist now the first reason is obvious that it provides patterns or a sequence of characters for matching text and define search patterns now like i said instead of searching the whole uh, value in a particular field you can just write a simple pattern that you are aiming to search for now it retrieves any unidentified field in a document easily as well and finally it queries databases to find a smaller subset of data within a collection so instead of retrieving all the fields again in a document you just you can uh, retrieve only a portion or a part of data from that collection using regular expressions now this can be achieved with the help of the regex operator now what is regex operator the regex operator provides regular expression capabilities for pattern matching strings in the queries so in in simpler terms using this operator one can search for the given string in a specific collection so if the exact field value is unknown that a, a user is looking for in the document this operator can turn it handy let us now understand the syntax of the regex operator now we have various uh, different types of syntax uh, the first one is a generic syntax where we are using a delimiter which is uh, the syntax is followed as db dot collection name dot file and within the parenthesis mention the field name that uh, you are using that you want to find a subset of data or the uh, you know a specific pattern that you are searching for and then mention the regex keyword and then the pattern now if you look at uh, the pattern inside the pattern i have mentioned the delimiter so which basically means that you can like find any pattern of a string value let's say if i want to find a person's name uh, who has let's say ra in their name so i can just uh, simply put a delimiter and inside that i can put a, put the two uh, you know strings which is ra so for example it can match rahul and, and any other names uh, in the same way as well so in that way you can use the regex operator without using any uh, without using actually uh, the regex pattern next we have another uh, you know syntax of the same uh, regex operator which is mention the field and mention the regex operator using the dollar sign and let's say if you want to find a specific character so we use circumflex or to the power uh, which is a meta character to match a string at the beginning and we use a dollar sign at the end to match a particular string that ends with a particular value and next we also have uh, another uh, you know type of syntax for uh, regex operator which is field mention the field name and the regex keyword 
I mentioned the pattern. It can be anything. It can be a generic one where you can use delimiters or you can even use uh, the circumflex or the uh, dollar sign. And apart from that, we can mention the options as well. Now we have various different options like S. Uh, I, X and F. Now what the S option does is it allows the dot character to match all the characters including the new line characters that you are entering in a document. Now we use X as an option to ignore all white space characters in the regex pattern. Next we have I which is used to match both upper as well as lower case patterns in the string. And finally we use M in order to specifically search for the circumflex and the dollar sign inside the string. So if these are not used, these anchors match at the strings end or beginning. Now this is a bit confusion for you guys. So let us understand, uh, you'll understand it in a more better way when we get into the execution part. So I hope you understood what is regex operator. So let's just understand how regex operator works with a simple example here. Now let's say I have uh, a collection, let's say its name is orders. And within the orders collection, I have three different documents here of three uh, different customers like Rahul, Pranav and Kirti. Now, let's say if I want to find, uh, you know, the customer name who has RA in their name. Now, it can be at the starting, it can be middle or it can be elsewhere or the, in the end, I mean. So, for that, I'm just using a delimiter uh, and I'm mentioning two uh, string values that is R and A. So, it will only match Rahul because we have RA and similarly, we have Pranav who is also having R and A uh, strings uh, characters in, in their name. We also have Kirti, but she doesn't have RA, so it doesn't match. So we only have, we'll get the output of only these two documents. Now, similarly, let's say if I take another example, wherein I am writing another query, which is db.orders.find, and I'm mentioning the field name payment mode, and I'm finding for a particular string here, which starts with CA, which is the payment mode in the document should be, should start with CA. Now we have payment mode as card, cash, and again, we also have uh, card and cash are basically the two types of payment mode. So it will basically retrieve all the three documents. So let us now understand another example here. Now let's say I've written a query which is db.orders find payment mode. Uh, sorry, uh, I think there is a mistake here. Uh, so let's say if the orders item, uh, I'm taking the field as order item and I'm mentioning the regex word again. And here I'm mentioning dollar OK. That means we item name in the orders item the item name should end with ok so we have different item names here like notebook paper general and postcard now only one item name which is notebook which has ok in the ending right so the dollar symbol basically matches the string in the end so since it has ok uh, the two uh, specific strings in the end of the uh, you know document so it will only match the notebook. So since we have notebook in all the three documents, again, we can retrieve the three uh, documents in our final output. So this is how regex operator basically works. So let us now directly jump into MongoDB shell for execution part and see how it gets executed with some more different examples. So as you can see, uh, the database MongoDB shell has started. So let us just use the uh, show DBS in order to display the uh, Data, uh, database that are present. So we have the simply code one, which we'll be using again. So I'm just using simply code one. And let us now see the collections inside this. We have the employee collection. So let us just use that. So in order to find the data that is present, we will use the db dot collection which is employee dot find command. So it will display all the documents that are present. So firstly, let us discuss a simple example where we'll uh, simply uh, use the delimiter operator in order to find, you know, the first name of the employees in our, our documents whose name can have li. Okay. So then uh, we're just providing a pattern here, which is li. So the query would be db dot employee dot find open the brackets, square brackets, and within the flower brackets, mention the field name, that is first name, and then mention the delimiter, which is this, and our, our pattern that we are trying to find is li, right? So mention li, and again, close the uh, brackets, and enter. So, all right. So we can see some of the documents have been retrieved. Let's say, if you take the first document here, we have the first name Valli 
and his full name is Patabala. So you can see we have characters Li at the end here. So similarly, if you take the next document, we have Shelly. Sim again, we have Li at the end. And if you take this example, we have Julia whose name has Li characters in the between. And next, we also have Williams who has Li in between again. So these are the five documents that are received. So irrespective of whether, irrespective of the position in which they are, it basically retrieves all the uh, documents that has li as a substring in the uh, document. So in this way, you can use uh, the regex operator also simply without using the regex, uh, you know, keyword. So let us now understand another example, guys. So let us say uh, I'm trying to find a specific pattern where I want to find the first name of the employee whose name starts with SH. So in that case, what I'll do, I'll write a simple query as dot db.employee.find, open the brackets, mention the field name, which is first name. And again, now we'll write the regex keyword here. Since we are particularly finding a pattern which says that the name of the employee, the first name of the employee should start with only S and H. So mention the dollar symbol, mention the regex keyword and semicolon and then within the uh, double quotes, mention the words or the uh, pattern that you're trying to searching for. So I'm keeping it as S and H. So let us close the noted commas. Let us close the flower brackets and and finally the square brackets. I think we need to mention two flower brackets. So I think we're good to go. So let's just execute the statement. All right. So as you can see in the resultant set, we have some documents being retrieved. So firstly, if you look at the uh, document of this one, who's the employee whose first name is Shelly. So it's starting with SH. Next, we also have uh, employee ID 123 whose first name is Shanta again starting with SH and similarly we have employee ID 205 whose first name Shelly starting with SH again. So you can use the regex operator in this way to only find a particular pattern. Now let us take another scenario here. So if you look at this previous example now we are mentioning uh, the pattern as capital S and H. So it is case sensitive right so it is only displaying the records of those employees whose uh, first name is starting with capital s and the second letter which is small h so let's say in in a different scenario we want uh, all the employees name whose name is having uh, let's say capital s as well as well as capital h so in that case you need to use the options uh, you know command so Let's say again, if I am trying to find the first name of an employee uh, whose uh, first name starts with JU. So it can be capital J or small U. So in that case, you'll need to use the options and the option that we are going to take is, which is basically I. So I'm just going to uh, execute this statement. So just follow it with me. DB dot employee dot find and within the uh, square brackets, open the square brackets and the flower brackets, first name and open the flower brackets again, mention the dollar sign, mention the regex keyword, again semicolon. Now the pattern that I'm searching is JU, it can be anything. So we are just going for case insensitive here. Now for that, we have to basically use the options command here. So mention the dollar sign, options is the keyword and mention the colon and within the bracket, uh, inverted quotes, mention I. So what basically this I does is it will retrieve all the records irrespective of whether they are in uh, uppercase or lowercase. So let us just close the form brackets again and let us execute it. So as you can see, we have only uh, one uh, record or one document that is being retrieved, which is of Julia Nair. Now, if you look at the command that we have taken is small j and small u, but in the resultant output, the, uh, the, the document is that which has been retrieved is capital J and small u. 
So in this way, you can use the options, uh, you know, command. You have to find all the documents irrespective of whether they are in a smaller case or upper case. So that was one another scenario, guys. So finally, let us look into another scenario where you want to find, you know, a specific document starting with a particular uh, substring or sub or a pattern or a value and ending with a pro a particular value. So firstly, let us take uh, an example of. Uh, you know, this document wherein we'll search for the job ID, which starts with AC. So in that case, the following query would be DB dot employee dot find. Mention the flower brackets. So we are taking as job ID, which is our field name. Mention the regex keyword again. So the pattern that we are searching for is, so circumflex, you have to mention this uh, symbol, which is a meta character and the job ID should start with A and C. So it is must. So this condition basically checks for all the job IDs, the name of job IDs starting with AC. So let us just close this and enter. All right. So in our resultant output, we have two different uh, documents present. So if you look at the first document, we have job ID as AC MGR and next to the second job ID, we have AC accountant. So this was another scenario where we are using, uh, you know, where you are finding documents only uh, with using with the help of the regex operator and a search uh, pattern wherein we are only finding the job ID of those employees whose uh, job ID name starts with AC. So that brings to the end of today's session, guys. I hope. Uh, you've understood uh, all about MongoDB regex operators and how to use them. Now, projection in MongoDB is a special type of feature, guys, that is used to select only a certain part of the data without selecting the entire data present inside the document. So, more on that soon. But before we get started, uh, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We we'll start the tutorial by understanding what is MongoDB projection and then we will understand why we use projection in Mongo. and after that we will have a how projection works in MongoDB and its syntax usage and next we will discuss projection queries with the help of certain examples and finally we will execute those examples in MongoDB server. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Right. What is MongoDB projection? Now, MongoDB projection helps to return the specific fields from the query or you can say from the MongoDB collection. Now, by default, when we query any collection in MongoDB, it returns all the fields in documents. So, as you know, MongoDB is a schema-less database, which is a NoSQL database and has a different structure to that of relational database. Now, the tables in relational database are called as collection and rows are called columns. We may not want all the records from the collection, but a few of them in the resultant set. So in that case, we use MongoDB projection using projection document, which is used to limit the amount or fields in the data present in that document. So in a nutshell, if I would say projection means selecting only the necessary data rather than Selecting the whole of the data present in the document. Now, similarly, add to that of where conditional clause that we use in SQL. Suppose if uh, I have a document which has 10 fields, and you need to show why we use a popular NoSQL and open source document oriented database, which allows for highly scalable and flexible document structure, which is faster than relational database because of its efficient storage and indexing uh, techniques and being a NoSQL database, it is designed to handle large amounts of data. So DB will process a lot of unnecessary data. And you want when you want to retrieve specific information from a large number of records. So to overcome this problem, we use projection query. Now, some of the reasons now when using projection to remove unused or unused fields, the MongoDB server will have to fetch each will document into its memory and then filter the results to return. Uh, actually reduce the memory usage, but can save the significant network band 
for query results depending on the data model and the fields projected in your documents and it only returns indexed query results without fetching the full documents now which is basically the main use case of projection which basically eliminates all the fields that are unnecessary for the user and particular fields within the document then he can use the projection query operator and finally filter data without impacting the overall database performance now by default is return all fields and matching documents so if you need all the fields returning full documents is going to be more efficient having a server manipulate the result projection however then to improve performance and that is one of the main uh, consideration when we are using mongodb projection so these are some of the reasons uh, on why we use mongodb projection all right let us now understand how mongodb projection works now in general to retrieve the data from the uh, documents we use the find method uh, which retrieves data from all the fields within a document without any filtering so let us now understand the syntax of mongodb projection operator now the syntax is followed as db dot collection name dot find and within the parenthesis mention the uh, field names that is I am taking here field one and its corresponding value field two and value two. Now the values that I am talking about is if field value is set as one, which is a boolean expression uh, which is equals to as it will basically show the data in that field. Field value is if the boolean expression it hides the data in the field. So let us understand this with an example, guys. I the, only then you will get a clear understanding of it. Now I have let's say a collection uh, of uh, certain documents. Let's say the collection name is orders, and I have three such documents here, which has various fields like ID, customer, address, payment mode, email, uh, order total, and order items. Now, if I want to display all these documents, uh, what I'll do, I'll basically write a query using the find method, which is followed as db dot orders dot find. So it will basically retrieve all the documents without uh, restricting any of the fields that are present in our collection. Now, let's say if I want only particular field that I want to display in my resultant set. Now, let's say if I have a uh, the payment mode and the order total field and I want only them to display in the resultant set without displaying all the fields that are present in each of the document. So in that case, I'll write a query as db.orders.find and inside the parenthesis, I'll mention payment mode colon one and order total is one. Now, since I've set the uh, field value to one, it will only retrieve those values and similarly for order total also it will retrieve only that particular field value so this will basically be the output of our uh, resultant set that is it will show the id object the payment mode of the uh, three documents and similarly the order total of the three documents now by default we have the underscore id which is a default value which we cannot uh, change it. So if if at all if you want to override and change it, you can mention it to zero. Now let's say uh, I'm taking the same example here. Now instead of just writing payment mode to one and order total to one, I'm adding another uh, you know constraint or I'm using I'm projecting another field which is of ID and I'm setting it to zero. Now if you see in a result and set, we do not have the ID field. So in this way, you can use projection in order to restrict certain fields from your resultant table set without actually retrieving all the data that is present in your documents. So let us now jump into Mongo shell and execute this example and see how it is working. So as you can see, uh, Mongo shell has been started. Now, I don't want to get into the details of all of it. Uh, we will cover uh, in a separate tutorial where we'll understand how to create uh, a database and how to create a collection in MongoDB separately, guys. Stay tuned to the channel for that. So we'll just cover uh, how we'll implement MongoDB uh, projection with certain examples here. Now, the basically, uh, in order to retrieve the databases that are present in our MongoDB, we have to use the command as show DBS. So it will list out all the databases that are present. We have admin, config, local, and simply code one. Now I have already created uh, the simply code one in hindsight before itself, so that we can save a bit of time. And I've also created a collection in that. So 
before you see the collection and the documents that are present in it, you have to use uh, the SimpliCode database. So for that, we'll use the SimpliCode one as our command. So as you can see, it is show, uh, saying that switch to DB simply code. Now, mm -hmm. if you want to find all the collections that are present in the database, you have to uh, basically write as sh sh show collections. So it will list out all the collections in that. Now, as you can see, I have a collection that is of employee here. So for example, uh, we'll consider this same uh, collection. Now I have this below collection named as employee with uh, let's say certain number of documents in that. Now if I query the collection in Mongo the shell, I, if I write a command to it to return all the documents or fields from the matching documents by default, it will basically, it will return all the documents. So for that, I will use a statement like which is of db dot mention the uh, collection name that is employee dot find so find method is used to list out all the documents so you can just see that we have a lot of documents in our resultant set uh let me just scroll and uh, go to the top so as you can see we have different documents a number of documents and it has different fields like id employee id first name last name email phone number hiring date, job id salary manager id department id and so on so you can see we have a lot of documents. So let's just count how many documents we have. Uh, for that, you can use the uh, count statement. So db.employee.count. So you can see we have a total of 50 documents present in our employee collection. Now, if you look at our resultant set, after we used the find method, you can see it has returned all the fields of the document from the collection. Now, but what if I want to fetch only a particular field, like let's say first name, last name, email, or even their salary? How will we do that? Now, the answer is using MongoDB projection. We will project specific fields to return from the query. Now, so before proceeding to MongoDB projection, guys, let's recall how we fetch certain fields from, you know, a traditional SQL database so that we can have a clear understanding. Now, let's say, suppose the collection uh, employee is a table in SQL and let's say all the fields like employee ID, first name, last name, so on are its columns. Now, I want to fetch the only, uh, the let's say, first name, last name uh, from the table. So in that case, what we'll write, we'll basically write a query as select first name comma last name from a table that is employee right i hope uh, i'm clear with this so it is similar to that in mongodb wherein we are executing this query as uh, using projection so let us now see how we do projection here so let's just uh, consider an uh, example here now let's say i'm writing a command as db.employee.find and let's say if I want to fetch all the documents uh, of all the employees whose department ID is 30. So in that case, what I'll do is department. So it is says a uh, case sensitive guy. So make sure uh, you write in the capitals or whatever the field is written as. So mention the column and within the double quotes mention 30. So close the uh, parenthesis and close the square brackets as well. So it will basically list out, as you can see, all the documents of the employees whose department ID is 30. So we can see we have employee ID uh, of the employee 114, 115, 116, 117, 118 and 119 whose all their department is 30. Now again, even if I'm returning a particular a field or a condition, it is also, you know, retrieving all the fields from all the documents. Now, I don't want that. Now, I want only a particular field. So, what in that case, we will project certain fields without returning all the fields from our documents. So, let us see how it works. So, the query is followed as db. Mention the collection name employee. Find open the uh, square brackets and let's say uh, I want to retrieve only the first name first name so I'm setting it as one as we discussed earlier if you want to uh, retrieve the particular field you have to mention one and similarly I want to mention I want to retrieve the last name as well last name column and one 
and also let us take another field let's say uh, salary right we have salary also let us just do that as well one all right close the parenthesis and close the square brackets and enter so we do not have any output here guys that is because we haven't mentioned the parenthesis uh, before the find method so let me just uh, copy paste and we'll see how it is So before, after the find, we'll have to mention the uh, parenthesis again, and then I think we're good to go now. So as you can see in a resultant set, now since we have only mentioned the first name, last name, and the salary, it is only displaying the results, only those, only certain fields. That is the first name, last name, and salary in a resultant set. Now by default, this ID object is uh, you know retrieved. Uh, with the uh, command so if you want to eliminate that as well you can uh, keep the id to zero so let us just uh, execute that so let me just copy this again paste it and mention another uh, criteria that is the field now the field should be the field that is of id should be zero so close the parenthesis so let us just execute this and we'll see how it is the output so as you can see now only we have the first name last name and salary of all the employees so we have just basically eliminated the object id as well so if you want uh, only uh, the first name, last name, and salary in your output. You can just uh, mention the field names and mention one if you want to display in a resultant set. And if you want to uh, display, if you do not want to display those certain fields, you can mention as zero. So, in this way, you can use uh, the projection query operator in order to project only certain fields from all the documents. So, yes, I guess that was uh, all about the uh, MongoDB projection, guys. Uh, now, Projection query operator can be quite useful when you are handling a lot of unstructured data. Let's say if the database has like 10,000 or even a million records. In such case, if you want to return a specific number of fields only, now a document can have a, any number of fields like 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. So in some cases, if you want to retrieve or uh, specify only certain number of fields in your resultant set, in that case, projection operator can be quite useful. And I know it is quite confusing at the beginning. So it just need, you just need more practice to understand this in a more better way. So that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. Uh, I hope you've understood all the topics and uh, concepts covered. In so sorting and limiting are one of the necessary database operations. It helps to simplify and the readability of the data and sort the data as per the user requirement. Now, when you're working on huge chunks of data in a database, both sorting and limit operations can be quite a uh, handful to understand and visualize data in order to get meaningful information out of it and retrieve only the specified number of records accordingly as per your need. So in this tutorial, you will learn all about the sorting and limiting concepts and how it can be implemented in MongoDB database. So before getting into the execution part, let us quickly understand what is sorting in MongoDB. Sorting is the ordering of data in an increasing and decreasing order based on set of relationships between the various data items present in the database. Now sorting can be done on any entities having information like ID, name, age, address or any data type having numbers or string values. Now sorting improves the readability and consistency of the data displayed from the database. So in a nutshell, sorting is done just like in any other database or programming language that involves arranging data into some meaningful information to make it easier to understand, analyze or visualize. Let us understand its syntax. The syntax is simple. It is followed as db.collectionNameFind.sort and within the parenthesis mention the field and the order. So let us understand how it is. Now for sorting your MongoDB documents, you need to make use of the sort method. 
So this method will accept a document that has a list of fields and the order for sorting. So for indicating the sorting order, you have to set the value 1 or minus 1 with the specific entity based on which the ordering will be set and displayed. So if the order is, uh, is 1, it will basically uh, sort the records in ascending order, that is in an increasing manner. And if you mention the order as minus 1, it will basically sort, sort the uh, data in a descending order, that is in a decreasing manner. So, one indicates organizing data in ascending order, while minus 1 indicates organizing in descending order. So, that was all about the sorting in MongoDB. So, let us now understand how sort method works in MongoDB with an example. Now, consider uh, collection name orders. Now, if I just run a uh, command db.orders.find, I'll uh, get this uh, collection which has three documents. So it has uh, details of three customers like Rahul, uh, Pranav and Kirti, right? So let us now run a query where I'm using a sort method here, which is followed as db.orders.find and within the parenthesis, I am basically uh, projecting the query uh, ID so that we will not have it in a resultant set. So and also I'm sorting the data based on the customer here. So I'm mentioning customer as one. So that means it will basically order in the uh, ascending order so this will be the output guys now the output is now first we'll have the customer uh, details of kirti because the letter alphabet k uh, starts first in the alphabets uh, from a to z next we have pranav which starts with p and then we have rahul which starts with r so this is a simple example on how sorting method works in mongodb now let's say if i want to sort multiple fields in a collection so in what way will I be able to do it? Now let us consider an example here. Let's say I have uh, a pet info collection here and we have various records or you can say documents and we have uh, like various fields like name of the pet type and its weight. Now let's say if I want to sort multiple fields uh, within this collection. So I would write a query as db dot the collection name which is pet info dot find dot sort and next I am sorting this collection based on its type, its weight and finally the ID. So type I am giving it as one which will basically do in an ascending order which is in an increasing manner. Whereas I am doing uh, the sorting on the weight field as minus one which is in decreasing order that is in descending order that is from highest to lowest. And then I am also uh, sorting the field uh, ID as uh, ascending order that is I'm giving it as one. So when I run this command in MongoDB shell, this will, uh, this would what be a basic, basically the uh, output of the collection, right? So let us just understand how it is working. Now first I am uh, sorting the data based on the type. Now the sorting is done based on the priority that is given. That is first you have given the uh, sorting input as type then weight and the id so it will run the sorting based on this sequence only so if you look at the first uh, record of the document we have uh, the cat data that is the we have three uh, records of cats uh, having the same uh, type right so we have lily millie and oliver which uh, is of type cat so basically it will arrange those in ascending order since we have C which is the starting or the uh, alphabetical order, order of the alphabets uh, which comes, uh, the C comes first, then we have dog, next we have kangaroo. Now since we have uh, the same records or the same uh, record of cat that is repeating, then it will check weight. Now since we have given weight as minus one, that is from descending order, that is why we have the record of Lily whose weight is 12 at the first place, next the uh, details of Millie whose weight is 8 and finally we have Oliver whose weight is 7. So this means that if there are multiple pets of the same type, those pets are sorted by their weight in descending order. Now if there are multiple pets with both the same type as well as weight, then those pets are sorted by the ID field which we have given to sort them in ascending order. Now, if we hadn't included the ID field in the sorting process, then those pets of the same type and the uh, sorting process, then those pets of the same type and weight could appear in any order, guys. So without having a sort field on a unique field, such as the ID field, it would be entirely possible that uh, the result would come back in different order when we run the query each time. 
So I hope you understood how the sorting works when we want to uh, sort multiple fields within a document. So let us now understand what is limit in MongoDB. The limit method in MongoDB is used to limit the number of records. This method takes only one number type of argument, which is basically the number of documents that you want to display in your resultant set. Similarly, which we used to do in SQL also, wherein if you have like thousands of records, you use the limit clause in order to restrict a certain number of records and specify only certain records in a resultant set. Now the syntax is followed as db dot collection name dot find limit and value now in the value you can give as per your choice let's say if i give the value as five it will uh, display the first five records uh, or the documents from that collection and similarly you can also uh, use the projection where you can uh, display the fields as per your requirement by giving the values and also the limit value and simultaneously you can also sort the data and the limit uh, and limit those uh, collections or limit those documents in the collections as well and the syntax is followed as db dot collection name dot find dot sort field order you can give uh, multiple field names uh, in the sorting uh, you know parenthesis and mention the limit method and you can give the values that is number of uh, records that you want to fetch in your resultant table so let us now understand again how a limit works in mongodb now again let us consider uh, the orders collection here now let's say if i want to limit these collections now if i want to retrieve only the first two documents from this then the query would be db.orders.find limit and within the parenthesis i'm mentioning as two so this would uh, is this would be the output wherein you will get the details of rahul and pranav which are basically the first two documents which are present in our collection order all right now what if you want to sort and as well as limit the data now what i'm doing here is i'm basically projecting the id field so i'm keeping it as zero so that we do not have this in a resultant set next i'm sorting uh, this collection orders based on the customers so i'm giving customer as one which will basically res uh, re sort the uh, documents of the customers in an ascending manner that is from uh, lowest to highest and then i'm limiting these documents for only two values so uh, when i run this query this would be the output so customer i'm basically sorting in ascending order so first we'll have kirti and similarly next we have pranav in an alphabetical order which is following the uh, alphabetical condition starting from a to z and since i'm also using the limit clause here up to two values it will only retrieve the first two values so this is how limit works in mongodb guys i hope you've got a better understanding on how limit works you know considering considering this simple examples so let us now jump into mongodb shell uh, with a proper execution and see how it gets executed so as you can see mongodb shell has started and let us consider the simply code database again so let us write the command as use simply code one which will basically uh, select the simply code one database and let us see what are the collections present in it and we have the employee collections so let us just retrieve the data that is present in this so i am using the find method dp dot mention the collection name and mention the find method so it will retrieve all the data that is present in it so we have uh, data like employee id first name last name email phone number hiring date job id salary manager id department id so firstly let us discuss some examples using the sorting uh, technique guys uh, i think we already have uh, employee ids in uh, alphabet i mean in sorted order so let us just take another field uh, let us sort the uh, manager id field here so the following query would be db dot employee dot find mention the sort and within the sort mention the uh, field name which is manager id so I'm giving uh, the order as one, which will uh, sort the order in ascending order. So close the parenthesis and let us execute this. So basically you can type it to retrieve all the records that are present. So let us just understand how it is working. Uh, let me just scroll back. We have so many records guys. So. It's better we use the project field uh, so that we can have a clear understanding. So next time we'll use that. 
So this is our query which we have executed. Now, now since I've sorted the manager ID in ascending order, uh, which I've given the order value as one, as you can see, uh, since we do not have any manager ID for this employee, uh, Stephen King. Next, we have the manager ID as 100. And next, similarly, we have 100, 100, 100, 100, and so on. And next, we have 101 and 108. So as you can clearly see 114 as well. Uh, so you can clearly see that our data has been sorted in ascending order when we are using the sorting technique. So let us now understand how we can do that with another you know, sequence. That is, let us keep it as minus one. So in that case, what it will be is dv dot employee find. So I'm going to project some of the fields because uh, I don't want all these uh, you know unnecessary fields in my resultant set. So I'll just uh, opt them out so i don't want id field so i'm keeping it as zero and i want first name my resultant set so i'm keeping first name next i want last name as well keeping it as one and next uh, last name uh, and let's say uh, finally manager ID only, okay? Manager ID. Let's keep it as one, close the parenthesis. Now mention the sort uh, keyword, open the parenthesis, mention the field that you want to sort in the way that is manager ID. So it is important that you mention manager ID in the projection field guys. So if you do not mention and if you're sorting manager ID without uh, explicitly calling it, so you will get an error, it won't uh, display. So it is important that you mention the manager ID in the projection field also. Close the brackets. I think we are good to go. Let us just uh, recheck our code. Uh, okay, 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 right. So I think there is an error in the manager ID guys. So let me just copy this. So you might have a technical error. So make sure you give the correct name of the field's name. Otherwise, you'll get an error. So I think we are good to go now. So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can clearly see that in a resultant set, uh, we are only fetching the first name, last name, and manager ID since we have projected some of the fields uh, in a resultant set. And I'm sorting the data based on the uh, based on the manager ID field. And I'm, since I've given it as one, it will uh, sort the data in ascending order that is from lowest to highest so if you can see the first manager id is 100 so list of all the employees whose manager id is 100 has been shown next we have 101 103 uh, similarly if you type it we'll have the rest of the records as well so you can see next 108 114 120 and so on 122 123 201 205 so in this way you can sort multi, uh, various documents in order of how you want to display or show them in your resultant set all right i hope you've understood this till now uh, let us now sort multiple field guys so let me just copy this query now again like as we discussed earlier in uh, in our presentation sorting multiple fields is not a big task it is just simply that you have to add the uh, multiple fields here so manager id as well as let's take salary also so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort salary in uh, descending order. So I'm mentioning it as minus one. And also let us uh, project the field here as well. So salary has one. All right. So let us execute the statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see in the resultant set, after sorting the data uh, based on the fields of manager id and salary if we look at uh, the output now since we have sorted our manager id in ascending order since we have specified one as the order it will uh, basically sort the order in ascending order that is from lowest to highest and salary we have mentioned the order as minus one so it will do the opposite of that that is it will sort the data in descending order that is from highest to lowest so if you look at the resultant output here guys now since we have no manager id for this which is uh, 
taken as let's say the least value or zero so it is displaying first next we have the salary minus one so if you look at to the manager ids uh, of the next uh, like let's say four now since we have the manager id 100 which is the lowest value and we have four same or four or more uh, same values then it will move on to the next priority that we have given to sort our uh, document that is salary so first now we have 82000 as our salary that is from descending order it will uh, basically sort the data in uh, descending order that is from highest to lowest so we have 82000 next we have 80000 next we have 79800 next we have 6500 58000 next we have 1700 1700 similarly and so on so in this way you can uh, sort multiple fields using the sort method as well i hope you've understood how the uh, sort method works uh, in MongoDB guys uh, using the single field or using multiple field sorting how you can uh, basically arrange the data based on your need all right let us now uh, discuss some examples using the limit clause again limit clause is uh, very easy guys it is used to restrict or specify only certain number of records in a resultant set and the uh, syntax is followed as db dot mention the employee name db dot employee dot find dot let's say limit uh, i want only five records of the uh, you know employee collection so i'm mentioning as five as my value and when you hint uh, when you <coughs> press the enter you can see the resultant output has only five uh, five documents one two three four and five so this is a simple example of how you can use limit now you can also use the limit using the sort uh, method as well so let us just copy this and we will see how it gets executed so let me just paste it here now i'm just adding the limit uh, method here i want only let's say the first four okay now what i'm doing is i'm first basically projecting some of the fields that is the uh, required number of fields that i want to fetch in my resultant set then i'm basically sorting this documents in the uh, manner of manager id salary in order of ascending order for manager id since we have given one and in the order of descending order for salary since we have given at minus one and i'm limiting the resultant uh, you know output to only four records so when i press enter you can see we have only the first four records so we have no manager id again next we if we consider the manager id here 100 for adam fripp whose manager id is 100 and next two also we have the same manager id here guys so now the next uh, thing is it will go on to the salary like we discussed earlier the salary is uh, sorted here in descending order from highest to lowest so we have 82000 next we have 80000 next we have 79000 so similarly if you can uh, let's say let's limit to an another example let's say if i'm limiting to 10 all right so in that case it will basically fetch the first 10 records so as you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so all of them are basically uh, the records of the employees whose manager id is 100 and it is basically arranging all the details of the employees whose salary in ascending in descending order that is in the order of minus 1 which we have specified so that brings us to the end of today's session guys i hope you all have understood all about the sort and the uh, limit method that we use in a good indexing strategy is essential for ensuring that your you know database returns your results as quickly as possible now just like any other relational databases where we perform indexing similarly indexing in mongodb is also a way to organize information so that the database engine can quickly find the relevant results more on that soon but before we get started let us first discuss the agenda for today's session in today's tutorial, we'll be going through different concepts wherein we'll cover what are indexes in MongoDB and then we'll understand why is indexing used in MongoDB and up next, we'll discuss how does indexing work and then we'll understand how to create an index and after that, we'll be going through different types of indexes used in MongoDB and finally, we'll end this session uh, with syntax and execution in MongoDB shell. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda part. So let us just go ahead and understand what are indexes in MongoDB. So what are indexes in MongoDB? Now MongoDB index is a special data structure on which the data is on which the index is created to hold 
the date of specific fields of document now in the absence of uh, you know fields in the fields and uh, indexing in mongodb there is a need to scan every collection document to select those uh, that match the query statement now this scan requires mongodb to process a large volume of data and is highly efficient so if there is no indexing done on a collection of let's say thousands of documents your query will keep finding specific documents in order however mongodb would limit and make it clear the number of documents to be searched within your collection if your documents have indexes so with the help of indexes when they are applied at the collection level it can store the value of a specific field or set of fields ordered by the value of the field so those were that is what indexes are in mongodb let us now understand why is indexing used in mongodb now mongodb's indexes make it unnecessary to perform a collection scan now from that what i mean is a collection scan basically involves looking through every document in a collection that matches to your query that you have returned to find a particular uh, document or a field that you are trying to return so when you provide an indexing on documents let's say on a database that you have like a uh, thousands or 50000 records you can just simply put an index which will improve the search efficiency as well now any collection in mongodb can have one or more indexes and those indexes can be made on one or multiple fields and even though a mongodb database can hold a lot of data you need a good indexing strategy to quickly and effectively access the data you require from it and finally indexing is a necessary operation in mongodb which automatically brings search efficiency in various executions of statements all right moving ahead let us now understand how to create an index now creating an index in mongodb is done by using the create index method so let us just quickly go through the syntax uh, so the syntax is followed as db dot collection name dot create index is the keyword and make sure the i in index is capital otherwise it will throw an error within the parenthesis mention the field name that you want to create an index on and next we have one or minus one so now this following syntax shows how to add an index to our collection so let us assume we have you know same uh, like employee collection which is an example which has various fields name like employee id name salary or so on but for this i'm creating an index on employee name and i'm specifying as one now the one parameter indicates that when the index is created with the employee name field value they should be sorted in ascending order now please you have to note that it is different from the you know hashtag id which is the by default id which is uh, you know created when you are creating a document so the id field is used to uniquely identify each document in the collection which is created automatically in the collection by mongodb and the document will now be sorted as per the employee name and not the id field so i hope you have uh, understood how to create an example you will get a clear cut idea when we go into the execution part in mongodb so make sure to watch the video till the end guys all right moving ahead let us now discuss the types of indexes used in mongodb now there are mainly three types of indexes in mongodb the first one is single field index next we have the compound compound index and finally we have the multi key index let us discuss uh, about each of them in detail now now we know that a field in a document in a collection can be indexed individually so as the name suggests single field index is used to create an index on only a single field in a document so below is an example and the syntax for single field index uh, on an a uh, tab on a collection named as orders so the syntax is db dot collection name dot create index and within the parenthesis field name so you can either index them in the order of ascending or descending by mentioning one or minus one so i have considered an example here of orders a uh, collection where i have created an index on a field called price and i am mentioning as minus one so it will basically index in descending order that is from highest to lowest next we have the compound index now a compound index is formed when multiple fields are combined into a one single index so a compound index is generally an index that holds a reference to multiple fields within a collection so for example i have taken another uh, collection i mean the same collection of orders and i'm creating an index where i'm uh, creating index for multiple fields here which is for price and for customer name so again the syntax is same which is db dot mention the collection name dot create index which is the keyword and within the parenthesis you can give as much as many as you know field names to your name 
to your sorry to your collection so i hope you have understood what is compound index as well so and finally we have what is a uh, multi key index now mongodb supports a multi key index for each element inside the array for an array field so these elements consist of you know scalar fields like string values integer values or even nested objects now the uh, syntax is same you just have to mention uh, the collection uh, name and mention the create index keyword and within the parentheses mention the field name which is of only array type so multi key index you know automatically creates a multi, multi key index on an array by knowing its structure so therefore you need not additionally define a multi key index in such case so no additional definition is required as such so let us understand with an example here now let's say i have a document here uh different documents like i have three different documents in a collection of orders which has various fields such as id customer address payment mode email order total and order items now if you look at this collection i have order items which has an array values for example we have for first id uh, for customer rahul we have four different array values of order items like item name notebook and item name paper item name journal item name postcard so if i want to create a multi key index i'll just simply write a query as db dot orders dot create index and within the parenthesis mention the collection uh, mention the field name that is which is order items and on which you want to perform multi key indexing now i want to perform uh, indexing on price which is a array value within a collection right so that is why i'm taking as order items dot price and the order in which it will index is ascending so for that i'm giving the parameter as one so with that we have covered all the three different main types of uh, key indexing indexes that we generally use in mongodb so let us now switch into mongodb for execution part and see how they actually perform now we do not uh, clearly see that how the indexing is going but it will definitely improve the search efficiency if you are working on you know more than you know let's say thousands and thousands of records so let us now jump into uh mongodb shell for execution part all right so as you can see mongodb shell has started and firstly let us see uh, what are the databases that are present so for that i'll use the show dbs and we'll again use the simply code one uh, dbs that we have all previously used so use simply code one it says switch to simply code now if you want to find all the collections that are present in that you just have to write show collections so we have one collection which is employee so we'll use that so in order to find the values or the documents that are present in this collection we'll just uh, write the uh, db command which is db dot employee dot find so it will just display all the values type it for all the values so as you can see we have various different documents in this so we'll just perform a simple index now we'll just create a single field index now which is basically a normal field index that you create so the uh, query would be db dot employee create mention the ind create index keyword and within the parenthesis uh, so let us just create uh, you know an index on salary field here right so mention the salary field mention the hyphen and we will uh, index this in ascending order so i am giving the parameter here as one so let us execute the statement so when you execute the statement it says salary underscore one which is basically means your index that you have created which is has been successfully executed so now that you have created your index and if you want to view uh, what are the indexes that you have created you need to use the get indexes keyword so let us just find again so i'll use the statement db dot employee which is a collection name now you need to use the get indexes make sure the i is a uh, capital otherwise you will find an error get indexes and when you enter uh, the and when you enter this and you'll find this a uh, list of following uh, indexes that you have created now i have already created now as i said earlier in the tutorial the id field is automatically created uh, within the you know database which uh, you know automatically creates the index for the uh, underscore id but additional to that i have already created email uh, index on our uh, you know employee table 
and just now i have created the salary index also so you can see the list of all these uh, you know uh, indexes that you have created now let's say if you want to you uh, know delete or drop any of the index that you have created so in that case you have to use the drop index so i'll just uh, you know write the statement again which is db dot employee dot uh, mention the keyword drop index okay and within the uh, parenthesis mention the index that you want to drop so let's say if i want to drop the email i find it unnecessary now so i'll just write uh, the email uh, you know key, key which is a field and i'll mention this uh, one and i'll just close the bar parenthesis and i'll close the brackets as well so as you can see it says okay uh, you know this it says n index is uh, is 3 and okay one that means you have finally you know dropped the index so we'll just use again this you know get index uh, and see whether it is successfully del deleted or not let's just copy paste here and let us enter so now you can see that we have only two fields which is the uh, underscore id which is you know by default which is the index that i've created by the database itself and additionally we have the salary index that we have created earlier and successfully we have deleted the email index from our collection or the database so i hope you have understood till now so that is what uh, you know index is about you know you just create index to uh, improve the search efficiency now behind the uh, database the performance optimization or the efficiency can be achieved which cannot be viewed outside so i hope you understood how to create a single field here well, let us now move to compound index and we'll see how to create it also so i uh, as discussed earlier we can use multiple fields in a mongodb document to create a compound index so i'll just create uh, compound index on another fields so i'll just create index and within the parenthesis okay let us now create a uh, you know index for let's say job id job id i am giving it as minus 1 the order mention the comma and uh, let us create an index for let's say department id as well department id and i am giving this a uh, parameter 1 it will basically index in the ascending order so close the parenthesis so as you can see it is saying job id 1 department id 1 that is me that means you have successfully created the index so let us just uh, confirm whether they have created or not so let us copy paste again so now as you can see we have another two indexes that we have created which says you know job id and for department id as well so this is how you can create a compound index in your mongodb database as well so in the compound uh, in the above compound index that will we have created the mongodb will first sort by the job id in the descending order since we have provided minus 1 as the parameter it will basically sort all the documents in the descending order then with each uh, department id it will sort in ascending order since we have provided the parameter as one now the index would create a similar st a data structure for the department id also which basically sorts the data in the ascending order so that brings us uh, to the final which is multi key index now i don't think we have you know array of fields or the array of data in our document documents so that we can perform uh, but for now i think i hope you understood how to implement multi key multi key index as well it just supports supports indexing of array of data so when you create an index for a field containing an array mongodb will create a separate index entries for every element in the array data so i think we have already almost covered all the topics that we have uh, discussed in our agenda and i hope you guys have understood as well uh, so that brings us to the end of today's session guys i hope you have understood what are indexes and how they are used you know to uh, search the data in a efficient and a more quick way so defining indexes are important you know for faster and efficient searching of documents in a collection and these indexes can be created by the uh using create index method so i'm just recapping what we have covered uh, and indexes can be created on just one field by using the single field uh, index method or multiple fields using the compound index 
and you can even uh, create indexes on array of fields using the multi key index as well what is advanced indexing now we all know what indexing is mongodb right which is an essential component which improves the performance of the data retrieval speed in the database so mongodb indexing is a special data structure on which the index is created to hold the data of specific fields of documents and in the absence of indexing in mongodb there is a need to scan every collection document to select those uh, that match the query statement now in our previous tutorial on indexing in mongodb we have just covered the basic uh, you know indexing techniques like on single field and comp and compound uh, fields right so now what if the database is working on array of uh, fields within a collection right uh, so let's say if i have a students database and in that i am working on sub documents that is documents that have array of fields in them so in such case the indexing becomes quite difficult so if there is no indexing done on a collection of thousands of document your query will keep finding specific document in order be it a single field uh, multiple fields or even array of fields so it becomes quite difficult you know to retrieve the value so indexes are applied at the collection level and it can store the value of specific field or a set of fields so before jumping into why uh, i mean how exactly advanced indexing works on you know array of fields let us understand uh, you know why why we need advanced indexing you know in addition to the normal indexing that we do uh, in mongodb so for that let us jump into my uh, mongodb compass for explanation so as you can see mongodb compass has started and in our database simply code one we have two different collection that is employee and new employees here now if you if i click at the new employees it basically opens uh, the document fields now you can see we have like almost around 33000 documents and we have one index which is basically done on the id field if you look at go to the indexes page we have the id field which is already indexed now if you consider uh, these many documents right these huge tons amounts of documents like we have 33k and if i try to uh, find a particular document let's say uh, i want to file uh, a name you know based on the name i am trying to field uh, i think we have different names here right so let's just take department here right so we have department field so i'm just finding value like let's say uh, i'm trying to find all the documents which has police as the department name so i'll just write police and try to search it so close the brackets and let us try to find so it will basically find all the documents or uh, within the collection that has department as police here now if i go to the explanation of this right let's just click on explanation now if i uh, look the query performance of this uh, document or the query that i've written for uh, you know to find the uh, details of all the uh, you know employees or the people working in a company and the background i'm trying to find what all uh, the documents that i want here right so if you look at here we have a total of 32928 documents and in that we have documents returned are 13000 590 now it indirectly impacts the performance guys now if you see we have 33000 documents it is searching each and every document where the department uh, is police so and after searching each and every record uh, uh, record it is basically retrieving all the documents so we have around 13590 which is close to around 14k and if you look at the actual query time it is around 23 milliseconds so that is quite a huge uh, you know amount of time for a database to process such information now let's say if i have like millions like 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs of documents in such case the time taken is more so in such case we'll basically create an index here now we all know how to create a single index and a multiple index so let's just create an index and we'll see how it actually affects the uh, you know uh, the query performance so i'm just creating an index on department field and i'm basically uh, indexing in ascending so i'm just basically one i'm keeping it as one so as you can see uh, we have created successfully uh, the index for the department uh, field here so let us now try to uh, find uh, the data that is the department of that is the employees or the uh, people working as a police 
So if I try to find this and if I go to the exp again explanation part. So you can see now we have a total of 13,590 documents. Now instead of searching all the documents that is 33,000, we can directly reference or refer only those documents that are required to us. So you can see index key examined only 13,590 and you can see actual query execution time has reduced a bit more like 17 ms i think that is also quite huge but i don't think uh, that is you know uh, that can affect actually so you can see this is how index works now let's say if i create multiple index uh, let's say if i'm trying to find multiple uh, you know fields so in that case let us see how it actually impacts all right, so let us now understand how it works for a compound field. So when you are trying to uh, index uh, multiple fields, let us see how the query performance does. So let us now uh, find uh, you know the details of the employees whose department is police and let's say their job titles is sergeant. So in that case, I'll basically search for department field where the department is police and put a comma and I'm, the job title that I'm searching for is basically sergeant. So mention sergeant. Okay, close the brackets and let us now find the documents. So if you look at it will only display all the uh, details of employees whose basically job title is sergeant and department is police. So let us now understand how it is executing. So let us explain, uh, click on the explain button. So you can, you can see that uh, the documents it is examining is basically the all the documents that is present in the collection that is 32,928. Now out of that it is returning 12, uh, 1296. So as you can see it is a time taking process it is going through each and every document. Now thing is we only have only around 1300 documents where the department is police and the job title is sergeant. So instead of that what I'll do is I'll basically index the uh, both department as well as the job title as well. So let us just create another index here. So firstly for department create index. So let us create another index for job title and let us create an index again. So as you can see we have created the index successfully. So let us now try to find the documents. All right. It will find that it will fetch all the documents and let us now uh, basically uh, click on the explain and see how it does. So as you can see now the documents that is that it examined now is 1296 which we have seen earlier that all the details of employees whose department is police and the job title is sergeant. So after creating an index it is only searching only those documents whose department is police and sergeant. As you can see the actual query execution time is also reduced drastically from almost 432 milliseconds to almost 16 milliseconds. So it will also vary like if you click again it will change to 6 milliseconds now that it has find the details. So it keeps on changing. So index basically provides the user to efficiently uh, navigate through that data which is required by them instead of searching the whole data. So, so now you might be wondering why we need advanced uh, technique. Now let's say if I have uh, sub array fields in this documents. So in that case I need to query those documents quickly right. Now it will take more time than single field or a compound field. Now that is where we use a, a advanced indexing to uh, index sub uh, array fields or sub documents. So, so let us now understand how advanced indexing works and why we have uh, you know went through all that uh, scenario on MongoDB compass where we have understood how indexing works for a single field as well as compounding field and the need for advanced indexing. Now let's say I have a document of students. Uh, let's say I have their student ID, their name, age, courses. Now for courses field I have another additional uh, you know array, array section where I'm uh, mentioning the course ID, course name and course credits. So in that case we have an array field here right. So in such case we will use advanced indexing. Now advanced indexing is basically just another process where we are using another technique right. So let's say if I have 20 million such uh, records right 20 such million uh, documents present in my collection it will take a lot of time. So this is where we need to use indexing process again. So let's say if you are indexing an array field the syntax for that would be db.collection.createIndex 
mention the array field name that is and the order so i am creating an index on courses right uh, which is an array field there so the query would be db.students.createIndex courses and mention the order that is one now you can also further uh, you know index sub document fields right now instead of just uh, uh, indexing the array field you can also index the sub document field so let's just understand the syntax here that is db.collection.createIndex field name dot sub document field name and the order now why we are doing this now suppose that we want to search documents you know based on the course id course name or even the core uh, course credits now since all these fields are part of the courses sub document field right which will will create an index here on all the fields of the sub, -doc sub document now in this example i have created an index field on the sub document which is course id similarly you can also create for course name as well as the course credit also so the query is followed as db.students create index courses.course id and i'm mentioning the order as one so once the index is created we can search for any of the sub document fields utilizing this uh, you know query now remember that the query expression has to follow the order of the index specified that is either one or minus one otherwise you will get an error so in this way we can use uh, a technique which is advanced indexing in order to query the array fields as well as sub document fields now in addition to that we have some other advanced indexing techniques which is uh, another three types of uh, indexing techniques in mongodb which is first one is geospatial index now mongodb uses 2d index and 2d sphere to increase the efficiency of database queries while dealing with the ge uh, geospatial coordinate data next we also have text index which provides uh, support to text search queries on string content so basically text indexes can include any field whose value is a string or an array of string elements and finally we have hashed index now basically hashed index keep tracks of the entries with hashes of the values of the index field which is almost always the uh, underscore id field which is created by default in all the collection now this kind of index is primarily necessary when you are sharding data to distribute it evenly now if you want to learn more about sharding we have a dedicated video on that as well so make sure to check that uh, on our channel and that brings us to the end of today's session guys so in this way you can use uh, advanced indexing uh, to create an index on you know multi key compound uh, you know fields as well so let's say if you have a document with an array field you can just create indexing for an array field creating an index on an array in turn creates separate index entries for each of its fields so it will basically separate uh, create an index to an array field so it will help you to find the documents with which are having any array field values as well so i hope you understood uh, all the techniques and how we implement advanced indexing in mongodb mongodb you will most likely use the find method or command for a variety of queries now however as your queries become more complex you will need to learn more about aggregation in mongodb which is used to perform various complex operations so in this tutorial we'll be covering the fundamentals of creating aggregate queries in mongodb and how to use various expressions in mongodb aggregation and furthermore we'll introduce the most important stages of aggregation pipeline along with examples of how to apply each one to this pipeline stages all right firstly let us understand what is aggregation in mongodb mongodb processes the data records in the database during an aggregation operation and returns a single computed result it actually groups multiple documents present in a collection applies an aggregation operation to it and then provides the user with a single result now mongodb offers a wide range of aggregation operations just like many other database systems in relational databases as well mongodb being a no sql database also provides with the same functionality this enables you to filter data as you might with a query as well as grouping data sorting data in a particular order or reorganizing for returning the documents in the collection now this is just similar to the sql wherein we use the group by clause in our aggregation function with the help of certain uh, operations like count average sum minimum and value to perform complex aggregation operations in the similar way mongodb aggregation is also similar to that of the sql aggregation method that we follow so i hope you understood what is aggregation in mongodb let us now understand why we use aggregation now data from different sources is gathered by an aggregation method 
which are then processed to a single outcome. Now to perform an aggregate function in a relational database, the database management system typically extracts data from multiple rows of the same table. But in a document oriented database like MongoDB, the database will gather information from various documents in the same collection. So it basically group values from multiple documents together to a single resultant value. Now, next one is it fetches a lot of nested data to perform complex operations. Now, when using a database management system, you must run an operation known as a query, right? Each time you want to retrieve data from database. However, qu queries only return the information that is already present in the database. You will frequently need to carry out another type of operation, which is known as aggregation in order to analyze your data in order to find patterns or other information about the data. So if there are, if there is a complex operation that is needed for the data that is present in the uh, documents, you need aggregation. And finally, it filters and sort documents and analyze data changes. Now, uh, MongoDB being an SQL, no SQL database, the data model will frequently change as the data that is being, you know, uh, inserting into the uh, database might change over the time. So in order to analyze this unstructured data, it becomes quite important that you uh, uh, make a proper you know, filtration and sorting of these documents to get a proper insights for your businesses and as well as your, you know, requirements. So in that case, aggregation can be quite useful, which simplifies, you know, the complexity of the query that you have written and fetches the data in no time. So these are some of the main reasons on why we use aggregation. Now, aggregation uh, in MongoDB is performed using uh, aggregation pipeline stages with con consists of four different uh, you know methods the first one is match next we have group next we have sort and finally we have project these four combinedly are known as aggregation pipeline stages which perform aggregation as per the requirement now firstly when you take a collection and the first thing you need to is if you want to match only a certain fields you know within your documents to perform aggregation then you can use the match uh, method next we have the group now, just like the group by clause in SQL, you can use the group, uh, you know, function here as well in order to group all this similar or uh, the related uh, type of data in your, you know, uh, pre present in your collections. That is the, the data that is, that is present in your documents to, in order to retrieve the similar kind of data, you can use the group. Next sort, again, sorting can be done in any other way, like from ascending order or descending order. Next, we have the project. As we discussed earlier in our previous tutorial, project is used to, uh, you know, remove the unnecessary fields that you want in a resultant set. And finally, after, you know, matching all the four uh, pipeline stages, then you get the resultant output. So let us understand this uh, with an example wherein we'll discuss how aggregation works in MongoDB. Now, as discussed earlier, the firstly, the match condition, uh, you know, specifies only the related documents that you want to uh, consider. So for example, I have a collection name orders here and I'm performing, uh, you know, an aggregation uh, operation here. So first I've mentioned the match for status A. So I have like four documents here, if you've seen the orders, like for dif four different customer IDs, we have the amount and status. Now for, I want to retrieve only uh, those documents whose status is A. So for that, I'm using the match command here. So match command only retrieve the one that you have specified here, which is status A. So we have only three records that have the status as field and their value is A. So we have sorted initially with the match command. Next, we want to group the uh, uh, values in the order of their, let's say IDs. And then, so if you look at here, we have two similar IDs, which is A123 and B212. So what group does is it will match all the similar and related uh, fields together and produce a result. So you can see the A123 and B21, B212 are separated into a different groups. And finally, what I'm doing is I'm sorting. I'm sorting and I'm applying an operation here with sum. So what it does is it will basically calculate the total amount here. So if you look at uh, the first ID A123, the amount is 500 and 250. So the resultant output would be 750. And finally, we have the customer ID of B212, the amount is just 200. So in this way, the aggregation pipeline works in a methodology of wherein it matches the values, that is the similar values from the documents. Then you can even group the data that you want to uh, show in your resultant output. And you can perform various operations uh, using the aggregate functions like some minimum average with the help of sorting as well. So this is basically how aggregation works in MongoDB. 
So and finally, as discussed earlier, uh, just like similar to SQL, we have the same uh, five or the main five uh, aggregation operations in SQL, which is the first one is sum. It basically adds up the values of every documents of a collection. Next, we have the average, which computes the average value of every document of a collection. Next, we have minimum or min returns the minimum of all values from the collection. And next, we have max, which is opposite to that of minimum, minimum, which returns the maximum of all values from within the collection. And finally, we have an additional, uh, you know, operation, which is a push operation. Since MongoDB is non-relational database, we also work on the array of elements. So in order to add the values to an array in the associated document within uh, a collection, you can use the push operation as well. Now, this might be a bit confusing for you guys now. So let us jump into MongoDB shell for execution part where we'll, we'll perform uh, different operations using the aggregation pipeline stages and see how they're getting implemented and also perform a detailed analysis on the uh, data, uh, the collection that we have. And we will uh, bring out some inferences using the aggregation operations using uh, various expressions like some average minimum and maximum. So without any further delay, let us jump into MongoDB shell. So as you can see, we have opened the MongoDB shell uh, command prompt line. So let us just uh, use the command show DBS to find out the database present. So we have different uh, databases like admin config, local and simply code one. We'll use the simply code one as usual. So use, write the database name, use simply code one. Now let us see the collections that are present in the table. So we have the employee collection again. So let us write the command using the db.find, db.collectionname.find, which is employee.find. So it will retrieve all the values that are present in this collection. So we have our different fields like employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID, and department ID. So all right, let us now perform the aggregate uh, operations in a sequential way. Firstly, we'll look at the match aggregation, uh, you know, stage where it will match the related fields that we want in a resultant set. Now, let's say if I want to match the department ID, who's uh, all the employees who belong to the department ID, let's say 100. So in that case, the following query would be db dot employee dot mention the aggregate keyword here, which is a must. Otherwise, it will throw an error. Uh, open the parenthesis and mention the square brackets and use the dollar symbol to write uh, the statement for match and put the colon and open the parenthesis and mention the department id uh, field which is uh, on which we are basically you know uh, matching the records so mention it again the colon and within single quotes mention the department id name so since we have taken as 100 uh, i'm just taking it close the uh, flower brackets two times and again mention the square bracket once again and close the parenthesis all right so this is the uh, basically the query that we have written here which is db.employee.aggregate and we are using the match aggregation method here wherein we are uh, matching all the records of the employees whose department id belongs to 100 so let us now enter uh, I think there is an error here. So we had a error in the syntax guys. Uh, so as you can see in the output, we can see only those records of the employees wherein it is showing uh, the records whose department ID is 100. So we have the employee ID 108, 109, 110, 111 and 112, 113 and all of them have their employee uh, department ID as, sorry, uh, department ID as 100. So I hope you understood this. So let us now uh, go through the next stage of aggregation pipeline with, wherein we'll group uh, the values now. So for that, the following query would be db.employee.aggregate, which is the keyword again. Uh, open the parenthesis and mention the double square brackets, open the flower brackets and Use the dollar symbol again, uh, write the group keyword and open the flower brackets again and mention the ID here. So I'll explain why we are taking this here again. So first let us just write the you know command and then I'll explain to you guys that why, why we are uh, implementing that. 
So I want to group all the basically the department IDs, right? So I am taking department ID. So I mention the dollar symbol and mention the field name, which is the department ID. Close the flower brackets twice. Mention uh, a double bracket, square bracket as well. So when you enter, uh, you can see the list of all the department IDs that are present in our collection. So we have various I, uh, department IDs like 60, 10, 30, 70, 40, 110, 150, 20, 98 and so on. So now you might have a doubt that why we are using the ID field layer. Now we are using the group stage to group the input documents by the specified you know, ID expression which returns a single document containing the all the cumulative values of all the uh, department IDs that we have taken here. So in this above example, only the group stage is specified in the pipeline, whereas the group uses the ID field to calculate the uh, value for all the input documents as a whole. So the expression ID uh, colon uh, the dollar symbol department ID creates a distinct group on the field department name. Since we don't, uh, we didn't calculate any accumulated values in our document, it returns the distinct values of department uh, IDs that are present in the table or in the uh, document. So in this way, you can use the group aggregation method as well. So this is how you can use the match and group stages wherein you can combine both these as well. So next, let us look at how to create an aggregation uh, operation using one of the expression that we have like count, average, sum or minimum. Now let's say if I want to count the total employees in a particular department, in that case I will basically use the match statement wherein it will uh, group all the uh, values of the employees whose department ID is in a particular uh, you know uh, value and then it will count the total number of employees in that group. So for that the following query would be db dot employee dot aggregate uh, open the open the brackets and uh, square brackets as well and then mention the flower back brackets and then use the dollar match uh, group stage wherein we are matching uh, you know the department ID let's say department ID of uh, 60 so in that case it would be department ID I am taking the value of 60, mention in the double quotes and close the brackets, put a comma and then basically we are counting, right? So I'll use the count function here. So put the dollar sign, mention the count keyword and let's say the statement would be total employees in department. 60 right so mention the uh, put these close the uh, brackets as well square brackets second so when you press the enter in a resultant output it states that total employees in department 60 is 5 so similarly you can check for uh, various other departments as well so let us just uh, verify if it's showing correctly or not i'll just copy paste this and let's say for 100 i want the total number of employees present in the uh, department 100 so in that case i'll just mention it i'll just change the values and let us now print the enter so as you can see in the resultant set or in the output you can see the total number of employees in department 100 is 6 uh, wherein we have the total number of employees in department 60 is 5. So in this way you can use the various aggregation stages using the match, group and as well as sort as well uh, and perform various aggregation operations like sim, uh, sum, aggr uh, minimum, maximum as well. So I think we have covered most of the concepts that we have discussed in our you know, tutorial. So that brings us to the end of today's session guys. I hope you understood uh, what aggregation methods and how they are used in MongoDB. So let us understand what is MongoDB replication. Now the database replication is the process of copying data from a database in one server to a database in another one ensuring that the same data is available on more than one MongoDB server. Now the main purpose of replication is high availability and data redundancy. 
Now data is kept durable by having several copies or replicas stored on physically separate servers. Now replication is that process of generating redundant data in order to integrate and protect data accessibility and durability. Now by generating multiple copies of your data across servers, replication enables you to increase data availability. This is especially helpful if a server fails or your service is interrupted or if there are any hardware failure issues. Now if your data is only stored in a single database, any of these events would make data access impossible. So if there is any breakage or failure of system or server failure, in that case you need a recovery and backup option. However, thanks to replication, your application can remain operational even if your database server fails while also providing disaster recovery and backup options as well. So that is what MongoDB replication is all about. Now why we need replication in MongoDB? Now there are various factors that we can take into account on why we need replication but these are the main reasons uh, why we need replication. Now the first one is replication provides high availability of data. Now as discussed earlier, the main purpose of replication is to provide high availability and data redundancy by storing the data in multiple server rather than one. Now this data is available 24 by 7 to the user even if there are any issues with the uh, you know server side or any database uh, failure as well. Now it also protects from any single server loss or hardware failures and service interruptions. So now data replication is must to keep your data protected right. So it ensures not only the high availability of data but also the ease of access especially in the event of any unexpected errors such as, such as a system crash, hardware or software based errors and etc. And finally replication ensures that data is always available to every client. Now no matter the problem is the re what replication it does is it basically shifts the data into multiple uh, servers or multiple locations wherein the data can be available in each of any server that is present in the database rather than only a single server side where the data is stored. So let us now understand how does replication work in MongoDB. Now this diagram of MongoDB replication is shown in the uh, image which I guess you guys are visible where a client application always communicates with the primary node and the primary node replicates the data to the multiple secondary nodes here. So we have a client application uh, wherein the data that is being read and write operations are taking place from MongoDB server and the driver as well. And we have a primary server here which basically does only write operation, write and read operation both as well. And then from there it creates a replication of the same database server into a secondary server. Now when I talk about server here we have different nodes. Now replication you know is done through a replica, replica set process which in simple words it's a group of MongoDB process to keep the same data across different servers. Now we'll be discussing what replicate set is in a while. So but a replicate set basically must have certain number of nodes. Now as you can see in the right side of the image we have various multiple nodes that is servers. Now in that we, we need at least one primary server in order to perform replication on the data that is present in a database. The rest all can be secondary data. Now a replica set must have three nodes at least. Now one of them must be primary and the rest secondary ones. A replication structure can have up to almost 50 nodes. So let us now understand what is replicate set that we have been talking about. Now MongoDB manages replication using replica sets which are a collection of related MongoDB nodes. Now a replica set requires a minimum of basically three MongoDB nodes that I have discussed earlier. One of which should be considered as the primary node that receives all the right operations. And the, on the other hand the, the rest of the remaining ones are considered as the secondary nodes which will replicate the data from the primary node. And if in case if it, there is a failure at any level of uh, you know node structure or if, if there is any possibility of a failed node is recovered it actually works as a secondary node again but not as a primary node. So if you look at this diagram again here now basically we have an application and then we have a primary node here right. Now the primary uh, node is the member in which the replica set receives write and read operations but read operations can be pointed out to secondary nodes as well which changing uh, the con configuration at the moment to perform the query. Besides the replica set uh, we can have only one uh, primary node at most as discussed earlier and then the replication is done on the secondary node. So the secondary uh, node 
is where the data is replicated to maintain a copy. A replica set can have one or more secondary nodes here, guys. So basically, the clients cannot write data to secondary ones, only they can read from them. That is what a replicate set is all about. So let us just quickly recap what we have uh, covered here. Now, to perform this, we need a minimum of three nodes, which is required. And in this operation of replication, MongoDB assumes one node as one, of, one node of the replicate set as the primary node and the remaining as the secondary node. So from within the primary node, data gets replicated to secondary node. And again, in case of any failure or any system error, the new primary nodes get elected in case there is an automatic maintenance or failover. Now, if you can see in the second diagram, we have an heart symbol here, guys, which is basically known as heartbeat mechanism. So each node is connected to all the other and a heartbeat mechanism is in place to call any other node. So the heartbeat has a configurable time for pinging the nodes and the default is 10 seconds. So if all the nodes respond with an acknowledge to the heartbeat, the cluster or the server, the, the nodes where the, the nodes are present, it continues to work. And if one of the nodes crashes, the primary node, for example, an election takes place involving the remaining nodes. And when a secondary, does, a secondary node doesn't receive a response to the heartbeats after the configure timeout, it calls for an election. So this takes place until the primary node which has been uh, failed is recovered. So next let us discuss what are some of the benefits of replication. Now as discussed earlier replication helps in disaster recovery and backup of data. It basically improves application reliability. Now uh, by spreading your data across multiple machines you can ensure that your application's data continues to be available even in the event of any hardware failure on any given machine or server in the replication group. It also uh, the replication also minimizes downtime for maintenance. Now since we are uh, you know transferring or locating our data into various multiple servers it basically minimizes the downtime for maintenance also. And we can also achieve load balancing as well using replication. We know that MongoDB works on a lot of unstructured data and it keeps on piling up on and on. So if a, let's say if a user is working on one of the database and which is having a particular server to its name, while a lot of people also can work on the same server. So that can cause, you know, a breakage or failure sometimes. So in order to achieve that load balance, you know, to handle number of people and number of people that are working on the same database we can basically replicate the data that is present in our database to different servers and from which we can eventually achieve load balancing now on the other side we have certain limitations as well with the usage of replication also some of them are higher costs and time constraints now maintaining consistent data across you know disparate or various locations is often taxing in terms of resources now if you maintain duplicates of the same data in various locations and distributed database systems, which results in great greater storage as well as processing uh, costs as well, which ultimately results in time constraints while executing and handling the duplication process, which needs committed time from an in-house team or uh, people that are working on that database to ensure that the copy data is consistent with the source data. That is, all the data that is being copied from the primary node is actually same as that is being copied into the secondary node. And finally, redundant data is being stored in the secondary uh, server or secondary node, right? So it basically takes more space and server processing is also required, which takes a lot of time. So those were some of the limitations or you can say disadvantages of a replication in MongoDB. And that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. Uh, so let us just quickly recap what we have discussed in the uh, today's session. Now, MongoDB replication is one of an important process which makes data available across multiple data servers. So instead of just store, uh, storing a data at a one particular site, you can basically shift it to across multiple data storage locations. Now data redundancy and uh, availability and load balancing are one of the important factors that we've discussed in replication, which are important, you know, for maintaining such a huge uh, database, you know, data that has been constantly changing and ever evolving. MongoDB also supports replication with the help of replica sets. As discussed, uh, replica sets are basically a combination of various MongoDB instances, each having a single primary node and multiple secondary node. Now, this process is done on a keyword that is heartbeat mechanism, which is a method of finding out the current state of the MongoDB node in a replica set. Now, the heartbeat signal basically matches or verifies whether 
the data is being generated in the primary node and it is further uh, displacing into the secondary node. So replicate set selection is used to find out which MongoDB node should be the primary node. And finally, we talk about scalability, performance and high availability which are the paramount uh, factors in uh, MongoDB replication. Now, when I talk about scalability, guys, uh, scalability, as the data volume increases, the complexity of accessing data and working with data also increases. So, with replication in place, multiple data copies are available, allowing users to not only increase their data, but also recover any previous version in case of any errors or failure. Performance is also very important when you're replicating certain data. Now, when data which is available across multiple servers, it not, it not only makes accessing data easier, but makes recovering from unexpected and sudden failures much easier. So replication uh, basically ensures data availability and security all the time. So with replication in place, there's no need to worry about data failures. Your data is, you know, safely stored in other locations. So in situations where your primary source of data fails, you can e easily access the same up-to-date data from a secondary reserve or the data that is stored in secondary server which highly promotes data availability and which is another in today's session we'll be going through mongodb sharding concept and we'll understand how it is implemented the use of it and how exactly it is performed and we'll finally understand the advantages of sharding in mongodb so without any further ado let's get started with today's topic so firstly what is sharding in mongodb now, sharding is a method for distributing a single data across multiple databases, which can then be stored on multiple machines. This allows for large data sets to be split into smaller chunks and stored into multiple data nodes, increasing the total storage capacity of the system. So, for example, let's say I have a database which has, you know, 2 million users uh, that are running on my database frequently. So the single machine has a capacity to only uh, hold 2 million records in that. Now, for instance, my business is growing and with the ever increasing demand of data, the data is being piled up in, in more, uh, you know, numbers. Now, for example, the 2 million has been raised into 3 million. And in that case, the operations on that database can be quite difficult because there is a huge traffic of data that can be, uh, you know, applied on that database. For in that case, I can basically split the data database into two different, you know, instances where I can make two machines or I can uh, basically store the data in two different servers wherein I can have two different capacities. Now, let's say I've divided the 2 million to 1 million and 1 million. Now, I further can have a total capacity of total 4 million, that is 2 million and 2 million in each database. So this is what a uh, sharding is based upon. Sharding basically distributes the process and stores a single data set into multiple databases. Now the purpose of any database distribution is to enhance the scalability of the applications uh, and sharding is an excellent way to keep the data safe across different resources in MongoDB. Database sharding is an achievable by breaking down big data sets into simple subdivided data sets across multiple instances. Now this single database cannot handle a database with large data sets right as it requires large storage and bulk query operations can use most of the cpu cycles which slows down the processing of the system for such scenarios we need more powerful system so now one approach is to add more capacity to single server such as adding more memory and processing units or adding ram on a on the single server then it is basically known as scaling now we can do scaling in two ways. First one is we have vertical scaling. Vertical scaling basically refers to adding more resources. For example, adding a new CPU or increasing the RAM or, or instead adding a new disk size to your server based on your demand. And next we also have horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling involves adding more and more processing units of physical machines to your server or databases. So it is basically used to divide a large data set across multiple systems and serve a data application to query data from multiple servers. This approach is basically called as horizontal scaling and MongoDB handles horizontal scaling through sharding. Now let us now understand why we exactly need MongoDB sh uh, sharding guys. Now we learned that in our previous uh, tutorial about replication wherein we learned that replica sets gave us the ability to hold data in multiple databases. And thus, 
given as a certain level of fault tolerance and data duration and however this approach has certain limitations as previously mentioned guys all write operations in replication go to the primary nodes as you can see here we have the primary node here it is going to the uh, secondary node and all the write operations are basically done on this primary node and all the read operations are basically processed to the secondary node which makes it the uh, you know crucial thing of any system right the, this means that if the system grows this primary node will be overused so in that case eventually it will be limited with hardware limitations like ram number of cpus and disks and etc so in that case it it is quite difficult you know that a database can be of efficient way to uh, you know address the demand or process the data within the database so that is where mongodb sharding comes into picture now since it is a limitation of uh, replication that is where uh, as i said sharding comes into play when there is when database may struggle to handle more and more data and the query traffic increases in that case you need to distribute the data into simpler or uh, secondary multiple machines now another reason is mongodb instance is unable to manage write operations as i said earlier uh, the database in replication you know you are basically copying or duplicating the data from one uh, mongodb database into another in that case it becomes difficult for one single database to manage all the write operations right so in that case we need sharding next memory cannot be outsized enough in case your if your data set is large for example if the if the database is working on large data large data sets in that case memory cannot be you know over uh, settled or you can uh, incorporate uh, memory you know if if the data data set is too large and finally which also impacts the uh, database maintenance also and vertical scaling is nowadays too costly and in that case mongodb sharding comes into picture so that those were some of the reasons why we need mongodb sharding so let us now move ahead and let us understand how mongodb sharding works now before mongodb sharding uh, the working of Mongo, mongodb sharding we need to understand the mongodb sharding architecture now implementing the concept of sharding can be done with the use of clusters so when i say about clusters sharding clusters are basically the combination of multiple shards mongo's processes and configuration servers so if you look into this image we basically have an app server wherein we have various routers and we have a mongodb mongo's instance or mongodb mongo's process and we also have configuration servers or config servers which are basically the replica sets and we have different shards where we, uh, we are basically trying to you know break down uh, a single huge uh, database into further uh, you know shards or simpler pieces now this is done with the help of a sharding key now on sharding a mongodb data set a shard key is automatically created by default the shard key basically can be in form of an indexed field or indexed compound field that will be used to distribute the data among the shards generally the shard key is used to distribute mongodb collections documents across all the shards where the key consists of a single field or multiple fields in every document so that brings us to the main part which is how mongodb sharding works now now mongodb uh, sharding works by creating a cluster of all these mongodb instances consisting of at least three servers which we'll be discussing in a while so the shared cluster or the mongodb sharding cluster consists of three main components which is basically shard mongos and config servers now when i talk about shard a shard is basically a single mongodb instance that holds a subset of the sharded data shards can be deployed as a replica set to increase availability and provide redundancy now the combination of multiple shards creates a complete data set for example uh, if you're trying to break down uh, let's say a 5tb data set which can be broken down uh, further into four shards each combining of 100 gb of data from the original data set so that is what a shard is all about now next we have mongos mongos acts as a query router providing a stable interface between the application and the sharded cluster the this mongodb instance is responsible for routing the client's request to the correct shard and finally we have the config servers configuration servers basically store the data and the configuration settings for the 
pore cluster. So if you look at it, uh, look at this diagram, uh, we have a router which is having a MongoDB instance and we have configuration servers wherein we have primary, secondary servers in that. And also we have shards where we are basically dividing again into primary and secondary. So the application communicates with the routers, which is basically the Mongos, about the query to be executed. Now the Mongos instance consults the config servers to check which shard contains the required data set to send the query to that shard. And finally, the result of this query will be returned to the application. So you need to uh, understand that it's important to remember that the config servers also work as replica sets here. That is why we have primary and secondary uh, you know nodes here as well. So this is how basically uh, how MongoDB sharding works. Now the idea is to have basically uh, multiple replica sets with multiple primaries uh, that will divide data and load it among themselves. And each of these replica sets is basically called a shard. But multiple shards are not enough to achieve the proper functionality of this kind of system. So and that brings us to the final uh, component or final uh, you know thing to our uh, session which is basically the advantages of sharding. So in database sharding the gives a, a lot of advantages. Now one of them is increased storage capacity. So when data gets distributed across the shards in the cluster, each shard contains a subset of the total data in the cluster. And on increasing the data volume, the additional shards grow, which leads to expanding the cluster storage capacity. Sharding also increases the read and write throughput uh, in the database also guys. Now in MongoDB, the read and write workloads are easily distributed across the shards in the sharded cluster. It allows each shard to process a subset of the cluster operation. So both the read and write performance can be directly scaled horizontally across the cluster by increasing the shard count and which again ultimately results in high availability of data. Now with an uncharted database, uh, an outage in one database shard has a caliber to uh, you know, impact the entire application and lose, lose its functionality or even completely stop it. However, with a sharded database, if there is complete unavailability of one or more shard replicas, only a few parts of the application or the website which is available to some users. However, the other shards continue their operation without any concern. And finally, sharding facil facilitates horizontal scaling. Now, one more reason, uh, you know, developers love database sharding is that it facilitates horizontal scaling, which also means scaling out your uh, databases. This means it allows you to have parallel backends and carry out tasks simultaneously without no, with no hassle. Whether the focus is on writing or reading operations, scaling out can add a big advantage to enhance the performance and also eliminate complexities. So these were some of the main advantages of uh, sharding guys. So that brings us to the end of today's session. Now you might wonder how sharding and replication are different from each other. So whenever you're thinking about sharding or replication, you need to think in the context of, you know, the write and the update operations that you're performing on your database. So if you don't need to scale right, uh, right processes, then applicate, then replication as it's fairly simple is a good choice for you. On the other hand, uh, let's say, you know, if your workload is mostly on right operation, uh, most of the times, then at some point you'll hit a, uh, you know, a right operation that is compulsory needed for you in, in any case, right? So if right request comes, um, comes then Mongo basically blocks other right requests, right? So these are all the right request blocks until the first request will be done. So if you want to scale this right operations and want to parallelize, then in you, in, in such case, you need to implement sharding. What are relationships in MongoDB? The MongoDB relationships are the representation on how different documents present in a collection are connected logically to each other in a database. MongoDB relationships helps in various different factors, right? For example, it relationships enforce data integrity in relational databases. And it also establishes between documents which can help refine the database structure as per your requirement. Now we know that MongoDB is a low SQL database and has a lot of unstructured data. So in order to properly confine all the documents into a proper format and refining them into a proper structure is quite beneficial, not just in terms of saving the 
data, but it also affects the performance and makes execution time also shorter. And finally, it basically links important entities in the database. So that is what relationship in MongoDB is. Now, there are different types of MongoDB relationship here, guys. We have embedded and reference method. So data relationship can be achieved through these methods wherein embedded documents uh, relationship between data is by storing related data into a single document structure. Now, let's say if I have a collection and I have two different documents. Now, as the word suggests, which is embedded, I'm basically storing these two different documents into a single document structure, which is known as embedded a document relationship. And similarly, we have a document reference method or simply reference method, which is used to store the relationship between data by including any links or references from one document to another. Now, we'll understand this with an example here. Now, if you consider this embedded model, uh, you know, collection which I have here, let's say I have, uh, you know, a details of a person whose name is Pranam, whose ID is 118025, his contact details are there, his phone number, his email address. Now, this is basically one document, right? Now, similarly, I have another document wherein I'm having his grade details. That is his subject, which is CS203 and the score, that is the grade that they have achieved is B. Now, instead of having two different uh, documents in the collection, I'm basically merging them. That is, I'm embedding both of these into a single document. So this is what embedded mo model does. It basically combines two or two uh, documents into a single document structure. And similarly, I have reference model. Now reference model basically links two or more documents, right? Now let's say I have again uh, a student collection here, which is uh, of Rohan, whose uh, contact details, his email ID, phone number, and grade are being displayed here. So let's say I have uh, let's a collection. And uh, in that, I have three different documents, which is student, contact details, and grade. Now, instead of having three separate uh, models, uh, three separate documents, I can simply combine these or I can link uh, with the help of user ID. I can basically combine the contact details as well as the grade into a single document. So, this is how reference model works. That is by referencing or linking two or more documents into a single document structure. So that was all about reference model and that is main difference between embedded and reference. Now we have these two embedded and document reference relationships and these can be achieved by three different methods. That is we can have one to one relationship, one to many relationships and in document reference relationship can be achieved through many to many relationships. Now let us now understand what exactly these are. All right. So one-to-one -one relationship basically if you have any one field it can only have one value in such case it will consider as one-to-one -one relationship between any data that is present in the document and if you consider one to many now as the name suggests one to many so when one field has multiple relationship between the data in between documents that is stored in the collection of a database in that case in such case one-to-many relationship model can be used and similarly we have many to many now, let's say I have, uh, you know, three uh, different you know, document structures wherein I have two or more entities within a document and having, let's say, an array of uh, details present in a single uh, collection or in a document. So, it can have multiple relationships, right? So, in, in that case, we need to use many to many. I hope this is clearly understood. Uh, we'll get into detail by uh, each of them. We will consider each of the relationship model and understand how it is different from each other with an example now. So firstly, we have the one-to-one -one relationship, guys. Now, one-to-one -one relationships are created by linking two documents from different collection using a shared key. That is, sharing the object ID of one collection to the other, uh, which is a property of the same value. Now, often the best way to create this relationship is to have the child collection query, which is the key value of the first collection. Now, object IDs, which basically are created by default in MongoDB, are commonly used to make this connection, although it can be of any other type. Now, let's say I have another uh, example here, which says that I have a user's collection, which has ID uh, by default, name, John, and age is 40. And I have address collection as well, which has ID, which is by default again, and the address details like street name as Church Street, number, I'm having 1421.0, city as New York. 
the one what one to one relationship does is it links to different documents right so in order to combine these two i need a a common property or a common key that is done by using the object id here so if you look at the result the resultant set of the document has been combinedly showcasing the details of the user as well as his address so you can clearly see that we have the object id the details first here next we have name john age 40 address again in address we are basically documenting or uh, adding the data of the address in the same document itself so this is one to one relationship let us now move ahead and understand what is one to many relationship so one to many relationship is another relational model we use which is created by linking a document in one collection to multiple documents in other collection so let's say i have a you know an example of a collection here now this is basically widely used you know to increase is to use increasingly and you know where there are more array values within a table so in such case you can you can use one to many relationship now for example i have an author's collection which says uh, the name of the author is jk rowling and we have two different books and for that we have object ids as well so in other collection where have the details of the books now clearly which is id again a name of the book is philosopher's stone and next we have another book collection uh, the data that is of chambers of secret now in order to combine this now what to many is basically with the reference of author collection i'm basically collecting uh, you know two different book collection into a single document so we have multiple documents in the books collection right and we have a single author collection now i'm basically clubbing these two and creating a link between these two collection and i'm creating a single document so if you look at in the result resultant set i have the name of the author that is jk rowling and the books and their ids and the details of their books that is the name that is philosopher stone and chambers of secret so in this way you can also use one to many relationship model in order to properly structure your data based on the requirement and similarly we also have many to many relationship here guys but i'm not going to discuss it let us know in the comment section below uh, and let us know what can be a good example of many to many relationships and that brings us to the end of today's session guys now while well, embedded uh, data type uh, embedded document model is ideal for one to one and one to many relationship and referenced uh, data uh, document model is ideal for many to many relationship now denormalization which is embedded whereas normalization is the name given to reference relationships now establishing uh, a good relationship between documents can aid in the refinement of the database structure as we discussed earlier which can overall impact uh, can impact the overall performance of the database and can ex uh, reduce the execution time in the database as well so i hope right. so what is gridfs in mongodb gridfs is one of the powerful specifications of mongodb that helps to store and retrieve large scale files so it is a specification for storing and receiving files larger than 16 mb limit of base on documents now these files can be structured or unstructured and they include documents audio files images recorded video clips binary files etc now gridfs is similar to a file system for the storage of files but mongodb collections are used for storage of data and files using gridfs which has powerful features to store the files of any format including files that are even more than 16 mb in size so in classical implementation there is a file storage system of 16 mb but mongodb gridfs can store and retrieve files beyond this limit too now mongodb gridfs features allow for the storage of large files as we discussed earlier so in order to store very large files it is not necessary to load the entire file into ram instead chunks of the files are steamed to the database so these files can be again of any format it can be an audio pdf movie and then they are converted into smaller chunks and they are streamed into the database so each chunk is limited to 255 kb in size this means that the last chunk is normally either equal to or less than 255 kb so it is the chunks are partitioned into smaller 255 kb files and when you read from grid fs the driver reassembles all the chunks as per the user's requirement when they are needed this means that you can read sections of a file as per your query range such as let's say listening to a segment of an audio file or you are trying to fetching a particular section of a image file
Now, because as discussed earlier, files are separated into smaller parts, it is easier to access, you know, specific areas of a file which saves memory tasks such as loading the whole file. Now, let us now understand why we use GridFS in MongoDB. So, as discussed earlier in MongoDB, we use GridFS for storing files which is which are having you know size larger than 16 MB. So, in some situ situations, storing large files may be more efficient in a MongoDB database than on a system level file system, and that is a reason we have uh, some reasons, right? A particular you know significance of using GridFS. One such reason is if your file system limits the number of files in the current directory in the Mongo database, you can use GridFS to store as many as files that are needed. Now the second reason is when you want to access information from portions of large files without having to load the files into the memory that is without calling the whole uh, you know data into the RAM, you can use GridFS to recall sections only of particular uh, you know specific sections of files without reading the entire file into the memory and finally if you want to store and sync files and metadata across distributed system so when you want to keep your files and the data automatically synced and deployed across a number of systems and facilities you can basically use gridfs so mongodb can distribute files and their metadata automatically to a number of mongodb instances in the database so these are some of the reasons on why we use Data, uh, grid FS in MongoDB. So let us now move ahead and and understand how exactly you know grid FX works in MongoDB. Now grid FS stores files into two collections. Now these two collections are basically known as chunks and files. Chunks basically stores the binary chunks and whereas the files store the files metadata. So if you look at this diagram uh, which we have uh, in our presentation that you are looking at, we have let's say a large file, it can be an audio, it can be a video file or anything. And let's say we have, we are dividing, we are using GridFS in order to, uh, you know, convert into a chunk of files. Now when you are basically converting into a chunk of file, it basically converts into file metadata and the a smaller segments of data which we call as chunks. So we have fs.files collection, fs.chunks collection. So basically GridFX stores files in two collections, right? Now it places the collection in a common bucket. So you can see we have fs bucket which comprises of fs.files and fs.collection. So it places the collection in a common bucket by prefixing each with the bucket name. So by default GridFS uses two collection as you can see which is fs.files and fs.collection you can choose a different bucket name as well as create multiple buckets in a single database now the full collection name which includes a bucket name is subjected to your requirement and your need and the need of the uh, file that you're working on so let us now understand what is gridfs chunks collection now the each document in the chunk collection represents a distinct chunk of a file which is a a smaller segment of the initial or the original file which represents a distinct chunk of a file as represented in grid effect so the syntax of is i wouldn't say it is uh, it has a syntax uh, the basically it stores the data in a format of id files id in and data so basically a document from the chunk collection contains these following fields now the chunk id it is basically the unique object id of the chunk now just like how when we store a data, it automatically creates a default ID in our MongoDB database. Similar for GridFS also, we have an ID that is being automatically generated. Next, we have the chunks.files ID. Now, this is basically the ID of the parent document as specified in the files document. Next, we have n. Now, chunks.n basically is a sequence number of the chunk that is being you know stored into the collection. Now, GridFS numbers have uh, chunk numbers starting with 0 and so on. And finally, we have chunk.data. It is basically, you know, the data that uh, it gives a different serial number to the data that we have inserted into our BSON document. Next, we have the GridFS chunks collection. Oh, sorry there's a mistake we have next grid fs files collection right now we have discussed what is you know chunk collection now next we have the files collection now each document in the file correct represents a file in a grid fs and similarly just like uh, the chunk collection we also have you know a format and different fields uh, you know when we try to store uh, collection uh, grid fs you know 
collections in our database so some of the fields that are we, that are present in the collection are id length chunk size upload date file name content type aliases and metadata so documents in the file collection contain uh, these following fields now for example the id again the, it is the unique identifier for this document and the id of the data type chooses for the original document next we have the length which is basically the size of the document in bytes next we have the chunk size which is basically the size of each chunk in bytes now basically gridfs divides the document into chunk size of uh, you know as discussed earlier it is default 255 kb each next we also have upload date which is the date the document was first stored by the gridfs and next we have the content type it is basically uh the type of you know file that you're basically adding to uh, you know database to store information related to the type of gridfs files and we also have optional uh, field like aliases and we also finally have metadata which is an optional field which may be of any data type and can hold any additional information you want to store so i hope you understood what is gridfs and what how it actually performs what are chunks and how it is dividing into sub you know segments like you know chunks and files so let us now get into the direct execution part and see how it gets executed now now other than the theory of what uh, you know gridfs is it is also important to understand how we can use gridfs to store large files and you have to uh, remember that as the syntax is an important aspect of executing the gridfs in the mongodb so the one thing that you have to remember is uh, in order to query or to insert a file into gridfs it is not executed through mongodb shell guys but it instead of uh, you can use you know windows or linux or mac command prompt now before doing that also you need to basically download some you know mongodb database tools uh, which i'll be showing now so if you are using windows just uh, go to google and type mongodb database tools all right now when you scroll down a bit you'll have this you know download mongodb command line database tools click on that now after clicking that you will be you know redirected to another page which is basically the mongodb database tool documentation which will basically show everything about uh, you know various database tools that are available so on the left side you can see various database tools like mongo dump mongo store based on dump mongo import export and so on now we are concerned with mongo files which is the database tool which we are going to use in order to store you know data through uh, you know grid files so just click on that and if you want to just go and understand what mongo files is you can just read it a bit uh, so just click on installation here it will redirect to the installation page now you have three options for linux mac os windows click on installing the database tools on windows and uh, so it will basically tell you what all to do here installation process it can be installed with an msi installer or download as a zip archive select the tablet depending on your desired installation method so we'll be basically using the msi installer only so open the mongodb download center here so i've already downloaded it on my system so i'm just basically showing you again what uh, on how you can install this click on download it just basically it shows the version again just install the latest version platform is windows and the package is a zip folder click on uh, download it will take some time based upon your uh, you know internet speed it will just take some time so wait for it now once you are done just extract the file now as you can see we have a folder which is uh, mongodb database tools and inside that you have a folder named bin open on that now as you can see we have the list of all database tools that we have you know downloaded successfully now we are only concerned with mongodb files right so just copy paste this and now what you have to do is go to the uh, c drive where mongodb is installed it is basically in program files click on program files search for mongodb click on server 6.0 and you'll find the bin folder click on that and just basically paste the whole folder or the mongo files here so as you can see i've already pay uh, you know copy pasted the same in my uh, bin folder here so just click on that and again you will be redirected to bin here click on that again so you can see we have the list of all the uh, database tools that we have installed it on our system so this is basically the location where you have to uh, you know 
uh, copy uh, the entire files otherwise it will throw an error right so we have mongod mongo file successfully installed here let us now uh, try to understand how to insert a file you know with a simple example so you can see i have uh, you know a png file which is an image which is uh, document one we also have a video file which is mp4 file which is mongodb replication it says right so let us now uh, try to insert into uh, our database for that just click on right right click in the same uh, folder you will find open in terminal click on that so it will open the windows partial this is where you have to write the uh, command prompt line all right so the above syntax the syntax that you have to uh, write for this is basically by using the put keyword which i'll be showing you now so we'll be just uh, experimenting with one simple example that i've done with a simple image file that we are going to insert now uh, as you can see we don't have any specific collection for gridfs files but as we know mongodb has this feature of creating new collection when we insert a document into a non-existing collection so the following query for inserting a file in gridfs unlike the insert operation where we'll insert file through mongo shell right here we'll use the again the window partial terminal now the query to insert a uh, data into our database is mention the mongo files mongo files is the keyword and after that put mention the file name now the file name that we have taken is document one right so mention document one dot and the file type which is of jpg so the above query is basically this query is a standard format for inserting any file into gridfs we have basically navigated the terminal to the location where mongo files which is a database tool uh, is being saved so our query begins with the keyword which is mongo files followed by the storage option which is put keyword and it specifies the database where the file is to be stored and here our database name is name is generally named as gridfs only and at the moment we don't have any database with such name but it will be created so let us just execute click on enter all right it is throwing an error oh. So as you can see, it says we have an error here. It says the command mongo files was not found, but does exist in the current location. Windows partial does not load commands from the current location. If you know, instead type, okay, now instead of typing mongo files, uh, let's just copy this and see if it is working or not. Mongo files, again, mention the keyword put and mention the document also. I mean, the document name that we're trying to insert, which is document one dot jpg. All right, let, let us now click on enter. I hope it should work now. I'm not sure. So I'm not sure why it is uh, throwing an error, guys. So let's just take uh, another example. Uh, we also have MongoDB1, which is again a JPG file. Let us try to uh, add that. Now, basically, if you want to insert data, you have to store uh, the files in this bin folder only. Otherwise, it will throw an error. So make sure you keep an eye on this because, uh, you know, adding huge amounts of data can take a lot of time. So if you are trying to uh, insert data, which is not specifically in this folder, then it will basically throw an error. So make sure you keep an, uh, an eye on that. So let's just uh, try to add another folder another file dot uh, so the keyword is dot under sla uh, slash mongo files put uh, the file name is mongodb one dot jpg and semicolon so I'll click on enter well all right as you can see in the status it is connected to mongodb localhost and it has had it grid file mongodb one and i think it is successful now so let's just go to uh, you know mongodb shell now and let us see whether or not it is created so just let's just go to uh, let's open mongodb shell so as you can see the shell has started so now in order to find uh, whether or not the gridfs file is created or not you have to use the db.fs.chunks.find command so we can see all the chunks present in the fx collection uh, by using this command so let's just try to find it so the command is db.fs.find dot dot 
files dot find so click on that so as you can see it is retrieving the id length chunk size upload date file name and the metadata which we have discussed in the earlier uh, you know in the presentation slide on what are the different fields that we get so we can also see uh, the chunks present in the fs dot collection related to the stored file with the following code using the document id in this which is this uh, this object id right so i'm going to use this and try to find how many number of chunks that it has created for this mongodb1.jpg file so the command the query is db.fs dot chunks dot find and inside that open the flower packets and mention the files id field which we are trying to find okay mention colon and mention this uh you know object id that has created which is 639 and so on this right just copy paste that and copy it here and mention make sure it is in single quotes all right let us just close the brackets and the flower brackets as well here there is an error sorry i just put another square bracket So I'm not sure why it is showing, but uh, in, in in most of the cases, the query will return the number of documents that is the whole, uh, you know, mongodb1.jpg file was divided into how many chunks of data, like for example, 20, 30 and so on. So in this way, you can use gridfs to store large amounts of files, which are more than 16 MB in size in your MongoDB database. Now, just to cross verify, uh, go to MongoDB Compass and see how uh, the data in the uh, database has been created. So you can see MongoDB Compass, we have a test database that is uh, created and we have the fs.chunks. and fs.files which basically stores the appropriate information of the, uh, da the data that we have uh, created in our database, right? So you can see in fs.chunks, we have id, files id, n0 which basically uh, you know stores the data in a sequential manner like starting from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and next in fs.files we also have id, length, chunk size, upload date, file name and metadata. So that was pretty much all about gridfs and uh, mongodb. I guess we have covered almost all the concepts. Now gridfs is basically a gift for developers who wants to store huge files in mongodb. So if you are someone who is trying to uh, you know store data of audio files, image files or videos files which is of more than 16 MB which is the threshold value of MongoDB which is acceptable rate on upon which only you can use GridFS. So in that case GridFS storage system allows developers to store big files and retrieve only a certain amount of uh, those files whenever needed and as a result GridFS is an outstanding MongoDB features that can be used with variety of application which makes it an extremely useful tool for modern applications like a NoSQL database like MongoDB. Firstly, let us understand what is MongoDB MapReduce. MapReduce function is widely used to access large data set into a handful of aggregated results. And MapReduce command is used to execute this function. Now as a result of this, the data is independently mapped and reduced in different spaces before being combined in the function and saved to the specified new collection. This MapReduce function was designed to work with large data sets only. You can perform aggregation operations like max, uh, sum and average on data using MapReduce, which is similar to that of group by in SQL. So it works independently and in parallel with data aggregation. Now let us understand what are the key parameters in MapReduce. MongoDB provides a MapReduce feature for aggregation purpose. Now generally there are two phases of MapReduce. In the first phase, each document is processed and emits common and redundant part of the document to pass a unique record for the next phase, which is the map function. Next we have the reduce function. In the second phase, all the unique parts get together and aggregate to produce a single result. And finally we have the query. 
In this, we'll pass the query to filter the result set. So with the help of MapReduce, user can perform like sorting, filtering and document modification. So let us now understand the syntax of MapReduce. The syntax is followed as db.collection.mapreduce and within the parenthesis mention the keyword function and again open the square flower brackets and mention the keyword emit and as we already discussed that MapReduce works on the key value pair so mention the key as well as the value that you want to uh, you know perform aggregation on the data and then we have function again we have to mention the uh, key and values this is basically the reduce operation this is the reduce function we are going to perform here and then mention the return keyword and the reduce function that you are going to perform it can be you know any aggregation uh, you know uh, process and it can be average sum or maximum and inside that we have uh, certain keywords like out query sort and limit so basically if i look if you look at the first part here the collection name it is basically defined as the retrieve documents from the collection by using the map reduce command so we can process large volumes of data using this map reduce method in mongodb so next we have the map reduce keyword it is basically a data processing technique which is used for large data and useful aggregated results of large data in mongodb and next we have uh, the, this first part is the map function guys and next we have the reduce function in this you'll get a clear cut idea on when we get to the execution part so just uh, have an idea on what uh, exactly we are doing here so next we have the out keyword here out is basically uh, specifies the, the that result location of the map reduce operation in mongodb and we can set output as a primary member and on the secondary member we can only set an you know output for this next we have query query defines the as the selection of selection criteria of a document in mongodb so you are basically telling uh, the uh, you know operation basically on the you are filtering the data on which you want to perform aggregation and next we have an optional uh, you know commands like sort and limit as you know sort is used to sort the documents from collection this option is mainly useful for optimization and also next we have limit limit is a specified method that limits the total number of documents in the resultant output so i hope you understood the uh, basic syntax of uh, map reduce model so let us now go ahead and understand how does mongodb map reduce works now every input document in the map reduce operation gets the map face treatment from mongodb that is documents in the collection that match the query condition so key value pairs are output by the mapping function now this map function is used to group all the data based on the key value and next we have the reduce function reduce function is used to perform operations on the map data so the data independently is mapped and reduced in different spaces and then combined together in the function and the result will save to the specified new collection so the reduce phase which gathers and condenses the aggregated data is used by mongodb for keys that have multiple values and the outcomes are then kept by mongodb in a collection so in a nutshell if i have to tell that basically you have to mention the mapping function first you have to define mapping function next you have to define the reduce function to further condense or process the aggregation result now the output of the reduction reduce function could op optionally go through a finalized uh, you know function wherein you are performing the complete you know map reduce function so let us just understand this with a simple example here so let's say i have a uh, certain collections uh, named as orders as you can see on the left side we have four different orders having customer id amount status so we have uh, let's say i think we have two different uh, unique customer ids which is a123 and b212 now i'm basically querying this based on the status that is a and d right so it is querying and it is filtering the records based on this so you can see a123 amount 500 status a next we have again which is a123 amount 250 which is status a again and we also have a123 but the status is d so it is not considering into the into our resultant equation and also we have this b212 which amounts 200 and the status is a so the query is basically filtering the resultant set in our output next we are basically mapping the function we are mapping based on the customer id here so we have two different uh, customer ids which is a123 and b212 
so we are and then we are performing the reduce function based on the amount right so it is reducing the value into uh, a123 and b212 two values that is 500 and 250 for b212 it's only 200 so finally if we look at the output we are performing a sum aggregation here and you can see in the final resultant output our uh, you know uh, document which we have uh, saved in a new collection is being retrieved as id a123 value is 750 that is 500 plus 250 and also b212 which is value 200 which are which are saving in a new collection named order totals so this is how exactly map reduce work which is again a uh, similar to that of aggregation you know pipeline method uh, i'll let you know what exactly uh, you know how map reduce is different from aggregation pipeline and when you should be using which method now before going to uh, into that let us go into the execution part and see how uh, map reduce works in mongodb shell so as you can see mongodb shell has started so firstly uh, let us uh, see the databases for that i am using the show dbs command so again we will be using the same uh, simply code database so use simply code one and let us now see what are the collections present in this database so it will list all the uh, different collections present in this uh, i mean documents that are present in this collection so we'll be using a uh, marks uh, uh, you know collection uh, for this uh, to perform map reduce so let me just uh, retrieve the values that are present in this so db dot marks dot find or when you press the enter it will retrieve all the records so as you can see we have uh, various fields like id name subject and marks so we have like id 101 name ravi maths 94 and similarly we have different subjects like science history maths uh, english and so on so we'll be performing map reduce on this collection and see how it how it exactly performs now what we are going to do is we have to apply a map reduce operation to this marks collection to group them by uh, let's say subject and then add the marks scored in each subject. So to process this each input document we have to define the map function first. This map function basically refers to the document that the map reduce operation is processing in that function. And for each document the function maps the marks field to the subject and outputs the marks and the both subject and marks together so let's understand how to uh, write the how to define uh, the map function first and the query is written as var and mention any keyword here it can be map here or you can even uh, keep it as mapping function mapping function one you can define as per your own choice equals to mention the function keyword close the uh, square brackets open the square uh, flower brackets and mention the keyword emit and in that we have to write the function which is used with this dot so we are performing aggregation on subject and marks right so we have to mention these two parameters here so mention subject comma this dot marks close the square brackets flower brackets and mention the semicolon and press enter all right we have now defined the mapping fun function first so next we have to uh, define the reduce function so the reduce function uh, syntax is also similar mention var again mention uh, the uh, param i mean the function name as per your own choice i'm just taking here it as reduce equals to mention the function keyword again and you have to pass two parameters here since you have uh, passed subject and marks for uh, our uh, you know aggregation function so just pass any two values it can be of any name it can you can take it as key and value or you can even use subject or marks so i'm just using the subject and marks again here subject comma marks and mention the uh, open the flower brackets and you have to return this parameter right you have to return this function now i want to perform let's say uh, the aggregation operation like let's say sum so i'll write array dot since it is a, a document and we have various fields i'm just writing the array here array dot sum and inside that mention the parameter which you are performing uh, the summation which is basically marks right so just close the brackets and close the flower brackets as well and enter all right 
now we have also uh, defined the reduce function now we are left with uh, only map reduce uh, operation right so let us now perform the map reduce operation so the syntax for that is db dot mention the collection name that is marks which we have taken mention the map reduce keyword make sure that r in reduce is in capital letters otherwise it will throw an error and in that pass the uh, both mapping and reduce function names that you have taken so we have taken it as map comma reduce so it can be any name that you have chosen it can be like mapping function one or as i said earlier it can be any name but make sure you are passing the same value that you have taken and mention the comma again and in the flower brackets now we have to mention the keyword out as we discussed in our syntax previously and now we can give any uh, you know collection name you know to your output uh, resultant set it can be of any uh, choice so i'm just uh, naming it as the result here i think it will be good to go so let me just execute the statement all right uh it is throwing an error collection dot map reduces is deprecated user aggregation instead okay i'm not sure uh, why it is uh, showing that but we can see result it is saying okay one that means it has been successfully executed so let us now and uh, see whether it is whether or not the aggregation function that is summation has been performed or data set or not so for that i'm again using the find command uh, db dot mention the uh, collection name that you have mentioned inside the parameter and map reduce operation db dot result dot find enter uh, as you can see we have total four subjects and the summation values are showing as 93 96 i'm not sure why uh, it should perform the summation operation so let's just check for history we have 93 and for history again 96 all right so it is showing simultaneously i mean side by side uh, it shouldn't be like that i'm not sure why it is uh, showing in this way so let's just uh, try to perform another operation and see whether it is showing for them as well i'm just performing an average uh, you know operation here all right let me just check okay we have that passed out uh, let me just uh, perform the map reduce function as well just copy paste this and you can just change the name as result one okay and click enter i think it's created so let us find again db dot uh, which is again result one dot find uh well i think uh, there is some issue with the back end of the mongodb database i'm not sure why it is uh, throwing an error like this because average value should be like uh, this average of 40 let's say 93 and 96 right 49 and 47 it's showing in a different way for maths it's 98 so it's average it's 49 and for uh, 94 it's 47 and the combined value we have to get but i'm not sure why it is uh, throwing that error so we'll get back to you guys uh but the syntax and the execution is uh the same you i think there is no mistake in the uh syntax that you have written here it is same there might be some issue with the back end so we'll just get back to you uh again so stay tuned for that and well i think that's all about map reduce we have discussed almost everything uh you know what map reduces its syntax how it works and how uh you know how it is used you know instead of aggregation and that brings us to the main question on you know which method you have to be using whether it's aggregation pipeline method or it is map reduce you know function now complex queries are difficult to handle in aggregation framework it can be useful but i would say it is not recommended for complex queries whereas if you take small data sets small data sets will take a long time to load in map reduce and even large data sets will take the same amount of time to process now whether or not the data set is small or large it will take the same amount of time to execute so as a result large data sets should be handled using the map reduce functions always and it is a recommended option the map reduce function can handle you know large data sets more quickly due to its uh, 
maybe it's it's flexibility over you know large data sets so you can always use this uh, while you're you know handling large uh, volumes of data and on the other side you can use the aggregation pipeline to handle small uh, data sets you know for a uh, regular usage when you're performing small calculations that is present in your you know uh, documents that is present in your collections i would say so this is how uh, both aggregation and map reduce are different from each other and when you have to use them and i hope you understood that as well as you know that mongodb relationship represents how multiple documents are logically connected to each other in mongodb it provides two types of relationships namely embedded and referenced embedded documents capture relationship between data by storing related data in a single document structure on the other hand reference models store the relationship between data by including links or references from one document to another now to implement a normalized database structure in mongodb we use the concept of reference relationship that is if you look at the left side of the uh, screen here you, you can have an example where it is a reference model where we have student collection and inside we have id and then we have another uh, you know document contact details where we are referencing using this student document right so in that way we can use reference model for that so we use this concept of reference relationship also referred to as manual uh, references in which we manually store the reference document id inside another document now what if the data that you're trying to search isn't present in different uh, collection or in different database and that's where you have to use db refs db refs are references from one document to another using the value of the first document id field collection name and optionally its database db refs basically allow you to uh, more easily reference documents stored in multiple collections or database so if you look at this example i have a user collection here and a post collection here in the user collection i have id name post as my fields and i'm trying to fetch those from the post collection which is another collection in in that case right so if i'm trying to retrieve data from another collection which may be present in another database in such case you have to reference the database that you are trying to search for and that is where we use dbref so and that brings us to the main part what is you know mongodb database references mongodb database references allow you to more easily reference documents stored in multiple collections or database so relationship between documents can be represented using this a uh, dbrefs which offer a standard format and type so if a database needs to communicate with a variety of frameworks and tools present in mongodb database the dbref format offers common links for representing the data between the documents however in cases where a document contains references from different collections in that case we have to use mongodb dbrefs so it basically represents a document rather than a specific reference type and if you are trying to uh, find data in more than one collection in such case you have to use mongodb database references all right i hope you understood what it is and let us now move ahead and understand uh, the various parameters that we use you know while writing you know database reference syntax first we have the dollar ref keyword now ref field basically holds the name of the collection whereas where the reference document resides next we have the id field the id field basically contains the value of the id field in the reference document and finally we have the optional db which contains the name of the database where the document or the reference document resides so in mongodb these are the three important fields which should be used in order to implement db refs relationship as follows let us now understand the syntax of mongodb database reference and how it is exactly used now let's say if i have an address collection here which i'm basically uh, creating two different fields which is id and city so the command is the db.address.insert and id is 145 and city is bangalore next we have another uh, document which is db.address.insert which is the id is 124 city is delhi so firstly we have inserted two documents in our address collection now let us move ahead and see and how we can implement this using another uh, you know collection which is which might be present in different database now let's say if i have another student collection and i'm in that i'm inserting records wherein i'm inserting records of uh, student details like id i'm providing as one is first name of the student is rahul here so as you can see here inside uh, you know 
the address id which is the database reference field which is part of the document or the collection student collection present in this collection we are using mongodb reference approach to refer the address id present in another collection which we have taken from the address collection here after defining three fields which are basically ref id and optional db so the ref is basically we are providing the field which you want to reference have a provider reference to the collection that you are trying to connect here so earlier we mentioned the id and the address in the address collection right so i am referring to that that's why i am providing the collection name as address and id as 105 and database is optional you can keep whatever you want i am just taking simply it as simply code one and similarly we are again inserting another document and again we are referencing it with the dbref id uh, dbref field which is again address id and for reference i'm taking again address collection and id as 124 and db dot simply code now you might have a question now what exactly and how exactly mongodb db uh, dbref works here now the syntax is followed as var student db dot student dot find one which we use in order to uh, find the data now i'm trying to search the first name with the name of rohan so i want to get the details or the address of this student whose name is rohan so for that i'm querying as var student address equals to student dot address id and after that mention the syntax as db in the within the square brackets student address dot dollar ref dot find id where student address dot id now what does it mean so i'm basically connecting both the uh, address collection and the student collection and that is what i'm referring here student address dot reference and student address dot id so in order to get the address of uh, the student rohan you have to basically uh, provide a reference to both these uh, collections so that is what i'm doing here so when you execute this statement this will be the final output now for rohan we have uh, the id which is 145 and his city the address is bangaluru so this is how exactly dbref works in mongodb and that brings us to the end of today's session guys in this tutorial we have revised the concepts of data relationships in mongodb for the with the likes of manual references used for data modeling in the mongodb and compared it uh, against the concepts of mongodb dbrefs where the former is used when the references are to be made to the documents present in the same collection so you can use manual references when you're trying to make references in the same documents or which are present in the same collection and the other uh, you know part which is mongodb db refs approach is used when the references are to be made to the documents present in different collections and in different database now the main question comes is why is no longer mongodb db refs concepts is not used it is deprecated uh, all around the world and it is not a suggested method when you are trying to uh, work on this mongodb database and that is the reason also mongodb documentation recommends manual references unless you have documents referred to in multiple locations or the collections in a database so when you have multiple collections for your references to target we would highly recommend it's still easier to store the object id and collection name in the own object without specifying or with a special name of db refs and that won't break if someone insert the field out of the order now all the db refs haven't been deprecated in mongodb as such and the functionality is unlikely to go away but hopefully you can see there are good reasons on why to use and how to avoid this function that we have discussed in this tutorial how to use covered queries and analyze those covered queries and the performance that it creates while you query a mongodb database so which helps us to query data more quickly so without any further ado let's get started all right now what are covered queries now we know that in every database including mongodb indexes play a crucial role mongodb queries are executed more quickly when indexes are used as you know we have discussed in our previous tutorials on mongodb indexing so if you haven't checked that out make sure you check that out on our channel we have a dedicated playlist on various mongodb concepts as well wherein we have covered mongodb indexing as well so you make sure you check that out now indexes basically provide users with an efficient way of querying data so if you ran a query to find specific documents let's say in a collection of uh, thousands or lakhs of documents without any indexes mongodb would have to search the entire collection in order to find the requested document in your query however mongodb would use 
indexes if you had them to reduce the number of documents that needed to be searched in the collection now there is an additional you know part of indexing that is covered queries so you've probably heard that column indexing is an excellent way to improve query performance by reducing the number of disk access that are required now covered queries is basically a mongodb specific application of field indexing in which all the query columns are already indexed now it basically avoids collection scan just like the uh, normal indexing so it allows the database to search through less document to satisfy a query without an index mongodb has to scan through all the documents to ensure it has answered the query correctly now covered queries are extremely fast because mongodb does not have to examine any other documents other than the ones that have been indexed so it only examines document in your query that you have provided the indexing uh, that you have provided the fields that are already indexed and finally uh, fetching data becomes uh, much faster using you know covered queries because uh, covered queries return results from an in index directly without having to access the source document and are therefore very efficient as well now there are cases when you have to consider when to use covered queries now covered queries are only used when all the fields in the query are part of the index so let's say if you're trying to find uh, any field in your query it should be a part of index that you have already created only then covered queries can come into picture or can be used in a more efficient way next is all the fields returned in the query should be of are in the same index now it can be a composite index it can be a multi key index but make sure that the fields that you are returning in your query should be in the same index and finally no fields in the query are equal to null that is field value should not be null in in such case covered queries will not be uh, followed now before getting into the execution part let us just consider a simple example on how query uh, covered queries works in mongodb so let's say i have a collection here which has uh, three different documents uh, of uh, various customers like rahul pranav and kirti and the orders that they have placed and the various personal details like address their payment mode email order total order items we have an array field here wherein we are storing uh, various fields in ordered items like item name like notebook paper general or postcard and even their price and the quantity of the items so we have three different documents present in our collection here now if i want to create a simple index let's say i'm creating an index on orders item field wherein i'm creating a particular index on the price here so and also payment mode i'm creating an index so the query would be db.orders.create index orders item dot price i'm mentioning one that is in ascending order the index is created in ascending order and also for payment mode i'm creating an index now generally what you have to do is uh, what you do in general for indexing or while querying your uh, data that is present in your collection is you just mention the customer or let's say if i'm trying to find the customer name here that is rahul if i consider this example here it says db.orders.find customer rahul orders item dot price one payment code one now we are we are providing the all the index field that we have created that is orders item dot price and payment code but the query that i'm trying to find is the data of customer here that is rahul which we have not indexed so let's say i'm just having three uh documents here now if there are let's say 10000 docu uh, 10000 documents that are present in collection and maybe we have more than one rahul in such case it becomes difficult right even the index is uh, is become an anomaly here it is not as fast as what we have thought here now instead of that i'm just taking another query now let's say i have created index on orders item dot price and payment mode right now what i'm doing is i am trying to uh, return the data or i'm querying for a uh, data wherein i'm trying to find the payment mode is equals to card now if you look at clearly into our you know uh, index query that we have created payment mode is already included in the query index right we have already created earlier and i'm trying to find it in the same way so i'm trying to find payment mode card which is again a uh, already created index which is payment mode so in that case instead of looking through all the uh, data present in documents it will simply look at only the ones which are already indexed and that is the main advantage of 
uh, you know, covered queries, it returns results from an index directly without having to access any source document. And it can be more efficient, uh, more than just indexing, right? So I hope you understood how, you know, covered queries are actually working in MongoDB. And let's just uh, go into MongoDB shell now and get into the execution part and understand it in a more clear way. And also finally, we'll analyze, you know, how this query is working and how it is different from indexing in MongoDB. So as you can see, MongoDB shell has started. So the first command would be is basically the show DBS, which will allow us to show the show all the database that are present in a MongoDB database. So we have the simply code uh, one database. So we'll be using that only, right? Uh, use simply code one. So it says switch to DB, we are good to go. Now let us see the collections that are present in this uh, database. So we have different collections like collection name, employee, marks, and new employees. So let us just consider uh, all, uh, con I mean a collection that we've already created here, which is employee. So let's just find the, the uh, details or the documents that are present in this collection. So I'm using the v dot employee dot find command for that. So when you enter, it will display all the records uh, or the documents that are present in this collection. All right. Now let us now create a covered query. Now creating a covered query is similar to that of how you create an index. Uh, so the query would be db dot employee dot create and mention the create index keyword make sure the i is capital otherwise it will throw an error so let's just uh, create an covered index on the fields let's say we have manager id and department id right so we'll be creating uh, you know covered query that is on this two fields so mention the field name that is manager id keep it as one comma and department id as well as well close the brackets all right and click enter so as you can see it says uh, manager id uh, underscore one department underscore id underscore one that means you have successfully created you know covered query on these two fields that is manager id and department id so now let's query or read data from this covered index so for that we'll again use the find operation so let's say i'm trying to find you know a particular uh, manager id uh, details right so let's say i want to try find the details of employees whose manager id is 123 in such case i'll use a query that is db dot employee dot find And inside the brackets, uh, let's say manager ID is 123 that I'm going to search for. Close the brackets and mention the indexes that you have created here, which is again manager ID, which is one comma department ID, which is again one here close the brackets I think we're good to go so click on enter so as you can see in the above query when we find document where we are trying to find manager ID which is 123 covered index which is on manager ID as well as department ID is already loaded into the RAM and as we know that So as we know that manager ID is already present in a compound index that is why it reads very quickly and we avoid scanning of too many documents in database. So this is just a basic example on how to create a covered query. So let's just create a you know another field where we understand how covered query exactly works. Now let's say I'm trying to create an index on the first name let's say first name as well. So let's take the query as db dot create index I'm just copy pasting it here and let us uh, create you know uh, another index for our you know collection for this so it will be first name here all right first name close the brackets 
So as you can see, our query has been successfully created. Now let's say I'm trying to find the employee details uh, using this, uh, you know, index that you have created now. So I'll just So let's say I'm trying to find an employee uh, whose first name is Shelly. Now by default, since I've created index on manager ID as well as department ID, it will be directly indexed and displayed in our result and set. So make sure you keep uh, the first name field also because we have uh, created the index for that as well. So mention first name as one comma. All right, I think we are good to go now. Let's just uh, see the result for this. So there was a bit error in the first time that we we're trying to retrieve. Uh, now Shelly, which we have taken uh, her name in all caps, uh, which is not exactly present in the same way in our uh, you know collection. So make sure uh, you keep the name as exactly which is present in our database, which is capital S, and the rest of them are small caps here. So when I try to uh, find the you know resultant set for this. The final output is the first name, which is her name Shelly, and we are getting the manager ID as well as the department ID that she belongs to, which is manager ID is 101 and department ID is 110. Now, if you look at this query, covered index will not be available when you use this following query, which is db.employee find first name, which is Shelly, and we are mentioning the indexes that we have created for first name, manager ID, department ID. Because when we find a document where first name is Shelly, which has covered index on uh, basically the first name manager id and the department id which is already loaded into the ram but by default uh, you know underscore id is also present here that is the field that is not present in the covered index is also being displayed so despite of you know manager id department id present in our compound index we cannot avoid scanning of too many documents in our database so we need to exclude uh, you know underscore id as well if you're trying to use covered index so make sure you include underscore id in your uh, query as well so the query now that would uh, you know followed as with the help of uh, you know indexes that we've created make sure with the first name keep the id as zero only then so I'm mentioning underscore ID after the uh, department ID, keeping it as zero. So let us just find it now. So as you can see, we are only retrieving first name Shelly, manager ID and department ID. And finally, uh, underscore ID is being eliminated or dismissed from this. So that was all about covered index guys. Now you have to remember that covered index does not work when field on which we're trying to cover in covered indexes an array or an embedded document. That is when you're trying to retrieve data from a sub document or a field that is present in an array field. In such case, covered index won't work. So let us now try to understand how to analyze this query. Now the performance of indexing is very crucial for our database performance, right? So we need to understand how it is being executed, you know, in the backend as well. So for that, we'll use the explain command here. So for that, the query is same, guys. Just copy paste the query that you have, uh, you know, created. And after that, mention the explain keyword, uh, which is the explain command here. So there was a bit issue or uh, error in the, uh, you know, copying this code guys. So I'm just copying paste uh, the query that we have written here, which is a db.employee.find first name Shelly, first name manager ID, department ID, and all the indexes that I've created on. And finally, you have to mention the explain command here. Now, analyzing queries is very important aspect of measuring how well or the effective the database and the indexing design is. So for that, I'm using the explain, you know, command here, which basically provides information on the query indexes that you have used, you know, the performance, uh, that is the time that it has taken to execute your query and other statistics. So it is very helpful when analyzing how well your indexes are optimized, uh, you know, while you are using an indexing or a covered query. So let's just uh, see how it works here. Click on enter. So you can see it is displaying all the details of you know the performance or the optimization of the query that has taken place in the background here 
so you can see we have various fields you know listed in all this here you can see the namespace index filter set as false and all that now we are only concerned with here is this stage input stage is ix scan that is index scan the short form for this is index scan so basically that we have performed a index scan on the query that we have uh, you know created in our resultant set so it it basically says another condition where you'll find this is a collection scan that is co lls and scan so you may find that that is you're not providing any index instead you're finding all the documents one by one simultaneously using a collection scan that is another uh, you know scene scenario in which we consider you know the type of scanning that we have done here and you can also see that index name that we have uh, created that is first name and it's multi key it's it's false unique false partial false and so on so it basically indicates the number of you know documents that have matched that are returned here it indicates the total number of documents that we have scanned and indicates the total number of documents or index entities that we have scanned here all this you can find using the explain operator here firstly let us discuss what is atomic operations in general now in context of any database atomic operation means that you either commit to the entirety of the transaction occurring in the database or have no transaction at all so it is basically a complex series of database operations in which either all or none of the operations are being performed while you're conducting any transactions or you're trying to uh, you know perform any operations on your data now essentially an atomic transaction ensures that any commit you make finishes the entire operation successfully or in case of any lost connection in the middle of operation due to power failure or any other external uh, you know factors the database is rolled back to its state prior to the commit being initiated so it makes sure that partial changes will be rolled back if there is uh, any system failure as such now this is important for preventing crashes or outages from creating cases where the transaction was partially finished to an unknown overall state now we all know sql provides you know asset properties uh, concept wherein you can perform transactions on your multiple tables right you can perform various operations like insert update and delete on your tables and even if there if there is if a crash occurs during a transaction with no atomicity you can you can't exactly know how far along the process was before the transaction was interrupted but by using atomicity you can ensure that either the entire transaction was done on your you know uh, table or none of it was done so as you know it follows the various atomic asset properties like atomicity which is either all the operations inside a transaction take place or none of it you know does take place and we have consistency now consistency means the data must be consistent before and after the transaction now let's say if you are performing a transaction uh, from an account a to account b for example if account a has transferred 500 and let's say if uh, the account b has overall 1000 in his account now if you're performing this transaction now after the transaction is done the account b should have 1500 right now in case of any failure or you know the multiple errors even after that it must be consistent so next that is where we have isolation transaction gets successful in case of system failures that is what we were talking about no matter what the circumstance or the deciding factor of what has happened to your data it should maintain consistency that is transaction should be successful in case of any system failures and finally we have durability durability means changes made to the database must be permanent now you might work on a database wherein you have created a temporary change but a transaction is something which is you know successfully happens when you are you know making a database changes permanently and that is what asset properties also say that you know changes made to the database must be permanent now coming to mongodb what is atomic operations in mongodb and how can we achieve that now we know that mongodb does not support transactions in a database therefore in the application uh, of your database pay attention to this point whatever the design we do not ask mongodb to ensure data in integrity but mongodb provides many atomic operations you know such as saving a document modify update and delete as per a requirement which are basically the atomic operations that are done in mongodb database so either this is the so-called atomic operation to save the document to mongodb 
or not save anything at all. So basically MongoDB maintains automaticity by keeping all related information in a single document which need updation. Now while performing any uh, you know changes or the updation on the documents, if there is an error, it should either update all the documents or it shouldn't update anything at all. Now if you take let's say a limited number of documents while processing let's say I have a hundred documents and I have successfully you know updated 50 but the rest 50 are not updated and because of some external failure or system crash or crash failure anything this might occur due to any external factor but that is not the case where we expect our database to you know exactly work in that way we want it to either update all the hundred documents or just uh, not update any of them now this can be very useful uh, and very uh, i mean becomes crucial when you're working with large number of documents in your collection let's say if i have 20 million uh, you know such documents in my database it it becomes quite difficult right so in that case what atomic operation does is it keeps the related information that you want in a single document which is an embedded type of uh, document that saves all your data Now there are some constraints you know that we have de previously discussed that you know for a database for a NoSQL database like MongoDB atomic operation uh, or atomicity is not that easy to achieve. So at MongoDB does not support for multi-document atomic transactions. So if you want to maintain atomicity uh, on your database and while performing you know while performing and saving data on multiple documents it is not feasible. Now also MongoDB allows atomic operations just on a single document so in just a in one collection if it has a single document only then you can achieve atomic operation so atomicity is only maintained or executed at the document level now like sql which uh, you know achieves atomicity at the table level here in mongodb it is achieved only at the document level and not the whole collection you know level all right, so let us now understand how exactly this works here. Now, let's say I have a customer details collection wherein I'm having a document here, as you can see. So, which the above document is basically an embedded document here. So, as you can see, right, uh, where we have the embedded, the customer information according to the item purchased in the item bought by field. Now, the single document will help us to check whether the item is available in stock or not when a customer places a new order through item available field. So if an item is available, then we'll subtract the item available field by one and insert a new customer name and date of purchase details in the item bought by field where we have the details of all the customers of the document. So in this following example, you can see we have the uh, a particular ID, let's say we have taken as 1899 and the item name is iPhone which comes under category of smartphone and then we have given warranty period as one city Bangalore, country India and the store name or the branch is Koramangala. So total we have a total of 999 units in the uh, Koramangala branch here and at present we only have 148 available items and the list of all the uh, details of customers who have purchased iPhone from this store has been you know embedded into the item bought by field where you have list of all customers like Rohit who purchased uh, one quantity of iPhone on 26 September similarly Kirti who purchased two items on 26 September and so on so first just for our understanding I've, I've just given the four uh, details now let's say if I have to you know add someone you know who's trying to purchase another one in such case I have to update this document here so how can we do that now for that we have different commands to perform atomic operations so first we have the set command set command is used to specify a key and update that particular field and if the key does not exist it will only create a null value next we have inc inc or increment it can be a numeric value of the document uh, with a document field in order to increase or decrease an operation next we have push this value is added to the field to go inside the uh, document it must be an array type field only then it will accept the value that is it can be an embedded which is basically an array field so if the field does not exist a new array type will be added and next we have the pull which is the opposite of push that is it is used to delete a field from an array of value which is equal into the document 
and finally we have the rename which is used to modify the field name if necessary so let us now understand the syntax and let's try to understand how to perform the uh, you know updation on this field here so in this following example we are going to use the find and modify command in order to perform the atomic operation on our uh, you know collection here so this basically command helps to search and update the document simultaneously and it it's it's an operation on a document and it tries to achieve atomicity that is if the find condition matches a document the update is performed on that document and all the concurrent queries and additional updates on that uh, document are not affected until the current update is totally complete so the syntax is followed as db dot now let's say our uh, collection name is customer dot details find and modify and inside the brackets the query would be query mention the id which is 1899 which we have taken item available so we are checking whether the item available we are giving the condition as greater than zero so if and only if the item is greater than zero only then we have to update and then we are incrementing the value that is in the item available we are incrementing by decreasing the value in the total await items available that is by minus one and then we are pushing the value that is we are inserting the new record into the orders bought by uh, field wherein we have the uh, customer details so i am pushing uh, this details of customer name let's say ajay and the date of purchase is first october so i hope you've clearly understood the syntax and how it goes so let's just go to mongodb shell and see how it gets executed so as you can see mongodb shell has started uh, we'll use the show dbs command in order to view all the databases present in a database so we'll be again uh, using the simply code one database so simply code one all right let us see the collection present inside that for that i'm using show collections so as you can see we have customer details which i've already created in hindsight so we'll be using that so let's just try to find what are the uh, details that are present in this so db dot customer details dot find so as you can see, uh, we previously discussed the same example here and that is also what I've created in this as well. So ID is 1899, item name iPhone, smartphone, category, warranty period 1, city details, country, branch, item total, 999, items available, 147, item bought by. Now these are the list of customers. I'm just including only 5. Uh, I don't, I didn't have the time to, you know, insert all the uh, details of all the customers. It's, it's time taking actually so just to understand for your basic uh you know level i'm just creating only four documents you know, i mean five documents or the details of the customer now let's say uh as discussed in the uh you know uh, presentation now i'm trying to add another customer whose name is ajay and his date of purchase for that the following query would be db dot customer details dot use find and modify make sure the m is capital otherwise it will throw an error and inside that i'll write the following query which is the keyword query mention the id name which is underscore id which is equals to 1899 comma item available we have the item available field right so mention that item available is make sure it is greater than use the dollar greater than uh, operator is greater than zero only then our updation or the uh, transaction will be completed in this so close the flower brackets and now what we are trying to update the value right so mention the update and we are using the increment operator here so dollar inc put semicolon and now we know that if the item is purchased it has to reduce its count by one so the total item available is 147 here so i am decrementing uh, decrementing the value by one so it should become 146 so keep remembering and just uh, see that how it is reflecting in our resultant set now so item available should be minus one it should decrease by one value all right so close the brackets mention comma and now we are pushing the uh, customer details into the item bought by field so we have to mention that as well 
so a dollar push mention the item bought by field wherein we'll uh, embed all the details of the customer item bought by mention the semicolon and inside the flower brackets mention the customer details customer name is let's say a j comma and mention the date as well so let's say i am taking it as first october first october 2022 all right and close the inverted commas and mention all the flower brackets that we have used right i think this is the query i think we are good to go now so press enter oh, i think there is an error so the error says that you know db dot customer details was fine and modify is not a function i think uh, a also should be in caps i think we just forgot that so let me just copy paste it again and change that So instead of small a here for and, I'll just keep capital A. I think that will be fine. So is there, let's just check once again. Um, I think. I think we are good to go now. I think there's no more errors. I think it should be fine. Well, as you can see, it has successfully executed. Now, in order to find whether it has you know successfully updated what you're trying to find in our you know our document let's just use the find command again so i'm using db dot customer details dot find so as you can clearly see that uh see previously we had items available 147 now it is showing item available as 146 and it has also added the customer details which is customer name is Ajay and the date is 1st October 2022. So what we're trying to do here is here we first searched for the item with the ID which we have created which is 1899. Now when such item is found we are basically incrementing the item available field by minus one. That is the logic behind this is if you purchase an item it will reduce its count by one and updating the item bought by field which is an embedded field which stores the data of the customers right so by adding the customer name and the date of purchase of item and then we are printing the overall purchase detail by using find and find method right and we can observe that the item available field has changed from 147 to 146 and also the new customer details have been added into your item bought by field so in this way you can create uh, you know you can achieve atomicity in a single document rather than multi documents that you can perform now we also have uh, two different options of doing this which is update one and update many as well so as the name suggests update one method modifies a single document in a collection whereas update many modifies one or more documents in the collection so let us know and uh, let us know if you want to create a separate video on uh, how to create that as well or Type in the comments below if you can try that and we will see if you have the, uh, you know, knowledge on, on how to create, uh, you know, atomicity by creating update one and update many. So let us see if you can try to write the command for that. So make sure to write uh, in the comments below and we'll try to uh, answer your you know queries or uh, any doubts that you have gotten while writing the code. Well, I think that is pretty much uh, all about the atomic operation in MongoDB that we have discussed here, which brings us to the end of the capped collections and see how it is different from a normal collections, discuss its advantages and disadvantages and when should be using. All right. So what is capped collection in MongoDB? Now, a capped collection is a special type of collection that has either a fixed number of documents in a collection or only a fixed number of elements in it. It basically creates new documents by overriding the oldest documents in the collection and also capped collections have maximum size or document 
counts that prevent them from growing beyond the maximum threshold that is been available. Now, all capped collection must specify a maximum size and may also specify a maximum document count as well. MongoDB removes older documents if a collection reaches this maximum size limit before it reaches the maximum document count. So overall, the structure and functionality of a capped collection supports high performance and also the high throughput performance for applications and the overall performance of CRUD operations like create, read and delete operations as well. So let us now understand why we use MongoDB capped collection. But before we begin, we have to understand how it is different from a normal collection and how exactly they differ from each other. So basically, in comparison to normal collection, cab collections are created in advance and are only of fixed size. Whereas the normal collections are created dynamically and it generally uh, or automatically grows in size to fit the extra data that we uh, need to incorporate in our database. So these capped collections on the other hand are designed to consume less space under rotating. That means once allocated space is full, it will start writing from older documents again. And that is the reason it is called as a circular buffer collection or simply a circular collection, which means whenever the collection size is exhausted, it starts deleting the old documents automatically without explicitly providing any commands to the database. And some operations that are not allowed on a capped collections is that documents cannot be removed with a command like uh, you know drop collections and also updates that make document to grow in size are not allowed also so that comes to the main point on why we use you know mongodb cap collections first one is in order to ensure the insertion order is maintained so capped collection offer very high performance as we discussed earlier for CRUD operations because they preserve insertion order. So unlike normal collection which keep on adding uh, you know the data into its collection, uh, capped collections on the other hand make sure that once the data is completely filled in the collection it will automatically delete and the insertion operation is done on the basis of uh, you know the first come and first serve basis. And next also we discussed auto removal of oldest documents. So in order to make room for the new documents, you know, into a collection, capped collection basically uh, automatically removes the oldest documents in the collection without writing, you know, scripts or expli expli explicit remove operations in our, uh, you know, MongoDB database. And finally, it stores the catch data that needs to be refreshed frequently. Now we know that MongoDB is a huge NoSQL database and we have a lot of amounts of data that is being generated on a daily basis. So in the same way we need to process or you know retrieve that information quickly right. So there's a lot of catch, catchy data that is being generated on a fre uh, re frequent basis. So in order to you know store all that information capped collections can be a useful uh, tool for you. So these are some of the main reasons why we use MongoDB capped collections. All right, let, next let us discuss some uh, characteristics of capped collections in MongoDB. Now firstly, no delete operations can be performed. Now as discussed earlier, uh, if you are looking to delete a document from a capped collection, then basically you are looking into the wrong direction as we cannot delete documents from a capped collection. The old documents in a capped collection can only be deleted automatically upon insertion of the new documents when the allocated size uh, to the capped collection has been exhausted or the maximum limit has been reached. Next, all the elements in collection should have an equal size. So basically when you are creating a capped collection, capped collection you have to mention the size of that capped collection and each element will take the equal size of it. So let's say if you have allocated a size of let's say 100 bytes and you are trying to insert four records in that. So each element or each document will take 25 bytes of size. So it shares in equal amounts of size uh, in the collection. Next, it works as a queue and because of this, no indexing is required. Now a capped collection does not contain any default indexes like in general uh, to the contrast of a normal collection, which might seem strange. In addition to this, even the ID field lacks an index for this. So MongoDB doesn't waste any time searching for a location to store a new document on the disk. Uh, let's say when you're performing an insert operation on a capped collection, it is possible for MongoDB to add a new document to the end of the capped collection easily. So the insert operations in capped collections run very quickly because there is no wastage in disk space organization. 
and it is also useful to keep log files as well. So MongoDB, as we discussed earlier, maintains a running log of events, you know, including entries such as the in incoming uh, connections, commands, uh, you know, the data that you are being provided and all other stuff, you know, into the database. So generally, log, me log messages are useful for diagnosing issues, monitoring your deployment and tuning your performance. So in order to uh, keep all these log files and to access them in a frequent manner, we use cap collections. So these are some of the main characteristics of cap collections. I hope you guys have understood. So let us now move understand and discuss the syntax that is how to create a cap collection in MongoDB. Now the simple syntax is db dot. Uh, now you can use the syntax that you use for a create uh, collection, right? So it is similar to that only. db dot create collection. Mention the collection name as per your size, and after that mention the keyword cap and then boolean. Now boolean here. I'll discuss uh, next when we you know go through each of this. Next we have size. Mention the number of bytes. Next we have max number. All right. So firstly we have the create collection, which is a method to create a new capped collection, right? Next we have a collection name. It basically represents the collection name that you want to create. Uh, we can use any name for the, for our capped collection. Next we have the capped keyword, and then we are specifying a boolean value here. So we have to set capped option, which is either true or false. So if you have set the capped option to true, then our collection will be created as a capped collection. So in on the other hand, if you have specified the capped collection option as false, then the collection is created without any capped collection. And finally, we have the size. Size option will specify the limit of size for the capped size, capped collection, sorry. So we can specify the size of our collection in bytes in general for capped collections. So this parameter is actually mandatory when we have defined a, a collection which is of a capped collection type. And finally, we have max where you have to provide a number that is how many documents that you want to incorporate in your capped collections and when you want to uh, specify uh, or you know limit the maximum number of documents that are allowed in your collection. Size option will give preference over the max option in MongoDB in general. So that was uh, the basic syntax on how to create a cap collection. And if you want to know whether your collection has been capped or not, you can use this following command, which can be uh, visible on your screen, which is db dot. Let's say my, uh, you know, collection name is cap log collection. And if you want to see whether it is created or not, I'm using is capped keyword. So this is how you can use these commands in order to create and view your collection which is of capped type in your MongoDB database. So I hope you understood how to create uh, this, I mean the syntax on how to create a cap collection. So let us now directly jump into MongoDB shell for execution part. So as you can see, MongoDB shell has started and firstly let us look at our databases, which will be our first command, which is show DBS. So again, we'll be using the same simply code one database in order to understand how cap collection works. So next, let us see the collections that are present. So simply code one uh, has various collections like cap log collection, collection name, customer details, employee marks, and new employees. So let us now firstly uh, create a capped collection. So as we already discussed the syntax of uh, the capped collections. So let's just execute it now. So the uh, syntax is followed as create mention create collection keyword and inside that mention the capped collection name so let's just take a uh, log collection one so you can keep it a uh, name of your own choice so it's up to your wish close the uh, brackets and uh, open the flower brackets and mention the capped keyword and i'm specifying it as True. that is we want to create a new capped collection all right mention it as true and comma mention the size so let's just keep let's say thousand bytes for our capped collection so this is how uh, you basically create a capped collection in your mongodb database click on enter so it will say okay one that means you have successfully created now we have only create uh, you know specified the size to our capped collection so if you want to limit the number of documents that you want to uh, you know 
insert into your cap collection then you have to mention the maximum size also so for that what we'll do is we'll provide the additional uh, you know max uh, constraint as well so after size mention the max keyword and just for our understanding i'm just keeping it uh, you know where for a simple number i'm just keeping 3 all right so since i'm keeping 10 3 is the number of documents that the collection will collection will overall have so let's say if you're trying to insert another documents after you know inserting first three documents then it will automatically replace with the new one so let's just see how it will work but i think we have to change the collection name again here so i'm just taking it as log collection 2 and okay click on enter all right again it says okay one that means you have successfully created or not created but again let's just find out whether uh, you know collection is capped or not for that we have already discussed we have to use the is capped you know method for that so db dot mention the collection name which is color collection 2 dot is make sure the capped uh, c is capital so it is true so that means we have successfully uh, you know created a capped collection and it is not just a normal collection so let us now try to insert some records or uh, data into our you know this capped collection and see how it works so db dot uh, mention the collection name which is log collection 2 dot again you can use the insert command which is a regular one right so mention the open the flower brackets and let's say let's just take let's just insert a you know a normal a basic type of info let's take name i'm just taking it as let's say rohan all right close the brackets all right it is uh, okay now you might find this warning it says collection dot insert is deprecated deprecated you use insert one insert menu or bulk right uh, as in your command but it's just fine you know you can also use just insert it will work as you can see it has successfully created acknowledged true and it has inserted id so similarly we will insert another two documents and see how it actually represents in uh, you know in a real time so let's just take uh, another name let's say uh, preeti all right and let us take another uh by above it's taking a random name so i think so we have successfully inserted three and since we have put a limit of maximum three i'm just inserting three and what will happen if you're trying to insert the fourth record we'll see how it works so let's just uh, display the records that are present in a collection for that i'm again using our uh, collection name and i'm using the find method here so as you can see it is successfully retrieving all the three documents that is uh, the details of rohan preeti and bhaiwav now what if i am trying to insert a new document here all right i'm just copying this and let's say i am trying to insert a fourth document in this uh, i'm trying to insert a new document whose name is let's say kiran so in such case and if i am trying to find uh, the data again that is present in our you know log collection too which is a capped collection so you can see that we ha previously had rohan preeti bhaiwav now we have preeti bhaiwav and kiran that means the older one which is uh, rohan has been successfully deleted from our you know uh, collection here so we know that due to the circular and the fixed side nature of the capped collection there are restrictions to this op update operations so whenever you are trying to add a new data and if updating of any document in the collection results in the increase of the document size so previously we had three and now we are increasing it to four that is the size is increasing then mongodb will not update this document in that collection because documents in the capped collections are stored in the order of disk disk storage which ensures the size of a single document does not exceeds its allocated size on the disk so it, that is the reason why uh, it is basically based on the first come first of basis and it will automatically delete the old documents whenever you are trying to trying to insert a new document into our collection so this is how in general you know cap collection works i hope you understood that now let's say if you want to convert you know 
already present collection which is a non capped collection if you want to change it to a capped collection in such case you can use another query for that right so basically the query would be db dot uh, run command Men open the flower brackets and mention the a keyword which is convert capital to t o and capital capped capital c in capped keyword all right so let's just enter it now let us take uh, one collection here let's say i'm trying to uh, change this employee which is a non-capped collection into a capped collection so i'm just specifying employee here okay i forgot to mention the uh, inverted commas so mention the inverted commas and again provide the size let's take a uh, size as 10,000 bytes I mean it's, it's uh, your preference you can give it as per your need and maximum I want to uh, store only 100 uh, documents in this uh, you know cap collection so as you can say it is successfully saying okay one that means you have successfully converted a non capped uh, collection which is employee collection into a capped collection well i think uh, we have covered pretty much all about you know what is a capped collection how to create it its syntax and how it exactly works it is authentication in mongodb and we'll show you how to enable authentication so that only authorized users can access the database and its co content present in various collections and documents in mongodb database so what is authentication in mongodb now authentication and authorization are two important concepts of any database authenticating users with your database is a critical security feature as well as the authorization now these two terms might be uh, similar but they have a different meaning to each other now when it comes to authentication identifying all the users who connect to the database is called as authentication on the other hand authorization is basically restricting actions on authenticated users that can perform any operations in your database which is known as authorization now similarly in a, a no sql database like mongodb we do provide authentication for users in order to uh, curb some unrestricted activity from others uh, while performing you know mongodb operations so this is especially true when the database contains sensitive data such as users accounts for a website or company's data so basically when you enable authentication on your mongodb instance you can specify what user accounts are allowed to do and what level of access they have and what level of uh, you know activity they cannot have so this also means that you can restrict access to certain features to only authorized users working with no authentication can be okay for you know developing a a development or testing environment initially but when you are in production with customers and the data stored inside is mandatory or which is of key importance it is important to restrict access to the database so that only a specific amount of users who have the authenticity or authentication to the database has the access to uh, you know cover all the operations within the mongodb database so that is what exactly is authentication in mongodb it is basically the process of confirming a client's identity that is it requires all clients to authenticate themselves when access control that is whenever the authorization is enabled to them now authentication in, is done in three different ways in three different stages now firstly we have to create a users so users who have access control enabled must identify themselves and are only permitted to take actions that fall under the permissions granted by the role assigned to them now before creating a user you need to have you need to enable access control enabling access control on a mongodb uh, basically deploys the authentication process and finally after giving access control you need to authenticate a user finally you need to provide the username password and the authentication database linked to that user which is required in order to authenticate as per that user now there are various commands you know that you can use to authenticate mongodb database so for creating modifying and delete deleting users within mongodb and configuration and con to configure authentication the core methods you need are db.create user this basically creates a user for authentication purpose next we have the db.update user and db.drop user these two basically updates the details of a user account as well as deletes a mongodb user account 
and finally we have db dot change user password it basically changes the user uh, passwords your password used by the user account so let us now understand how to create authentication in mongodb for that we have already learned that we need to create a user and the syntax is uh, followed as db dot create user within the parenthesis mention the user keyword wherein i'm just taking admin and i'm giving the password as 123 abc now we have another criteria where we have uh, we need to mention the roles here and within the parenthesis i mentioned the role as user admin and the database that we are providing is admin database here now once you are uh, done with this it will basically say that it's okay one well, that means you have successfully authenticated but you need another step in order to verify whether it is created or not you need to use the auth that is db dot auth is a keyword wherein you are uh, verifying whether the authentication is done on the database that you have done or not so i'm just checking using this syntax which goes as db dot auth uh, mentioned in the database which is admin sorry the user we, username that we have given is admin and the password we have given is 123abc so this is how you can create authentication in mongodb by using the create user method i hope you understood this so let us now jump into the execution part and see how exactly it is done so as you can see mongodb compass has started now firstly what we'll do is we'll create a database and inside that we'll create a collection and basically then we'll do authentication on this collection wherein we'll do some read and write uh you know restrictions you know for the new years new user who's trying to insert new documents into that collection so let's just create a database first uh let's take let's say i'm creating a student database so i'm keeping a student db and let's take a collection name as student details all right so let's just create it student db has uh, successfully created a database now you can go into this collection and let's just add some data for our reference and uh, let's see i'm just going to insert some simple uh, document into our this so we'll add basically a field i'm just giving name and the name would be let's say rohan and i'm adding another field let's say age is uh, 25 all right so let's just insert this now we have successfully inserted a document into our collection student details now we are done with this now let's just go to uh, mongodb shell and uh, get in with the commands now so you can directly open the mongodb shell or even you can use cmd uh, wherein you can open command prompt and you can give the command as mongosh which is basically a connection to mongodb shell which is a shortcut so I'll just wait for it and it will successfully open so let us now see what are the databases that are present in our database so we have various uh, different databases like admin company db config local simply code one student db test right so now you can create authentication on any database as per your vision you can even create uh you know authentication on admin database company db database so for a better better understanding we have considered here student db database so we'll basically use that use student db so student db now let's say show collections and we'll see we have the student details so let us now find the details for that student dot db dot student details dot find so we have inserted one document uh, which is of name rohan and age 25 so this is basically a normal uh, way of creating a document in a database right so let's just create uh, another uh, let's just insert another uh, document into this okay for our reference i'm just taking it a reference and we'll see how when you're trying to add or when you're trying to read or write some operations after authentication how it will impact so i'm just create inserting another one student it will not insert and within the flower brackets mention the single quotes name let's say name as uh Bowen. mention in single quotes Close the brackets and let us take age as 28. Close the flower brackets and enter. So it will say it is successfully executed. Now let's just try to find this again. 
so we have inserted two documents here now this is done now we have to create basically a a user for creating the authentication for our database now we'll see how to create that now since we have already discussed i'm just copy pasting it here guys so as you can see i am creating a user which is of username rahul and i'm giving password as per your choice as let's say one two three abc and then i'm providing the roles which is role as user admin let's say and the db is student db all right so press enter so there was a bit of error in the code guys now basically there are some certain you know keywords for role here so for admin access you have to provide only as admin not as user admin and i am here taking the role as just read so that whenever you are trying to perform a read operation on that it will provide an authentication for our, that for our uh, database so you can see it was successfully created and it chose ok and one now we are done with this part now basically we have just created an user now we have to enable the authentication so for that you have to find the mongodb.cfg file so now where you'll find that is basically in your uh, you know where you have installed your mongodb so let's just navigate to that uh, path first so open uh, the c folder where or the location where you have said i have saved this in c drive so go to program files go to mongodb folder click on server click on 6.0 go to bin and you can see mongod.cfg so this is the file we want click right click and let's say open with notepad so once you open this you'll find a log a, like a description of all the configuration that it has when you scroll down a bit you'll find that hashtag security so remove this con a comment and uh, just write as authentication as enabled okay what this does is basically you're giving control access to your uh, database so, so that if any other user is trying to you know read your operations from your database he can uh, use this so let's just save this the program file or you don't have permission to save this location contact the administrator to obtain permission click on yes so we have successfully given the authentication where you have uh, provided the command line of auth authentication enabled. Now once you are done with this, you have to restart your system. So for that, you have to basically stop the services of MongoDB. Now for that, what you'll do is basically just uh, go to your uh, home page, try to find for MongoDB. Scroll down a bit and I think you'll find here. Uh, yeah, so MongoDB server, it's running. Click Right click on that. So we have successfully uh, restarted the MongoDB uh, server. So let's just go to uh, MongoDB, Mongo shell again. Open CMD and type Mongo. All right, now let's say show DBS and let us use the student DB collections. All right, now we have student details in our uh, collections of student db database now since we have authenticated it let's just verify whether it is created or not so for that i'm using db.auth which you have discussed earlier open the uh, square brackets so within the uh, inverted quotes mention the username that we have provided as student db only for our uh, database and mention the Password, so we have kept as 123abc. All right, so just close it and press enter. So it says OK one. That means you have successfully created uh, the authentication on your database. Now, whenever you're trying to retrieve data, uh, it will make sure that you know only a limited number of people having this username and this password has this, uh, you know, in order to open this collection. So let's just try to find whether it is showing or not. So for that, I'm using the student details dot find command, and you can see the details are being displayed for our uh, the user who's trying to uh, retrieve the data that is present in our student data student details database after uh, you know accessing the after getting the authentication from the database. So this is how you can create authentication. Uh, on a user database you can even create on admin database or even you can create on test database and with that we have come to the end of today's session guys i hope you've covered everything pretty much about you know authentication in mongodb
so authentication is like one of the most critical point of uh, you know any database in terms of security it will basically allow us to validate and verify the information of the user who is connected with the current instance of mongodb and if any user has no uh, privilege or association with the database collection then his request will be automatically will denied and this is where authentic authentication plays an important role without having a user relationship with the database we cannot authenticate the user user and role management in mongodb and understand various commands that are used to perform these two technicalities so firstly let us discuss what are user management commands now user management commands are basically used to manage the user access to the database mongodb offers an internal method called db.createuser method that allows user to be added to this system now unlike conventional databases like uh, sql or relational databases mongodb users are connected to a local database known as authentication database and additionally unique identifiers include the authentication database and the user's name assigned to it and consequently if two users are created in different database but have the same names they are recognized as two separate users therefore rather than creating uh, the user multiple times in various database one should allow a single user to have the rights or roles to the relevant database instead of creating the user multiple times in different databases so let's say if one wants to create a single user with permissions on multiple database we can give the access to that particular person so that is basically what is user management is all about in mongodb now that is done using various commands uh, in mongodb database now first we have the most important one which is create user this method basically is used to create a new user in your mongodb instance next we have the drop all users from database it is used to delete all the users from a database or the collection of uh, data that you have in your documents right and next we have the drop user command which is used to grant a task and its privileges to a user next we have grant roles to user it is basically assigning a role and its associated privileges that can be uh, given to a user on a basis on a regular basis and finally next we have revoke roles from user which is used to remove the access to the user role that we have given earlier next we have the update user this method basically is used to update a user's data and finally we have users info so let's say if you want to return the information of the users that you have created you can use the user info so these are some of the major user management commands that we use in database now you will understand it more clearly when we get into the execution part so for now let's just understand what this is okay let's move ahead and understand what are role management commands now now roles grant users access to mongodb resources by providing several built in roles that enable the administrators or the users to control the access to a mongodb system although these roles cannot describe the desired set of privileges one can create new roles in a particular database time to time so except for functions created in the admin database a role can only include rights that applies to its database and those inherited from other roles and only the user who has granted this access has this uh, you know permission in order in order to control and access the data from that mongodb uh, database so similar to user management we have various uh, different commands here as well the first one is create role it is basically used to create uh, a role for the user uh, database and say what you can perform to that database next we have drop role it basically removes the role that was set by the user so which is the again the opposite of create role so if you want to create drop a role that you have assigned to the user you can use the drop role command next we have drop all roles from database now let's say if you have created a user and given let's say five to six roles to that particular user now for due to some external factors or reasons if you want to delete all those roles at a time you can use drop all roles from database command which basically removes all the roles that the users from the database has set up next we have the grant privileges to role it is used to assign privileges to a role that the user chooses and finally we have the update role which basically updates the role that was set up by the user now again these are some of the major uh, commands that we use in uh, mongodb if you want to learn more about these 
you can go to MongoDB or website and clearly understand what are the different commands that we are using. And we will basically uh, execute them in MongoDB shell and only then you'll understand how important and how they exactly get executed. So let's dive uh, directly into MongoDB shell. But before that, we will just see a simple example where we'll understand how user and role management command works. Now I'm using a simple a database which is employees and then I'm creating a user which is the syntax is uh, followed as db.createUser and then I'm giving the username as Rohan123 and I'm giving the password 123abc and next I'm also giving the roles to this user that is I'm giving the read operation that is uh, the user who have the access to this database employees can only read the information that is he can just view the data but he cannot make any changes to this db employees table so i hope you understood uh, this so let us now directly jump into the execution part so as you can see mongodb shell has started and the basic command is basically to show the different database in our different databases present in our uh, you know mongodb instance so for that i'm using the show dbs command which will uh, bring all the which will retrieve all the databases like admin company db config local simply code one student db and test so we know that before we enable uh, access control you should create a user that can create users and assign roles to them once access control is enabled so this user admin will then use to create and maintain other users and role which needs to be assigned a suitable role to enable it to do, do so so you can have various roles like admin role you can give the read operation you can give write operation and you can simultaneously give read and write operations on uh, on the data that you want to uh, perform uh, the analysis or the changes you want to make so before creating a mongodb user actually it is worth thinking about the task the user is going to perform now let's say i have a database here let's say simply code one and i have a user who is who constantly uh, changes or updates data from the database, then I can give the role to the, to that particular user is read read operation. So by change, probably there will be several users with the same level of permissions also. So the smartest option is to create a role and assign it to each of these users. And by only changing a role, you will update the permission where all the users who has the access to it. Otherwise, a change to an access requirement for a group or you know, uh, a group of users would need to be done for every single user every time. So the first step is to change context to database in which you're going to create this role. So let's just create a simple, uh, you know, role to a database. So for that, I'm using the uh, simply code database only here. So let's say use simply code one. So it is switched to simply code one. So when adding a new user to the specified database and for in our case, it's simply code one, we use the db.createUser method, which is the fundamental command. So it is important to note that adding users with option is much simpler than inserting a user document into a non-relational database. So the query is followed as db.createUser. user, make sure the U is capital, otherwise it will throw an error, open the brackets. And inside that mention the keyword user. So let's say I'm giving the username as let's take a row hand 1234. Close the brackets and then mention the password PWD. So you can either give a password or you can give a password prompt. Password prompt is basically will ask you to enter the password every time you request access to this uh, database. So I'm just using the password prompt command here. And then you have to specify the roles that you want to create your, uh, you know, database. So let's say I'm just giving a simple role as let's take as read operation, right? So for that I'm providing roles and within the uh, square brackets, mention the role keyword semicolon and since we are concerned with read I am giving it as a read and then mention the database that you are giving the access to so the, the database is simply code one all right uh, 
uh, make sure it is in inverted commas again otherwise it will throw an error so i think uh, the code is done let's just execute this uh, again close the square brackets make sure to check all the brackets are being uh, properly closed otherwise it will throw an error we have a square bracket and then i think oops, again another this okay so it says enter password now you can give password of your choice uh, so let's say i'm take one two three twenty dot okay so it says it is successfully executed let's just walk through what you've created here now to create a user who will manage a single database here which is the simply code one we can we are using the same command which is the db dot create user and in that uh, we are giving a particular username and then we are giving the roles to it so the first step is basically to specify the username and password which needs to be created and the second step is to assign a role for the user which in this case needs to be a is a, a general user not the user admin right so we are just assigning a role which is the read operation here this role basically allows the user to have privileges only to the database specified in the db option which is simply code one so the db parameter specified the database to which the user should have the administrative privileges on so the output basically shows that it was successfully created and it is asking for a password now you can generally give a password of your own choice or you can either just so give a password prompt and then you can enter the password so this is how you create a user now next you have to manage these users so for that you have to understand the roles which you need to define now there's a whole list of roles available in mongodb as discussed earlier now for this one we have given read now there is also read write there is also user admin which we give for administrative uh, you know privileges or uh, someone who have the who needs to be a database administrator who constantly works on that uh, database so for that we provide with that so then we have this again read role which basically allows you to read only access to databases and then there is read write also which provides read and write access to the database which means that the user can insert delete update commands on collections in that database so let's just create another uh, user wherein we'll create multiple roles and understand how it works here so again i'm just copy pasting this and we'll create another user and see so let's just change some of the uh, names here so let's take uh, the new user as user uh, one and let's take the password from same and then we will assign different roles now for different databases for this user okay now once we have created a read operation for simply code right now let's take another uh, database let's say company db so for that i am creating another role which is read write okay so there is a small error so i'm just copy pasting the file which i've already created to uh, show you so i'm just creating a new user and then i'm uh, uh, creating a user name rohan123 and let's take the password as 123abc and the roles that i'm giving to this user are from various database so for let's say for simply code one i'm giving the uh, role as read operation and for company db i'm giving read operation and for student db i'm giving the read write operation so mongodb defines roles uniquely by combining the database with the role name and each role is scoped to the database you have created but mongodb generally stores all the role information in this collection in the uh, admin database so for instance the role and grant role actions on the database resource must ensure that the roles are created and granted in the database so let's just execute this and see the output so it is okay one well, that means you have successfully created a user now in order to see all the users that you have created in the simply code one you can simply use the show users command which will list out all the users that you have created so it says simply code one dot rohan one two three db simply code one and the read uh, roles that you have created is read write operations for uh, this database for read operation for company db read operation for simply code and so on and you can also show the roles as well separately so it will just show all the different roles so let's say 
roll db owner db is simply called one and like in a similar way all the operations all the roles that you have given uh, will be showcased here i think we have pretty much covered the basics of user and uh, role management commands in this uh, what are mongodb session commands now session commands basically allow you to provide specific instructions to the database through a command language using certain uh, commands so we'll be learning uh, exactly what are the mongodb sessions and various types of commands that are used in this criteria so firstly what are session commands in mongodb now a session is basically is used to group together a series of operations that are related to each other which would be executed with the same session options now if you consider mongodb mongodb shell does not uh, is not typically used to write and execute transaction the majority of the majority of the time external applications use transaction instead so the application must initiate a session in order for any transaction it performs to be guaranteed with the asset properties like atomicity consistency isolation and durability so a session is a database object in mongodb that is controlled by an application using a proper mongodb driver which can be used with various applications like c c++ python java and other applications as well so this basically enables the driver to apply additional configurations such as enabling the use of transaction whether you want to start a transaction or uh, you know terminate a transaction to even a group of database statement as a whole so as a result they will have a shared context and can be associated with each other using the session commands where it will process sequence of database statements so that is what exactly the session commands are in mongodb so this can be performed using various uh, mongodb uh, session commands so we have typically five uh, session commands in mongodb namely firstly we have the abort transaction command which is basically is used to stop or terminate the ongoing transaction next we have the commit transaction command which is used to permanently save all the transactions done in the mongodb database next we have the end sessions command which expires it is to expire any ongoing sessions before the timeout so in general mongodb has a timeout period of 30 minutes so after that it will automatically end the uh, session within a mongodb instance so if you want it uh, to done before uh, uh, the computer automatically does to you you can use the end session command next we have the kill all sessions which is used to terminate all these sessions right as the name says kill all next we have the kill all sessions by pattern now you can even uh, terminate a session or stop a particular session by using a specified pattern so if ever if the pattern matches a specified uh, you know character that you mentioned in your server session in that case you can use kill all sessions by pattern now we'll be understanding each of them uh, in a more depth with its syntax and how it works now apart from this we have the basic and the generic type of session commands in mongodb where we have refresh sessions kill sessions and start session also so the refresh session command is used to update the end use time for the specified session by extending the active state of the session so if you're working on a particular uh, transaction and if you want to uh, you know refresh it in that case you can use the refresh session command which will basically extend the uh, period of the session that your the, the ongoing session is happening next we have the kill session so if you want to uh, you know exit or terminate only a particular uh, spe specified you know uh, session for the user in such case you can use the kill sessions next finally we have the start session command as the name suggests the start session command is used to start a new logical session in the mongodb database now the constraint here is you must be authenticated to run this command that is proper authentication should be given to the mongodb database otherwise it does not enforce so if the deployment does not have any uh, authentication or authorization a created uh, has no owner and can be used by any user over any connection so these were some of the uh, types of session commands that we use so let's just get into detail with each of the uh, command here so the first one is what is abort transaction command so the abort transaction uh, command or the method tells mongodb to undo all the modifications made throughout the transaction and restore the database to its initial configuration 
So it basically terminates all the uh, multi-document transaction and rolls back any changes made by the operations within the transaction. That is the transaction basically ends without saving any of the changes made by the operations in the transaction. Now the abort transaction command must be run within a session and run against the admin database only. And another constraint is it will terminate any transaction before it can get executed because one of the operation caused an error. So to run the abort transaction, the command must be uh, run against the admin database and run with the start session initially. So let us understand the syntax for this. The syntax is followed as db.admin command and within the brackets mention abort transaction and we are given a boolean value that is 1 that means true. Next we have the transaction number it can be of any type so I am just specifying the long. Next we have the right concern mention the document name and then I am giving auto commit to false. Next we have any comments if you want to uh, display in uh, for the reason why you are aborting the transaction you can specify it here. So when a transaction aborts all the data changes all the data changes made by the right transactions are discarded without ever being visible to the uh, visible and the transaction eventually ends automatically. Next we have the what is commit transaction command. Now commit transaction ends the transaction by saving the changes made by the operations in the multi level document transaction. So you can say this is basically an opposite of abort transaction command which will basically ensure that it saves the changes made by the operations in the multi-document transaction and ends the transaction as well. So again you are to run the commit transaction you must run it against the admin database uh, using the db.admin command. So the transaction is same again which is similar to that of the abort transaction. Uh, instead of abort transaction mention the commit transaction keyword here and specify it as one and the rest all the uh, fields where you have the transaction number, right concern, uh, auto commit, comment will all have the same uh, you know criteria. So the right concern basically uh, tells you that when committing any transaction the session uses the right concern specified at the transaction start. So let's say when a transaction commits and all the data changes made in the transaction are saved and visible outside the transaction which, which means a transaction will not commit some of its changes while rolling back the other changes. So until and unless a transaction commits, the data changes made in the transaction are not visible to any user outside of the transaction. So I hope you were clear with the commit transaction. Next we have the what is end sessions command. So basically end session expires the sessions that are specified. Now the command overrides the timeout window that the sessions wait before closing. Now what do I mean by that? So this method basically closes an existing session. So if a transaction was associated within this a session, the transaction will get uh, aborted once you uh, you know give this end session command. So after calling this method, application should not invoke any other commands on this session anymore. So let us understand the syntax. The syntax is followed as db.run command and within the parenthesis I am giving the end sessions keyword and inside that I am mentioning id where you have to give the uuid. Now uuid is basically an you know alt, uh, alter uh, you know specification for you know object id we have in mongodb. So mongodb and other mongodb drivers come with this inbuilt support for the uuid data type. And it's very easy and convenient to start using the UUID immediately as well. So it basically MongoDB itself stores UUIDs as a binary field and when such binary fields are accessed from software, MongoDB drivers usually convert their value which is found uh, in the database to language specific uh, you know UUID objects. So that is just an opposite of, uh, not, not an opposite I can say it is an alternative uh, to the use of object id in mongodb. So that is what end session is all about. Next we have the what is kill all session command. Now killing a session terminates any in progress operations in the section, session. So we haven't discussed what exactly why we are using kill uh, keyword here. So the mongodb takes this command in order to terminate any ongoing process or the operations in that session. So the kill all session commands kill all the uh, you know sessions that are being run on the MongoDB database 
and if access control is enabled, the command only kills the se sessions that are owned by the user. So let us now understand the syntax. Now so we have, uh, you know, kill sessions as well uh, as in addition to kill all sessions. So the basic or the generic type of syntax that we write here is db.run command. Inside that we are specifying kill all sessions and you can either give a particular user and the database name wherein the command takes an array of documents that specify the UUID portion of the uh, session ID or else what you can do is you can just simply run the db.run command where you are just specifying kill all sessions which will automatically terminate all the operations in the in that particular session. And if you want a particular only uh, specific type of uh, session, in that case, you have to mention the user and the DB associated to it. So let's say I have uh, this uh, two users, right? I just want to uh, stop only these two sessions, right? In that case, I'm using db.run command, kill all sessions, and I'm just giving the username and the DB. So Rohan1 uh, is the user and the DB that is working on is employee1. So it will basically terminate all the sessions or the transactions that are ongoing. That is, if you're performing any read or write operations on this, it will terminate all the sessions in one go. Next, we have what is kill all by session, all sessions by pattern. Now, as the name suggests, we are basically stopping all uh, particular session with the help of a specified pattern here, which is the definition of this command is the kill all session by pattern command kills all sessions that match any of the specified pattern. Now the syntax is also similar to that of kill all sessions which is db.run command and inside the parenthesis we are giving the keyword kill all sessions by pattern and mention the pattern here. Now there are various patterns that are associated uh, with this. So you can either have any of the four choices that you can see in the table here. Now the first one basically specifies the UUID portion of the session ID that you want to terminate. Next you can just give the uh, UUID or and give the bin data which will basically specifies the hash of the owner of the session to kill. Next you can just give the uh, you can just specify the owner of the session you know to kill or to terminate that session which will require additional privileges. And finally, you can also uh, terminate a session by just giving the role uh, to that database. So it, if you specify the role assigned to the owner of that session, in order to stop it, you can just give to that uh, particular uh, role as well, which will again require additional privileges. Now, what I mean by uh, additional privileges here is that, so if uh, the database that you're working on enforces any authentication or authorization, you must have the kill any session or kill all session privilege action in order to run the kill all session by pattern command. So only in such case you can use this type of command which is kill all section by command if you have the permission of kill all session command. So that is what uh, kill all session by pattern uh, command is all about. And with that we have come to the end of today's session guys. I think we have discussed pretty much about all the uh, session commands that we use. Now in terms of Working on MongoDB database, it is not uh, a e important topic to uh, you know learn. It is just a uh, conceptual topic. Maybe you might be asked in your interview questions, but in general, if you're working on a database, you might not use uh, more of the session commands. So it is important to uh, have a knowledge, a pretty much knowledge on what are the session commands and what is the basic significance on why we use in our MongoDB database. What is backup and restore in MongoDB and how to implement in real life. So we will walk you through the steps of backing up and restoring process in MongoDB database and also the collection present in them. So firstly, let us discuss what is backup in general before we understand how a backup works in MongoDB. Now backup and recovery refers to the process of creating and storing data copies that can be used to protect any organization or companies when they have any data loss. So this is referred also to as operational loss and recovering from a data from a backup usually entails restoring the data to its original location or that is copying of data in other location where it can be used in place of the lost or damaged data. Now to protect da against data loss due to primary hardware or any software failures, a proper backup copy is stored in a separate system or a medium like hard disk or pen drive from the primary data. 
Now, data should be backed up at regular intervals because it is important that you have the access to the data uh, within. The data should be backed up uh, in no time so that you can access the data in whatever, uh, you know, uh, situation you want. And it also determined by how frequently the data changes. And depending upon that, you have to back up your data. It might be every week, every month, or maybe once in a quarter or like that. So moving ahead, just like uh, the backup which we do for other systems as well, MongoDB also requires backup since it is a NoSQL database and works a lot on non-structured data which has large data sets. And in order to ensure that the, custom, uh, the user's information is stored properly and their identity and their uh, data is safeguarded, it is important that we, uh, you know, back up the data into our MongoDB database. So for that, MongoDB provides with various inbuilt tools, uh, for example, Mongo dump as well as Mongo restore commands, which is used to connect the MongoDB instance on the local system and create a database backup named dump in the current directory. Now we'll understand how it works when we get into the execution part. So for now, just, just understand. How does MongoDB backup works now? Now there are various ways in which you can uh, backup your data in MongoDB. Uh, so if you're working on MongoDB Atlas, you can use. So MongoDB Atlas, which is the uh, hosted MongoDB service option in the cloud offers basically two types of methods for backups, which is cloud backup as well as legacy backup. Next we have the MongoDB cloud manager and ops manager. Now MongoDB cloud manager is a hosted backup uh, monitoring and automation service for MongoDB. The MongoDB cloud manager supports the backing up and restoring of MongoDB deployments. So MongoDB cloud manager generally backups MongoDB replica sets and sharded uh, clusters by reading the OP log data from your MongoDB deployment. And next we have the basic tools like Mongo dump, which is uh, an easier way. Let's say if you are trying to backup data, which is less than uh, 100 GB or 500 GB. In such case, Mongo dump, which is a inbuilt command tool is a great option for you. And finally, we also have file system backups where you can create a backup of a MongoDB deployment by making a copy of MongoDB's underlying data files. So if the volume where MongoDB stores its data file supports point in time, you can use this uh, file system backup in order to create backup of a MongoDB system at an exact moment in that time. So in this tutorial, we are only concerned with the Mongo dump and we'll see how it works. So to create backup of a database or a collection, you should use Mongo dump command. Let's see how the syntax is. Now the syntax is simple. You just have to write Mongo dump and again, let's uh, understand this when we get into the execution part. So if you want to uh, backup only a particular database or uh, let's say a particular collection in such case the syntax would be mongo dump mention db and the database name next mention collection keyword and the collection name and after that mention out and the location path of it so in this way you can use uh, this command in order to backup a particular database and the collection name so mongo dump is an ideal backup solution for let's say small mongodb instances due to its ease of use and portability i hope you understood you know what is backup and uh, how does it work in mongodb so let us now jump into execution part and see how it is done we'll also see how to uh, once we back up our database and after deleting or dropping the database or the collection how to restore it back to its original uh, position in the database as well So what you have to do is you have to basically first open command prompt and before we get in ahead with the uh, execution part on how to backup our MongoDB database, you have to install the Mongo dump, which is a command line, which is an inbuilt command line. So what you have to do is you have to uh, go and download the data, which is the command line from the MongoDB official server. So for that, what you have to do is type MongoDB command lines database tools. All right, so scroll down a bit and you'll have this download MongoDB command line database tools. Click on that. And you can see that we have this MongoDB command line database tools download and all the description of this. I will file the latest version of it and you'll have the package zip here. Just uh, remove that and 
select MSI package and click on download. Now I've already downloaded it on my system. So I'll just show you what has to be done. So when you download it, it will ask for uh, the setup. Just give the permission, necessary permissions and all. So as I've already installed, it says you can change the features I've installed, repair or just click the next button until you finish it. Okay. Now, once you're done with that, it will basically uh, store the data in the C drive. So go to program files and C drive and open MongoDB folder. And in that, it will be downloaded in tools section. So click on this tools, we'll have this 100, click on bin. So this is where we have the all database tools, for example, based on dump, Mongo dump, Mongo expert, Mongo files, Mongo import, Mongo restore, Mongo stat, and Mongo top. So this is how you have to download the basic command line tool, which is, which since you're working with Mongo dump, which is a part of a command line tool, we are downloading this. So, all right, so once we're done with this, now go back to our command prompt and next type mongos, which will basically direct to our mongo shell. All right, so let's just get started. I'm using the show DBS command here. So it, it says various, uh, shows the DBS, various databases present in our uh, MongoDB database, right? All right, now, now you can now you can work on the existing database or you can create a new database in order to back up the data that is present in that. So let's say I'm just using a new database here. Let's say the database name is MongoDB Backup. Okay, so it says switch to DB Mongo Backup. So let us now just create a, a set of collections. Okay, for example, we'll create two collections. So the first collection would be orders, right? So I'm just creating collections DB dot orders insert. And inside that, I'm basically uh, just creating a field. Let's say, let's take a name. Let's say Rohan. Okay. So this is, this is just for example, guys. Uh, I'm just showing a basic example so that you'll have a clear idea on how uh, the backup works here. So similarly, let's just create another collection. Let's say customers dot insert. And let's say take the name as Rahul. All right, close the brackets. Well, as you can see in the uh, assertion tool, we can see that it is successfully acknowledged true and it is inserted IDs are also created. So let us just uh, use the show collections command whether or not they have created or not. So you can see customers and orders are the two collections that are created inside the MongoDB backup. Now, once we're done with this, we have to create a path or let's say a folder wherein we are trying to back up the data that is present in our MongoDB database. So for that, what you have to do is go to, let's say C drive and just create a folder. Let's say I am creating a new folder here. Let's take the name of the folder as backup. Okay. Click on that. Now click on the open the backup folder. Now you will see that folder is empty now. Now, since we haven't done any backup on our database, it will show this folder is empty. Now what you have to do is just copy this uh, address. Okay. Just double click uh, over here and just copy the address now. Now once again, open command prompt. All right. Now we have to set the path to our location, which is the C drive where you have created the backup folder. So for that, I'm using the CD, which means current directory and just copy paste the uh, location that we have just copied. Okay which is the C backup file. Now click OK. Now it is changed to C backup. Now we have to set up the path for our backup file, right? Now for that, I'm using the set path. So we have to set path for our mongodump command, which is uh, basically stored in, I think, the program files again. Just go there, click on program files, click on mongodb, click on tools, click on this, open bin. And just copy paste this address over here. Copy. Just open this. And within the uh, brackets, uh, inverted comma, sorry, I'll uh, paste this. Click OK. Now that means you have successfully uh, set up the path for your Mongo dump command, wherein the data that you have created in your MongoDB database, that is the MongoDB. Uh, database and that we have created two collections right which is orders and customer will now be backed up now for that you have to just simply use the mongo dump keyword and click enter so it will just process and it says 
done dumping simply code one dot new employees and all. All right. So let's just go back to our uh, folder here and see whether or not we have created a backup, right? So where you can see the backup and inside backup now we have a dump folder and inside that we have all the database names which is admin company db mongodb backup simply code one student db test we have recently created this mongodb backup click on that and you can see we have the data in the form of based on format which is of customers as well as the orders so that means you have successfully uh, copied the data from your mongodb instance to your local uh, system wherein you have uh, downloaded the data from the database and you have inserted you have basically backed up into this folder here so I hope you've understood how to uh, basically perform the backup uh, in your MongoDB database. So let's say if I want to uh, drop this database. So let's see how does it work. For that I'm using the db.drop database command. Make sure the D is capital otherwise it will throw an error. So as it, uh, it says it has successfully uh, dropped the MongoDB backup database. So let's again see the collections I mean show DBS let's see if it is showing or not so as you can see mongodb backup is not there in our uh, you know list of uh, the databases that we are that have that are available now so we have to perform the restore uh, option here so for that i'll just go back uh, to the command prompt and i'll just simply write mongo restore click enter it will process and it will take some time And finally, you can see in the end of uh, the line here, it says two documents restored successfully. So let's just go back and let us now see whether it is showing uh, the MongoDB backup database or not. So now you can see MongoDB backup is present in our list of databases that are present in our MongoDB uh, instance. So again, let's check whether the collections are uh, backed up or not. So for that, I'm uh, showing, I'm writing show collections command here. So as you can see, customers and orders are restored again back to its original state without any uh, issues over here. So in this way, you can use the restore option if you are in case you have deleted your database or let's say deleted the information or the data from your collections that are present in your database. So till now, we have basically uh, backed up all the collections that are present in a database. Now, what if you want to create a backup of only a particular collection? Now, let's say I have the customer's collection here and I want to only back up that and leave the orders. So for that, we have to basically again go back to our uh, C drive and we'll just create another file here. Okay. And the folder wherein we'll uh, take, let's say, backup one. So we have created a new uh, backup one folder just copy paste this copy paste this and go back to uh, the command prompt and now mention the current directory which we are using is backup one all right Since we are uh, basically uh, back up, backing up only a particular folder, now the command would be mongo dump mention the db database which is mongodb backup and mention the collection keyword and mention the collection name which is customers. I think it's customers only. Let's just, yeah, it's customers. So when you click on enter, it will say that done dumping mongodb backup dot customers one document has been successfully backed up. So let's just verify it. Uh, go back to ba backup one. So you can see now only the customers collection is only uh, backed up in our uh, let's say which we have created backup one folder. Now I'll drop this uh, only the particular uh, collection and we'll try to restore it back to our, its original state. So the command would be db dot mention the uh, collection name and mention the drop keyword. So it says true. That means it is successfully uh, uh, dropped. So let's just check the collections and see whether it is deleted or not. So you can see only orders uh, collection has is being shown in our uh, you know database 
which is in MongoDB backup database. All right. So let us now try to restore it. Uh, just go back to this command prompt. And now the keyword would be Mongo restore. In the same, um, Mongo restore uh, DB is the keyword. Mention the uh, database name, which is MongoDB backup. And mention the collection name as well. Just customers. Okay, click enter. It says error scanning files can file dump is a directory, not a JSON file. Okay, you have to provide the uh, file path also. So I think I have. So let me just correct this. Uh, just copy paste the uh, command till here. Now what you have to do is you have to provide the location of the backup folder where you have created uh, the backup for the customer's collection here. So just copy paste this. So I'm just mentioning the location of where we have backed up our uh, you know customer's collection here. And it is also saying that it is not a base one file, right? So just uh, keep the uh, slash and mention the collection name and the file format which is based on okay and I think we are good to go now just click enter so now you can see that uh, one document restored successfully so let's just go back to the uh, MongoDB shell and try to verify whether it is restored or not so I'm just creating again show collections uh, command so now you can see customers order and the orders are both showing in our uh, collection set so that means we have successfully restored the one which we have deleted. So in this way, you can even delete uh, and backup and restore a particular database collection as well. And with that, we have reached the end of the session on MongoDB basics course. Hope the session was informative and helpful. We hope you had a lot to learn. And if you have any further queries regarding any concepts or topics covered in this tutorial, feel free to let us know in the comments below and our team of experts will be more than happy to assist you. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.